Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 In the sixth day of spring in the U calendar, the whole land was basked with drizzle from the heavens. Under the scent of rainwater, the heavy, metallic smell of blood was slowly washed away, seeping into the ground. Gone and forgotten. From out the back door came three to four bodies wheeled out in haste, instead of the tall, prestigious gate of the general's official residence. They were corpses off which were hurriedly rushed to a grave. A man seeing this dreadful display couldn't help but TSK disapprovingly, back then, there were also a number of bodies coming from the general's residence, but why are there so many today? It was an insignificant, small vendor that spoke, who happens to have seen the atrocious deeds from time to time. There was a rich merchant in the next stall that heard this. He couldn't help but to chastise his neighbor in a low voice. Haven't you heard the news? Official Lu is here. It's not like you don't know what he's into, right? He searches the vendor's face for enlightenment, upon seeing none, he continued. Don't you know? He has a fetish for young boys. In order to please his higher up, General you had to satisfy his sick hobby using slaves but what can be done? The life of a slave can only promise a wretched existence. Upon hearing this the small vendor couldn't help but slightly tremble, disgust and fear in his voice, AI truly evil. Truly, the life of those at the bottom could only be considered worthless. What the fuck is this? Are you playing with me God? Yi Mu couldn't help but curse while anxiously walking around in circles in her room. She could remember vividly that prior to this, she had been hunting pirates at sea. By an accidental chance, she was also able to seize a copy of an ancient text which was supposedly some kind of historical relic. Only that, it really wasn't genuine because it was written in simplified Chinese characters. But she had observed that this counterfeit book was extraordinarily old, the small handwritten characters on it particularly exquisite, so she had flipped through it. Turns out it was a biographical history book. But as far as she knew, there wasn't a country named Mo in history, or even in this age. At this point it was apparent to her that the book wasn't a historical treasure at all. At most, it could be considered some type of fictional novel. Therefore, she had decided to read it out from curiosity. Who would have thought that one day, the impossible would happen and she would actually cross into this book? To add to this boggling scenario, there was always a voice whispering in her ear, repeating the same phrase over and over again, if you get the city boundary map, you will be able to go back home. Moreover, you can come and go between both worlds to your heart's content. But Yi Mu really doesn't want to waste her time solving mysteries or chasing treasures. Real life was more important, and there were more urgent things to do than immerse herself in a fictional world. Where would she even start finding the city boundary map, of which she knew nothing about in a foreign world? No thank you. She's going back. She halted, this time her eyes widened a fraction as a brilliant idea struck her. If this was a fictional biographical book, then getting rid of the focal character of which the novel revolves around, should break this world. Therefore, if she could somehow get rid of the male protagonist, then she could possibly return home. An ingenious plan indeed. Yi Mu's eyes twinkled, as she racked her brains for a plausible plan. Looking towards the kneeling servant girl to her side, she asked urgently, Speak. Where is Mo Linyuan? The servant girl was frightened from being addressed strongly and her whole body shook unconsciously, Yo young lady, please spare this servant's life. Xiao Chiu does not know who Mo Linyuan is. Chapter 2 Yi Mu vexedly slapped her forehead. How could she forget? Seeing as the body she was currently occupying was just a child, then it can only be deduced that the story is currently starting from the beginning. In the novel, the male protagonist should have escaped to the Great Yu country only to unexpectedly suffer slavery firsthand. How could he use his real name at this time? Ah, uh, yes. It's that certain slave the one who looked rather presentable and has porcelain skin. There was also a tear mole on the upper corner of his eye. That fragile looking boy he's the one who didn't last long. She remembered that before she had transmigrated into this body, 
the original owner had already dealt blows on the young male protagonist. Young lady what you said isn't it Aji? The servant's girl's face turned deathly pale in a flash, he didn't he anger young lady and was sent to the main hall to greet the guests. Now. Xiao Chiu didn't want to say it. The words now unfortunately, he's being enjoyed by that official Lu, who is famous for being a sick child molester. We're stuck at her throat. But before Xiao Chiu could finish her words, Yi Mu had already went out when she heard the male lead's current whereabouts. Terrified, Xiao Chiu chased after her. Young lady. What are you going to do? The general is currently greeting the noble guests, you must not go. Yi Mu thought I rattly just add that to the pile of things that she doesn't care about. She really wants to go back to her own world, back to the modern times. Besides, she can't just leave her important job behind, not when her job as a soldier requires her to deal with major, life-threatening events for the sake of the common people. Not only was it something she desired, but she has no choice but to go back. For this, she could only mentally say sorry to the male protagonist she hasn't met yet. The general's residence was spacious. Everywhere she went, it was beautifully decorated with expensive ornaments and majestic furnitures. It was extremely extravagant, every corridor past served to boast of the riches of the residence. And with every corridor in this house that Yi Mu passed through, the people would kneel down in fear, throwing themselves down to the ground at her feet. It's as if it wasn't a six-year-old girl walking, but some kind of demonic entity terrorizing the halls. However, Yi Mu knows why they fear her so. Even if she had the identity of a girl born from a concubine which should have warranted fear and insecurity, she was instead, a fearless, psychopathic Lolita. At her young age, her notoriety and mercilessness had already spread far and wide, tainting her young image with a very, very bad reputation. But none of this has anything to do with her. She thought this surreal, bizarre dream would be over if she kills the male protagonist. So she simply ran. Holding her skirt in her small palms, she ran straight to the loudest place in the residence with music, with a hasty decision in mind. But as soon as she arrived at the anteroom where the entrance of the main hall stood, her complexion changed. It was unmannered and ominous looking, tall, vermilion door simply standing there. From behind it came the raucous laughter of men, the lascivious voices of women, the sound of obscene music, and as well as, the cries of children. It suddenly made her understand what was going on inside. From what she had understood, the aristocrats of this era are promiscuous and unrestrained. Generally, when distinguished guests come, they will send trained and beautiful entertainers to receive them. If they happen to catch some of the esteemed nobleman's eyes and are asked by the visitor to leave with them, the host of the party would be very amiable and happy. Yet, for those women, their lives had already come to an end. In the book, the father of her current identity had a friend with a fetish for young boys. Today that character should be here, right? Chapter, 3 If he truly is in there, then she really doesn't have to go inside anymore he could let that man do the dirty deed for her. And if he is still alive after it, only then would she move her little finger. Thus, achieving her goal of getting rid of the male protagonist and walking up from this lucid nightmare. After Yi Mu stopped in her tracks, the panicked servant girls who were chasing after her was also able to catch their breath for a while. One of the maidservants forgot her place and went over to her, eagerly pulling her sleeve and speaking, Young lady, you can't go in. The general is giving official Lu a feast and told everyone that no one should disturb. No one would escape punishment if they disobeyed this. Yi Mu finally calmed down, and all the surrounding servants were relieved that the beast had finally come to senses. Indeed, she couldn't act too rashly, Yimu asked with a complicated expression, that slave, Aji is he really in there? Upon hearing these words, but entirely missing the restlessness in it, the servant girl nodded her head absentmindedly. But it was just Sash couldn't understand why the young lady was acting like this. After all, it was clearly the young lady who had deliberately sent people here to be punished. Why was she going back on her word now? Yi Mu looked at the pavilion in front of her with complicated eyes. Although she came with the cruel objective of killing the male protagonist, she really didn't expect to meet such a burdensome challenge. The book had never been too intricate in the details regarding the male lead's childhood. It only said that when he was young, 
he had been wandering among people, suffering all the hardships of the world. It was only from then that he developed a strong and resolute character. So, she really didn't know that this moment today was a past brushed off by the book. And now, she had the choice to ignore or learn it. In the event that she chooses to see his past, how can she only look on meekly as a child suffers this kind of degradation? Why did the author even write such a barbaric experience for the male protagonist, ah? Might as well let her be the one to give a swift and merciful death. Seeing that the young lady had remained silent, the servant girl looked at her carefully and thought that she had given up. However, Yi Mu suddenly took a few steps forward, scaring them all to their knees. Young lady. Please think twice. You can't go in. If the general is angry there will be bloodshed. Yi Mu was pulled by one of the servant girls and her delicate eyebrows frowned. But she still didn't speak, the other party was more afraid than ever and said, Young lady, have you forgotten? Official Lu likes young children the most and he extremely hates people who disturb his happy time. If you trespass, the consequences will be unimaginable. And the servants would also suffer this was their hidden message. A selfish plea for their lives. Young lady, please think twice. Please, young lady reconsider. All the servant girls bitterly dissuaded her with panicked faces. Seeing their frantic states, Yi Mu finally calmed down. This wasn't a society ruled by just regulations. Her father and men like official Lu were animals in human flesh at the top of the pyramid. If she rushed in like this, with no strategic plan and power, whether she can kill someone or not, will only happen after her dead body. She can only swallow this reality bitterly she had to fold in. Besides, isn't it better if someone indirectly helped her achieve her motives? After all, what she wants the most is to quickly get home. And the fastest, most convenient way is to let the male lead die, despite how cruel this choice must be. Now someone has taken the role of helping her it's better than doing the deed herself. This is just a fictional world with imaginary characters. It shouldn't be real. Killing him would just be like erasing his name from paper. At the thought of this, she bit her teeth, frowning at the noisy pavilion. Hesitating, she took two steps back, before resolutely turning around. Her last thoughts were, calm down. Just think that you weren't here. But could she really remain apathetic to these things? Chapter, 4 When she finally gave up, the servant girls breathed a sigh of relief. However, in the next moment from the pavilion behind her, suddenly came the sound of porcelain being broken and a boy's terrified scream the voice was a chilling, shrill cry. It made the hairs all over Yi Mu's body stand on end. What if, it was actually the other way around, when the male protagonist dies she wouldn't be able to return home? After such an idea flashed across her mind, Yi Mu had quickly turned around. In the eyes of the terrified servant girls, she ran speedily towards the half-open door of the pavilion. She would like to see what kind of absurdities the aristocrats of this era could have. The door was opened with a loud bang and everyone had looked towards it in reflex, only to find a small beam breaking in. The man sitting on the head seat suddenly stood up. Although he did not block the door to the pavilion, he had imposed a ban on everybody. Who would be so bold and daring to break in at such a time? But after the Yi Mu came in, she wasn't able to see the angry host, rather, her eyes were immediately glued straight at the direction of the noise. What she saw in front of her eyes stung the very core of her being and her heart uncontrollably burned in fury. She saw was a young boy, about seven to eight years old. His mouth was blocked with a wide palm and he was pressed down on the tea table in an extremely mortifying position. Blood was gushing from his shoulder like an unending fountain, caused by the deep mark a sharp knife had embedded on it. He was restrained from behind by a fat man who had taken off his trousers and he was struggling with all his strength to resist, completely oblivious to his blood flowing and covering half the table. Official Lu was the one who held the knife the direct perpetrator for the ghastly wound on the little boy's shoulder. The scene had been was so merciless that the other little slaves couldn't help but scream in horror. Outrageous! Who allowed you in? Yi Li snarled furiously and it was only then that Yi Mu was able to regain her focus. She took a deep, calming breath and tried to push her bubbling rage back down. 
She began to look around at this time, in addition to Yi Li and official Lu, there were messy clothes haphazardly strewn across the floor. The men holding the women in their arms looked at her crossly from her sudden intrusion of their happy time. Official Lu had also been taken aback. He coldly harumphed, putting aside the dagger to grab the boy's hand. However, his hold wasn't the least gentle. His eyes narrowed, is this how General Yi would entertain this official? Or, is this girl trained to be another of those entertainers? Yi Li's complexion turned ashen and he promptly smiled apologetically, I have let you witness a ridiculous scene. This is my unworthy daughter I will promptly let her out. He looked toward the Yi Mu and bellowed, why are you still not leaving? When he shouted the whole splendid and magnificent hall was rocked with earthquakes merely from his loud voice. All the female entertainers were brought to their knees. Meanwhile, Yi Mu's servant girl also knelt down all over the floor and tugged at her master. She shivered and said, you young lady, we have to go. But Yi Mu did not budge an inch. She had always refused to acknowledge that this world from a novel was anything but real. However, everything in front of her, from the cruel display to the shaking hall, was a reality. How could have she thought that all of these would be fake? The scent of blood was thick in the air, there was a boy on the table about to be violated, three or four slaves are kneeling on one side. Moreover, insensitive spectators are only looking on coldly. For such a reality all of these things were challenging her bottom line. The only good thing at the moment was that the male protagonist hadn't been sexually abused by official Lu yet, which made Yi Mu feel a bit better. Her quick heart rate from her anger gradually subsided. Shell save him. Not because he is the male protagonist, but because no child deserves to go through such an experienced novel world or not. Still not leaving. Seeing Yi Mu motionless on the spot, Yi Li was beyond mad. He felt that his authority had been challenged by this insignificant pipsqueak. The bear-like, tall body rushed down from the head seat. Upon reaching Yi Mu in just a few steps, he lifted her from her spot and began to walk towards the door. His current posture looked as if he was just about to throw her out. Everyone immediately exclaimed. They didn't expect Yi Li to be this ferocious even to his own daughter. He is famous for his innate, divine strength. How could he throw this little girl's body away? Doesn't he know ITLL kill her? But at this very moment, Yi Mu suddenly grabbed him by the collar with both hands and hollered. Father. His Majesty is ill. Chapter, 5. This statement was enough to throw the hall into calamity. All the people who were indifferent to the fate of the little being got up when they heard this. Official Lu was also the first to bear the brunt of this news. What? He was taken aback and hurriedly loosened his grip on the little boy. Forgetting to wear his pants, he hurriedly rushed out from behind the tea table towards Yimu, you said his majesty is critically ill. Don't make such irresponsible remarks. Yi Mu glanced at him. Fortunately, his coat was long enough to cover the beast, or she would have washed her eyes the moment she returned. She frowned at Yi Li and said, Father, can you let me down first? It was only then that Yi Li came back to his senses. As soon as he let go, Yi Mu fell. Fortunately, her servant girl was able to catch her on time, therefore she wasn't hurt. Tell me, where did you hear this news? Official Lu impatiently pushed away the servant girl. He tightly held the arm of Yi Mu, the fat face leaning in, eyes in deep fright. It was only logical that he was being so flustered. After all, he is the Yu country emperor's red man merely nothing more but a servant. Only with the emperor was he able to carry on with his diabolical actions. So if the emperor dies, then his fate would turn for the worse, a miserable end. So even if the other party was just a little girl, he was worried when heard this. Yi Li, with his pair of copper eyes, stared hard at her. He also fiercely demanded, Muir. Where did you hear this news? If you dare tell lies, then prepare to be fed to the tigers. Several other men also gathered around her, eyeing her up and down. Seeing that Yi Mu was only five or six years old, they thought that such a small child could not dare tell such a lie even if she borrowed the courage of a hundred men. Surrounded by people, Yi Mu pretended to be afraid and backed off just a few steps back, but her voice was clear and articulate, 
just a while ago. I was playing in my room, when suddenly a man in black covered my mouth from behind, leaving the words the emperor critically ill and ran away unnoticed. Such a matter is urgent, so I had no choice but to rush inside. Father, don't blame me. Several men's faces became even more complicated. Generally speaking, when an emperor became seriously ill, he would be able to hide such a circumstance from others it would be difficult for an outside party to know. How could this man dressed in black obtain this information? Official Lu felt more restless upon hearing this. He pondered for a moment, I.D. rather reserved judgment for now. He'll quickly send someone to spy on the matter. He gloomily glimpsed at Yi Li and said, If the situation is true, your little girl can be counted as saving the life of this officer. But if this news is false he has never touched girls, but he doesn't mind tasting it for the first time. There was a flash of malice in his eyes, and he hurried away masking his impatience with a calm face. Several other men also felt apprehensive about the matter. The main reason was that, they did not believe such a small child could tell such a lie. They all left with a half-hearted attitude, leaving only Yi Li looking pensive. I ask you, did a man dressed in black personally told you this matter? How tall is he? Were you able to see his appearance? Yi Mu shook her head, somewhat looking timid to speak, I was scared silly, how would I be able to pay so much attention? And father, are our residence's imperial guards dead? Even with so many eyes, some stranger was able to break inside this young lattice room. What if they came to kill me? Yi Li saw the panic in her face, and his mind became a little dazed. He also had conflicting feelings she didn't believe the child could make up such an outrageous lie. But in the end, everything will be discovered after the spies have checked the emperor's condition. Additionally, there was also such a powerful person what if he was the one supposed to be assassinated what could he do? So Yi Li could no longer dawdle and sent her back to her room. He immediately called out his people and went to his study, leaving the chaotic hall to the housekeepers. Seeing Yi Li walking away, Yi Mu rubbed her neck, inwardly sighing a breath of relief. Chapter 6 This man Yi Li is as tall as a big black bear. Eyes bloodshot, he stares at people with a bloodthirsty look. At a glance, such a person would immediately give people the idea he has killed numerous people not the kind who fights for the country or common people, but rather, a plain murderer. Just now, she almost couldn't help instinctively fighting back. She was, fortunately, able to hold herself back. After all, she was not a match for him with her small size. Ever since she came in, she had been wondering what she could do to get out of the foreseen danger. The fact from the novel suddenly came to her mind, that the emperor of the great Yu country was dying of illness. There were absolute signs of illness at the beginning, only, it was well concealed therefore people were unknowledgeable of it. So, she made a gamble and dared to declare this piece of information. If her hunch was right, everything will be fine afterward. However, if her memory was actually wrong, then she won't be able to escape. To get through the present situation first and escape and scathe was her first priority. Young young lady I've been following you there was I've never seen anyone in black. Xiao Qiu whispered nervously in Yi Mu's ear. She was her personal servant girl, the person who waits on her most of the time. She was still scared out of her wits just a while ago, as to why she wouldn't dare expose Yi Mu's lie on the spot. Yi Mu swept her a glimpse telling her to keep her mouth shut. I said there was you didn't see it, but if you dare to talk nonsense, I will definitely cut your tongue. She deliberately shouted this forcefully, and sure enough, Xiao Qiu meekly bowed her head as soon as she finished, not daring to say a word. Yi Mu took a deep breath and walked towards the slaves on the corner. The butler and all the other people of the residence were at a distance keeping themselves away, as they saw Yi Mu steadily approach the little slaves. Yi Li had a vicious temperament, therefore, when the concubines of his harem gave birth, they raise up their children to be especially cruel in order to please and gain Yi Li's favor. And so, Yi Mu, who was known to be the most brutal among them, was particularly favored by Yi Li. However, for her to continue being favored, such a provocation to his authority like today won't be tolerated a second time. If it weren't for the important news provided by Yi Mu, she would have been really thrown out like a rag doll. 
but this does not mean that Yi Mu is weak. On the contrary, the other person everyone is most afraid of in this house besides Yi Li, is this little girl. Even at an early age, she already knew many ways to harm people. For servants like them, it was better to see her far away. As for those little slaves they can only ask the heavens now for a stroke of luck. After witnessing a disturbing scene, several of the little slaves began to cry in a subdued voice. Yi Mu walked over and looked at the youth who was almost molested by official Lu just now. She found that he was thin and bony he did not have meat on the places a healthy child should have. The boy, knowing that he had been saved in time, sat on the ground with the little strength he had left. When she was gazing at him, he had also looked back at her in alert. Just like how the book specified, there was indeed a tear mole in the corner of his eye. With a graceful posture, his eyes became particularly vivid and sharp. Thinking how the present expression nailed the descriptions in the book, plus this bright tear mole, he is truly the male protagonist without a doubt. Yi Mu's eyes held a complex look in them. Everything in front of her was the same as was stated in the book. If the plot followed faithfully to every word, then she would face another dilemma in the future. It would be too difficult. At first, she wanted to kill him because she thought it would be the fastest way for her to go home. She had also considered the worst possible probability that she wouldn't be able to go back if she killed him. Another thought was that if she wouldn't be able to kill him, the male protagonist will become the emperor in the future. Moreover, it is the emperor who can unite the lands and become emperor for all eternity. His hatred for the original host is deep and would not lessen one bit as time passes. Sometime in the future when the male protagonist gains power, he would absolutely not let this person slip away. Chapter, 7 When she thought of the original host's end, which was to be thrown and devoured cruelly by the tiger, her delicate steamed bun face crumpled up. Apparently, although she saved the male protagonist, still killing him is the best choice for her sake. Actually, there is another way that is, according to the voice who would whisper in her ear, find the map of the city boundary in order to go back. After reading the book, it was crystal clear to her that this city boundary map is a rare treasure map which can only be obtained by the male protagonist. However, this other choice was too time-consuming and laborious she was in a hurry to go back. She really didn't want to find any ghost map. Therefore, she had to apologize to him. After repeatedly strengthening her belief, she still felt a little hesitant. At this point, she really didn't know which of the two options she was considering doing. At this moment when Emo Linyuan saw her bulging face frown, he suddenly wanted to laugh scornfully. He did not know how to describe the feeling of narrowly escaping from death. Before, when he was held down by official Lu, he had the thought of ways to dismember Yi Mu's body for a thousand of times to keep him sane. But after seeing Yi Mu rush in, these kinds of thoughts suddenly disappeared from his mind. Because the moment she stepped foot inside, the first thing she looked for was him. It was obvious to him that she came for him. But why? Why would she take a huge risk to save him when in the first place she sent him here herself? Yi Mu took out the rag filled with his blood from his mouth and frowned, Hey, this young lady asks you, do you hate me for having treated you like this? Yi Mu decided to simplify matters. She decided that if he said that he hated her, then she would go with the first option and kill him. On the other hand, if he didn't say the word hate, then shall put off this discussion until later. Mo Linyuan coughed and bled as soon as he tried to speak. Official Lu had been very fierce, digging a knife on his shoulder just to subdue him. He was injured internally, and his body ached all over. Yi Mu couldn't help frowning at this. She wanted to reach for a handkerchief but thought against it. Unbeknownst to her, the maidservants behind her secretly looked at her back with a strange look. Did the young lady just ask a slave if he hated her? Is there even a slave in this residence who doesn't hate her? Moreover, the young slave Aji was brought into the mansion by the young lady, who had tortured him numerous times before. Isn't it a little too late for her to ask him whether he hates her or not? It was only after a while when Emo Linyuan stopped coughing, that he asked in a hoarse voice, to hate or not hate what's it to you? Yi Mu pursed her lips. 
It just so happened that there was an imperial bodyguard to her side helping with the cleanup she tiptoed as she passed and swiftly pulled out the bodyguard sword. Shuring goes the sound of the blade being drawn out of its sheath. For the surrounding people, it made the hair on one's skin rise. Everyone thought this little devil was unhappy again, so they all promptly knelt and shouted, Young lady, spare this life. Young lady, please forgive. At this moment because of her, the busy people in the hall were all prostrating on the ground. Only she, a small bean with a sword, stood. She seriously stared at Imo Linyuan, the tip of the sword also pointed at him. If you hate me, I will kill you. If you are willing to let this be, then I will not kill you for the time being. The servant girls all bowed down because of her words. If she threatened others with a sword, the other party in question should immediately say I don't hate you, isn't that right? But what is really on this boy's mind? Does she know? Mo Linyuan sat up slowly and straightened up. The unblinking, dark, inky eyes instantaneously looked at her. In a firm voice, he said only one word. Hate. If it weren't for Yi Mu, the people who protected him wouldn't have died, he wouldn't have been reduced to a slave, he wouldn't have been almost humiliated by that animal how could he not hate her for the things she has done. But in fact, he knew that his feelings for her were not only hate but something more complex and contradicting, which started the moment she had entered that door. Hearing this, Yi Mu frowned. If this was the case, then she thought, he shouldn't blame her for what she was about to do. Her eyes flashed with decisive murder. She took a deep breath, and in the next second, the blade thrust forward with killing intent. All the people subconsciously closed their eyes they didn't want to see the next blood splattered three feet in front of them. The little slaves around them were crying and screaming in fear once again. But the imagined tragedy did not happen. Yi Mu held the sword in her hands, her eyebrows knitted in a tight frown. Chapter, 8 The tip of the sword pierced the little boy's neck, but it only penetrated a little before stopping completely. She had clearly made up her mind, but the moment the blade entered the flesh, she found herself unable to plunge the blade deeper. As a soldier with a sense of justice, she really couldn't bring herself to kill an unarmed child. If the other party becomes a tyrant later, only then would be able to say she is killing for the sake of the common people. However, she knows very well that this child will be an everlasting emperor who will unite the land with the common people even let her do the deed. Watching the blood flowing down his neck, Yi Mu's once charming face was now stretched taut, her rising voice was ice cold. What about now? Do you hate me? A mistake. She must not have hesitated. If she wanted to kill him, she should have done it. When one brings the subject of innocence to the table, isn't she innocent for saving herself after being transmigrated to this place? She didn't ask for any of this. With such a thought, her eyes became firm again even more intense than the murderous look from before. This made everyone who were kneeling on the ground tremble. Mo Linyuan remained motionless, at the face of death, his heart involuntarily beat faster. It was very clear that the other side wanted to kill him the killing intent is too strong. But now, she's hesitating again maybe with just one word from him, she will make a wholly different decision. But how could he let himself say he didn't hate her? Mo Linyuan mournfully laughed and looked at her, word by word he said, if you want to kill Methan do it. I have nothing else left to say. Merely recalling the hatred for his imperial concubine mother's death, the hatred for her mother's exterminated family, his smile became wider by the second. If he does not die today, he will surely let all those who had bullied him, humiliated him and harmed him pay the price a thousandfold. Yi Mu was overwhelmed by this twisted smile, her heart twitched, and the hand on the hilt of the sword, couldn't bear to hold it anymore. Only deep animosity against various people could let a nine-year-old child show such a smile. He refused to break his pride when he was reduced to slavery and when her sword went into the flesh, he didn't waver. Did she really want to kill such a valiant person? In an instant, Yimu felt that her sword was one thousand pounds heavy and she could not stomach piercing it through with ease. In the end, they could only hear the clang of metal as the sword fell to the ground. Mo Linyuan covered his bleeding throat, looking at her in surprise. Then he listened to Yi Mu commanding another unexpected order, bring him back and cure him. 
everyone felt greatly relieved. No dead person means a good thing no death is good. They hurriedly got up from the ground to follow her order, lest she changed her mind. Just at that moment, they dare not breathe the two children were so strong that when they engaged with each other, they seemed to be like giants colliding. So, they currently felt the urge to escape. And among the other little slaves who had been kneeling on one side, a boy suddenly threw himself in front of them. Mighty young lady. Please accept me too. I can do anything. Anything you want me to do. The boy who said this was dressed in black, with thick eyebrows and big eyes the two eyes were bright and full of expression. He saw just recently how official Lu treated Mo Linyuan, everything was displayed in front of him. There was fear in his heart, so when he was speaking now, his voice was trembling, but he was calmer than before. The servant and the other slaves could not help but glance at him. Doesn't the little fellow already know that this household was a wolf's nest with a tiger's cave in it? And despite that, he took the initiative to ask the young lady to accept him. At the thought of the young lattice torturing pastimes, everyone sighed in their hearts for this slave. Yi Mu was originally in a depressed mood when she saw the little boy, she couldn't help but laugh. She felt that the child was very good. At first glance, it looks the same as the kind of children she is fond of from her original world. All right, take him with us. Yes. The servant girls and all the other subordinates dare not neglect in their actions. The two young slaves were rushed to the courtyard where Yi Mu resided. No matter what the young lady wants to do with them, they will do it. As long as they do not get included in the ordeal. Chapter 9 After she came out of the hall, she felt the warmth of the sunshine on her face face, and she couldn't help but look around. Under the azure blue sky, the wooden attic in front of her was exquisite on the tip of her nose was the lingering scent of wood. Such a reality makes it impossible for her to regard this place as a fictional world anymore. Before, she had always thought it was all fiction, unreal. It was because this world was not part of her known history but now, what if the book was a recorded history of a parallel world? Then shouldn't it be, that no matter how many vital people she kills in this world, she would only be rewriting history, without a ticket home? Thinking of the original host's terrible father, imagining the young, future emperor, realizing that she had transmigrated through a place and time in constant war, furthermore something about an elusive city boundary map Yi Mu couldn't help but faintly sigh. She feels the future would be always bleak. Two more hours later, Yi Mu was finally able to clear her thoughts to think of the current situation. The next problem was what to do with the male lead. Looking at the two half-grown boys in front of her Yi Mu couldn't help but sigh again. She was part of the special forces, not a kindergarten teacher. Why did she transmigrate to this place only to take care of children? But there was no other way, if this world was real, then there was no other choice but to find the city boundary map in order to get home. However, such a map was only destined to be discovered by the male lead in the future. In this way, she had to brush up a favorable impression on the male lead. Yi Mu's little face was crumpled up. The delicate round face looks like a lovely jade snow after losing its hostility. But many people dare not see more. The young lady likes to be feared by other people. If one is not afraid, she will make them fear her so. Therefore, no one dares to speak a word to Yi Mu. The room was in absolute silence, and the atmosphere is completely suffocating. What's your name? Yi Mu asked the boy dressed in black. He looked about ten years old. Obviously, he had just become a slave he was very strong, lean and powerful. His eyes were dark and shiny, and he seemed to be a little green, just like a young wolf. No wonder official Lu would pick the male protagonist first. He knelt and said loudly. Reporting to the high and mighty young lady, I have no name. Yi Mu suddenly felt some pity for this child. He didn't even have a name. That means he must be an orphan. Then you'll follow my family's surname and be called Yi Xiaolang, the head wolf who leads the other wolves. A wolf is a powerful creature. Yi Mu hoped that this child will be as strong as this beast in the future. Yi Xiaolang was fond of this given name very much, and his two eyes shined even more brightly. Yi Xiaolang thanks the young lady for conferring this name and this surname. 
he kowtowed again. Yi Mu was not very fond of people kowtowing to her, but currently, she is better off not acting too much like her real, independent self. Her line of sight changed and fell on Emo Linyuan. Of course, he was now aliased as Aji. By this time, he had been simply bandaged. There was pallor on his delicate face, and his complexion was pale from excessive blood loss. But those ink-like eyes were still vigilant, with a straight back and there was a kind of indomitable resilience from him. Yi Mu thought, even if the male protagonist has suffered a lot, he still had his sharpness. That's why he could become a righteous and upright emperor in the of this generation. As expected, a proud and unyielding character is a trait only obtained when born. And she, as a woman in the military, naturally appreciates the people who have the guts most. But the male protagonist at present doesn't trust her, so she can't tell him about the city boundary map for the time being. She touched her chin and exclaimed, As for you Aji, you'll be next to Shaolang in the future and be my personal subordinate. I'm going to train you ferociously to be this young lad's personal killers. Chapter, 10 When she said that, everyone else showed a look as if they were expecting it. So, that's the real reason for the young lattice earlier actions. Besides, how could the young lady suddenly change temperament and be nice to people in just a short time? It seems the original intention was to actually train them to be her own men. Meanwhile, more than two hours was enough for Yili to obtain the news from official Lu. It has been leaked that the emperor secretly summoned an imperial physician last night, and that imperial physician had mysteriously died in a violent way the coming morning. If it was a peaceful time, such news wouldn't be alerting. Even more so, with the current chaotic warring states period where human life was considered the least valuable no one will pay attention to the death of an imperial physician. However, if one was to combine it with Yi Mu's phrase the emperor is critically ill, it was something major to think about. Is it true that the emperor was seriously ill? Otherwise, why would the imperial physician be secretly executed? In his letter, official Lu thanked him profusely. He said, if Yi Mu hadn't told everyone the news, he would have still been passive until this time. Yi Li cared more about who the man in black was. Moreover, why wasn't he the one told of this breaking news? Instead, he wanted to spread the news by using a small child like Yi Mu. What was true his objective? With all kinds of doubts and precautions, Yi Li called for Yi Mu to come over. At this time, Yi Mu had calmed down a lot. Yi Li's men even came to bring her a message secretly in the evening. This level of caution means that Yi Li wouldn't punish her for her defiance last night this also means that she had gambled right. The emperor was truly in danger. Thus, without waiting for another second, she went gladly. Father. Yi Mu showed a respectful salute the moment she came in. Everyone in the Yi family is afraid of him, even the original Yi Mu too. Therefore, she pretended to be scared just by his mere presence. N. In the candlelight, Yi Li was reading through some documents. When he saw her child he now considered clever, he called to her in an amiable voice. What happened to the emperor he paused and observed the expression on Yi Mu's face, but he only saw Yi Mu looking at him expectantly, anxious for his next words. What happened to the emperor was proven true. You did a good job. You promptly told father this news. So father will reward you. Speak child, what do you want? As if a heavy burden had been lifted off Yi Mu's heart, she faked her giddiness and said, Father, I'm only very glad to have helped you. Mu does not need a reward, but if you can, can you give me some first-rate medicine for wounds? Hearing this, Yi Li's eyebrows creased immediately. He thought of the events last night and said with some displeasure, Don't tell me it's for that little slave. Yi Mu nodded in reply, Indeed. That guy is untamed I must tame him. But I'm afraid he'll kill him easily if I'm too ruthless. That's why, I want some good medicine to make him die slowly. When she said this, her eyes were extraordinarily devious, tossing her original cordial expression to the back. Upon seeing this, Yi Li was satisfied and smiled, All right, father will give you a few bottles of medicine bestowed by the emperor himself. For this kind of disobedient person, just give him some strength until the time comes, he would only wish for death. Do a good job and be like father. 
Yi Mu was also laughing wickedly on one side, but she thought to herself, it is no wonder that the Yi family was done for. When the children were brought up in this way, could they really escape retribution from the heavens, better yet off those they had trampled on? After achieving his purpose to interrogate his daughter, Yi Li sternly told her not to speak a word about the emperor being critically ill. Consequently, he had already ordered his men to silence other parties inside the residence. And as a parting remark, he told her to supervise the two slaves well and to not talk nonsense. Yi Mu had a worrying guess, if not for the death of countless people leading to suspicion, Yi Li would perhaps clean the place of insiders throughout including her. In front of a ruthless man, she had to be extra careful. Chapter, 11 After returning with the medicine, her servant girls retired for the night. The residence was silent as most of the people went to sleep. Yi Mu took this time to sneak out. Afraid of being assassinated by an expert, Yi Li had transferred all the guards in the residence to his place. Therefore, it was easy for Yi Mu to do anything she wanted smoothly. Her destination was the place where Mo Linyuan and Yi Shaolang were. She frowned when she entered the slave hut, which was dark and damp and reeked of a musty odor, which meant it was already growing molds. If a person lives in this kind of place, even if he isn't sick, he is bound to be ill sooner or later. But her small courtyard was already full. Apparently, her first order of business tomorrow is to find a way to let them live in the side rooms. Who is it? As the result of living on edge and caution for a long time, Mo Linyuan instantly woke up the moment Yi Mu came in. As soon as he uttered a sound, Yi Xiaolang to his side was also risen from his slumber. What is it? What's happening? When they sat up, disoriented and still half asleep, they were shocked silly to see Yi Mu standing at the door. Shu. Yi Mu placed a finger to her lip sternly, signaling for them to be silent, and then she tiptoed inside quietly. As she walked, her luxurious silk sleepwear was illuminated by the only oil lamp in the room. Shining with a rich luster, Yi Mu did not care in the slightest about her own skirts dragging against the dirty ground. Because of her short stature, she almost climbed into the bed on all fours. Young young lady. Yi Xiaolang was a little stumped for words. Afterwards, he saw Yi Mu toss a package wrapped in paper towards him. There isn't enough food to eat, isn't there? Eat this. As soon as the Yi Xiaolang was able to catch it, the delicious and tantalizing scent of chicken drifted from it. He suddenly couldn't help but drool. Young lady. He looked gratefully at Yi Mu. Eat. Yes. Yi Xiaolang didn't need to be told twice. He only spared a quick glance at Mo Linyuan, then sat on the broken couch to wolf down the chicken drumsticks. Mo Linyuan did not look at him, his eyes were only at Yi Mu, wary and full of questions. What do you want to do? Yi Mu sighed at this tone of voice. Indeed, truly stingy, ah. Even until here, after she had saved him, he still would not soften up to her. She shook the medicine in her hand and meaningfully said, they bandaged you too, didn't they? However, the wound on your shoulder will go bad if you don't take good and proper care of it. He sat up straight, and this time more cautious than ever, he asked again, enunciating each word carefully, and after that, what do you want to do? From the day she came to save him, this bossy young lady has become very different she wants to kill him then she wants to let him go. In the end, she ultimately switched her attitude and changed her mind about killing him. But these contradictory moods in her had noticed it all. So now his thoughts were in disarray, hopefully wondering and soberly suspecting at the same time if she was trying to change, or she only had an ulterior motive. But who was he fooling? It could only be the latter. After all, for Yi Mu to personally give them medicine and food in the middle of the night, no matter how majestic her reasons are, it's not something Yi Mu would usually do. Especially not something that can be considered kind. When he thought of these heavy, pessimistic thoughts, he slowly spat out the words plaguing his heart, or perhaps though you want to kill me without doing it yourself. Chapter, 12 Yi Mu was uncovering the haphazardly wrapped gauze from his wound when she heard this. She dipped her head low and melancholy mumbled, Has your spirit been conquered by tyranny now? What? Mo Linyuan wasn't able to hear her clearly. 
Yimu donned a fierce look, trying to brush off her former comment. She replied viciously, this young lady can decide any time whether she wants you to live or not you are just a little slave wrapped around my little finger. How dare you talk so much nonsense. This absurd reply made Mo Linyuan choke at once. He hadn't spoken yet when Yi Shaolang was already by his side bringing him water. Yi Mu praised him for his quick response. She then allowed him to help her so they could deal with Mo Linyuan's wound together. The main reason actually was that she was too small now to do such intricate chores. With her short arms and legs, she couldn't even carry a basin of water. If she could, then she wouldn't have to call on someone else. After wasting a lot of energy, they eventually were able to clean the wound on Mo Linyuan's upper body well. Yi Mu once again lamented how skinny this kid was. What a shame he isn't chubby enough. Looking at Mo Linyuan's freshly bandaged shoulder and the water drenched in red, Yi Xiaolang's expression was gloomy. With a low voice, he somberly said. That official Lu can't be called a human being. Because Aji refused to give in, he did every barbaric thing to punch him, kicking and eventually wounding him with a knife. If it hadn't been for Aji's fast reflexes, the knife wouldn't have gone through his shoulder, but towards his neck it wouldn't have ended well if he gave in easily. That official Luai watched him kill three people this afternoon as if they were animals to be slaughtered. His eyes darkened as he remembered the tragedy of the little slaves who had died before Mo Linyuan's turn. Yi Mu, silently listening, also felt fury and she gritted her teeth unconsciously. Anyone who tormentors the weak and finds sadistic joy in it are nothing but a bunch of scums. Unbeknownst to her, her unconcealed, outraged expression fell into Mo Linyuan's eye, deepening his already confused mind. It was only then that Yi Xiaolang also suddenly remembered it was the young lady who had deliberately sent Mo Linyuan to official Lu. To accept punishment, she had said. Won't the young lady be mad from being disrespected? He covered his mouth with fear and looked at her timidly. All right. Yi Mu could tell at a glance what they were both thinking, I won't be able to do such things in the future. The two little boys looked at her earnestly. In return, she couldn't help puff out her chest to resolutely say the following words. I, Yimu, will absolutely not allow any person under my tutelage to suffer harm. If they only knew the former soldiers who had been under her training before had the lowest mortality rate. And they were already grown men. Not to mention two mere children. Mo Linyuan stayed silent, pensive. On the other hand, Yi Xiaolang was visibly beaming with joy. I will do my best to protect the young lady too. Good. Yimu nodded, patting him on the shoulder like a grown woman. Under the dim glow of the oil lamp, three children were busy on the couch, two were dressed in plain linen and one in expensive silk. From a mere glance, such a scene would already make the observer think this kind of grouping is incompatible. Yet, they were harmonious. Yi Xiaolang was plagued with thoughts. Perhaps, is it from the young lattice too attentive expression? She moved and looked as if she was afraid of hurting the other party, even just a little bit. Is this how the kind of person, as the other slaves have said, who kills people without blinking an eye at a young age, should act? But it was Imo Linyuan whose head was deep in turmoil. It was like his heart was increasingly getting shocked every time. The Yi Mu he knew would absolutely not treat his wounds so carefully and patiently. Even the mere act of nursing him was impossible. What was she playing at? Ignorant to the boy's thoughts, Yi Mu took out a small bottle from her sleeves and said to Yi Xiaolang on one side, You go and keep watch at the door. Yi Xiaolang hurriedly complied and went outside to stand guard. After she felt the coast was clear, Yi Mu opened the bottle stopper and a strong scent akin to wine drifted out. She dipped her handkerchief, drenching it in the liquor inside. The moment Mo Linyuan saw it, she hurriedly moved her free hand to cover his mouth. Consequently, the other hand pressed the soaked handkerchief towards the wound on Mo Linyuan's shoulder. His body trembled at once at the stinging pain. Chapter 13 MFMM Came Mo Linyuan's muffled scream. His eyes instantly widened in shock, the green veins on his neck popping out. Yi Mu gave a small smile her eyes looking a bit guilty. It's easy for the wound to get inflamed if it isn't disinfected. 
you should bear it for now. Muffled by her small hands, Emo Linyuan's bloodshot eyes could only stare at her. Locked in this position, the two children were very close. He could clearly see how her brows furrowed for the tiniest of fraction when she saw him in pain. She felt the heat coming from her tiny palm, and the smell of milk coming from her breath. These served to offer him comfort, even for a little while and his muscles relaxed a little, tension leaving. However, he was already damp with his cold sweat. After Yi Mu disinfected his shoulder, medicine was quickly applied on the wound. Mo Linyuan observed that the way she dressed his wound was quite unusual. She wrapped the gauze around the torso before wounding it around the shoulders, only applying little ointment. By this time, Mo Linyuan already had no strength left to even sit down. He was already lying on the bed, his breathing steadily evening out. And he could very well smell the expensive incense coming from her sleepwear which was ridiculously out of place in this little, dilapidated room. His mind was muddled as if it had been stuffed with a lump of numbing paste. Was he dreaming? But he felt that this dream is even too ridiculous. Yi Mu saving him, giving him medicine, and lastly, looking at him with worried eyes? Either he's gone insane or she's the crazy one. His tired eyes swept across the room to Yi Mu as she laid down on the dirty bed and curled up into a small ball. Her little face which looked haughty before was now solemn, as if she was facing big dilemma. Yi Mu's mind was filled with their earlier conversation from tonight. When she was concentrating on rubbing the medicine, she suddenly heard Mo Linyuan speak. Today, because I angered you, you sent me to the pavilion. Caught at this straightforward remark, Yi Mu felt she was caught in a really difficult situation. In a daze, she drilly said, I did that to frighten you. Mo Linyuan listening to her reply, immediately sneered. Ten days ago, you kidnapped me and brought me to this residence to make me obedient, you whipped me and then locked me up with Shaolang. You let me run around a cage wearing a heart protector so you could play archery with me as the target. He spoke every word as if he was warning himself. To not forget how cruel Yi Mu's nature was and how his heart shouldn't be filled with contradictory feelings because of her recent actions. And with every word Yi Mu heard, she lowered her head, cursing the heavens. At the end, she wanted to strangle God. Why wasn't she given a better identity? Was this all intentional so that it would be impossible for her to get the city boundary map? Since their relationship was currently in the deep negative, don't even mention about asking him to help her find that map in the future. She's a goner. Of all people, why did she transmigrate as the vicious cannon fodder who had cruelly abused the male lead? Could she even relax for a moment to positively look at the bright side of things? Not anymore. She must brush up a favorable impression and mend their relationship, or else. But how can she make that change? Yi Mu licked her lips, racking up her brains for a solution. Come on, think creatively. Actually. I kidnapped you and brought you to this place for a reason. That ice because because I saw someone after you before. There's no doubt that the general's house is a safe haven, so I took you here. When Mo Linyuan heard these words, his lethargic, drooping eyes opened suddenly, vigilantly looking at her. Yi Mu wasn't able to notice his probing eyes. It was like a switch had been turned on her brain and her eyes shined brightly. She knows what to say. And then I let you fight with Shaolang because I wanted you to exercise. And to do actual combat is the fastest and most efficient way to train your muscles. That's right. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but snort this time. He couldn't believe her reasons at all. Although he felt his body strengthened in a very short time, he doubted that it was her original goal. No, it couldn't be that. And as for keeping you in a cage as a practice target for me it was to train your reflexes. Yes, that's it. Haven't you heard of the saying? Only in the face of death will human potential increase infinitely. I did this all for your sake. Would you look at my sincere eyes and say I'm lying? Yi Mu looked at him intently. Yes. She is a good Samaritan who had only been thoughtless of her actions. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but laugh drilly. He asked his last question in a hoarse voice, what about beating me with a whip every day? Chapter, 14 he wants to see kind of excuse she can come up this time. 
Meanwhile, all the other party wanted right now was to prostrate herself in front of him. To ask a question so complicated, at this point was there really no possibility to become friends? She's not asking for too much like reaching a level where they become best of friends only as long as he doesn't think of killing her in the future, that's already fine. That's because. Yi Mu's face contemplating face could be seen in the soft glow of the tiny flame. She was biting her lips in consternation. Suddenly, I hit you to improve your bodice physical resistance. Defense. Don't you know? If you get hit a lot, your body will be more resistant to blows you may not see reason for the things I've done now, but at a critical moment in the future, it can and will save your life. She exclaimed, nodding her head in surprise at her own wit. Her words are absolute, he won't be able to find a flaw in it. How hard is it to cheat a nine-year-old kid anyway? It shouldn't be a problem. Mo Linyuan wanted to open his mouth to mock the nonsense sprouting of her mouth, but when he saw her expectant eyes looking at him hopefully, it made him swallow those derisive words at the tip of his tongue back down his throat. Really? He ultimately gave a small smile. At this facetious reply, a trace of absurdity appeared on his thin, pale face. Of course. Yi Mu patted her chest and proudly replied, you will know what kind of girl I am when you spend time with me all day long. I am really a good person. After she had finished her little tirade, she continued to apply the medicine with more vigor and care than before, trying to validate her words and her kindness with her actions. Her face was cheerful, lips subconsciously stretched to a little smile. As if she was glad that she was able to rectify her past actions. While Yi Mu wasn't paying attention to him, Mo Linyuan had been observing her profoundly, his stare intensely becoming heavier by the minute. Actually, today, he had watched three slaves in front of him get tortured to death by that animal official Lu. He hated Yi Mu hated her to the point his head was filled with murderous thoughts he wanted to break her body into pieces in the most grotesque way possible. But when it came his turn and he was seized, unable to break away even if he had been resisting strongly, he had felt desperation hit him. At that moment, he had cast aside all thought, all hatred and swore to himself. Anyone who comes to rescue him today, he will be forever grateful to that person for a lifetime. But what he didn't expect was that, she was the one who rushed in to save him. Mo Linyuan closed his eyes again now that her temperament has changed significantly, he'll act as if he is in a theater he'll observe for the meantime the things she wants to do. After Yi Mu finished tending his wound with medicine, she found out that Mo Linyuan had fallen asleep. In the dim glow of the oil lamp, his thin face had loosened up slightly, looking innocent. When she saw that he had fell asleep, her eyebrows instinctively wrinkled. She didn't expect this time, in front of the person he considers as an enemy, he could let his guard down and sleep freely. But maybe sleep has caught up to him, and his body couldn't help but succumb to it when the original Yi Mu did things that prevented him from sleeping in the past. He must be truly exhausted now. She smiled with relief at this relaxed sight of him and felt that the child was finally warming up to her. When the time comes that he obtains the map and finds the treasure it holds, that map would already be useless to him. And as long as remains kind to him, if she wants it, maybe he'll give it to her, right? The first step is to build a good relationship with him. Yi Mu secretly thought in her mind. Outside, Yi Xiaolang was entertaining himself by counting the stars, hands placed on both sides of his cheeks and eyes full of expectations for the future. He had been raised by wolves before he was caught as a slave, so he trusts his heightened intuitions the most. Before he was able to meet Yi Mu, he had heard a great deal about her notoriety. However, if it hadn't been for her today, he wouldn't have it better than the previous dead slaves. For which, he had decided to follow her he firmly believed that his verdict wouldn't be a wrong one. After everything was done, it was late at already way into the evening when Yimu was able to get back to her bed. The thrilling day filled with chaos was finally over. Still, she felt as if she were lucid dreaming where everything was suspiciously real. She looked down at her chubby little hands, and she felt a myriad of emotions. Finally, she clenched her fists, coming to a decision. In the future, shall concentrate on raising him. Impress him until she gains his approval. And then finally get the city boundary map to get back home. It's that simple. 
starting tomorrow, she must make the perfect cultivation plan for him. Thinking so, she gradually fell asleep. Chapter, 15 A few days later. Young lady, didn't you train us to be your personal hired men? Why do we have to learn to write? Yi Xiaolang asked gloomily. He was a child who hated reading. It's been a few days since he had been under Yi Mu's wings and Yi Xiaolang had surprisingly found that under the ferocious so-called disposition of Yi Mu, she was actually quite approachable. Therefore, his courage to be laxer around her grew day by day. Yi Mu snorted, and said pompously in front of everyone within earshot. Fool! How can the personal killers of this young lady be illiterate like dogs wagging their tails, who can't even read simple characters? It's embarrassing to even think of taking you out with me. If you want to be trained but feel like studying is no good don't even think for one second that I won't whip you. As soon as the maid standing next to her heard that the young lady, who had been peaceful for a few days, was going to whip people again, her expression distorted, silently looking at Yi Xiaolang with a cry for help. But Yi Xiaolang knew that Yi Mu's words were all bark and no bite. With a small smile on his face, he replied, well, since it was ordered by the young lady, Yi Xiaolang will certainly study hard. Yi Mu nodded, satisfied, and then looked at Mo Linyuan. Mo Linyuan is actually JV1 literate, but he had escaped from the Mo country's imperial palace at the age of six, which means he has not been exposed to the systematic education for a long time, therefore there were gaps in learning that had to be filled. In the current era, learning to write and read can only be considered a luxury for well-off family, so he cannot understand why Yi Mu would let them have this expensive treat. When he saw Yi Mu looking at him and Yi Xiaolang, he nodded, I will also study hard. After all, to be able to have the privilege of education as his current status as a slave is already considered a miracle. He absolutely would not give this opportunity up. Seeing the two of them cooperating well, Yi Mu signaled to the people on her side to go out and call in the teachers she had hired as private tutors. They're two men, both young and old. She said to the teacher with a beard you, teach him starting with three character classic. She pointed to Yi Xiaolang. Then she said to other teacher left, you, start teaching him the national policy. Yi Xiaolang was incredulous when he heard this. His childish ego was angry and jealous. When he saw that others had something he didn't have, he yearned for it. He impatiently asked, young lady, why do I have to learn differently from him? Yi Mu patted him on the shoulder and said earnestly, as you can see he's so thin that he might possibly take the profession of a scholar in the future. How can he compare with you, who can be both a fine scholar and military man? With this rousing speech, Yi Xiaolang swept his eyes over at Mo Linyuan's body then nodded vigorously. So the young lady originally values him more. He immediately said, don't worry young lady, I will protect him in the future. N. Good. Mo Linyuan was listening on one side. The child in him who had almost vanished also made its appearance. A scholar trained in martial arts. Is she sure it's not just a simpleton with a set of developed limbs? To conclude, until Mo Linyuan's wound was healed, Yi Mu gave them text lessons first. When Mo Linyuan's wounds were almost healed and it was all right for him to move without affecting it, Yi Mu began to drill them according to her training regimen. Where, the first part of the martial arts training required them to master the horse stance. In order not to show too much concern, Yi Mu left for her room to sleep and ordered a servant girl to look after them. Who knew that only after a while, she would hear Yi Xilang's angry voice resound from outside. What are you doing? He's not well yet. The servant girl guarding them sneered scornfully, the young lady said that an hour is an hour, and an hour hasn't passed yet. Why are you pretending as if you're already on the verge of death? Get up quickly. Hearing the incident taking place, Yi Mu instantly ran out to see Mo Linyuan's pale face as was he lifted from the ground by Yi Xiaolang. On his arm was a bleeding fresh wound from being whipped by a barbed whip. Chapter, 16 The dark, striking color of blood against Mo Linyuan's porcelain skin made Yi Mu stare. What happened? She asked crossly. When the servant girl saw that Yi Mu had come out herself, her face immediately lost its color, but she quickly recovered and smiled arrogantly. Trying to take credit for this gruesome work, she said, Young lady, 
were you troubled by the noise from these insignificant runts? Don't worry, this servant is here to supervise them well I won't let them be lazy for even one second. Yi Mu looked at Mo Linyuan's bleeding wound, and then back to her maidservant. For quite a while, she was speechless and dumbfounded. The abuser even had a good time. Ah! Sister, your whole family will live in the crematorium. Stop laughing do you know that you will die miserably in the future under the hands of the person you whipped? Keeping these thoughts to herself, Yi Mu donned her cold exterior and asked icily, Who gave you permission to punish my people? Hearing this, the maidservant felt dread and hurriedly knelt down, begging for mercy. She couldn't understand what was going on. Previously, the young lady never cared about these things. Didn't she always like to see blood? Why was she acting like this now? The other servants in vicinity who were nosing around also tried to sneak a peek at the current fiasco. They wanted to see if the young lady really had a miraculous change in personality. Yi Mu looked around, her cold face deepening a notch, everyone listen up. These two are my carefully raised minions. They are my own things. Anyone who dares touch them other than me, this young lady will promise you a cruel death. Do you understand? After she had declared this, everyone then understood that the young had never changed, but rather only had a new hobby of keeping people as pets in the meantime she hasn't really become better from before. When the maidservant kneeling on the ground heard these words, she almost had a mini heart attack. She thought of Yi Mu's brutal methods of torturing people and then she thought of how she had just moved her hand against her pets. She quickly tried to plead for mercy, please please spare this servant's life. This servant will never dare to do it again. Never, ever. Yi Mu hummed conceitedly, scrunching her small nose in derision. Today this young lady is in a good mood, therefore I'll let you off just this time. If this happens a second time, they'll throw your body to the tiger's pit and have it devour you alive. This servant understands. The young lady is benevolent. Thank you, young lady. She gratefully did a small kowtow, missing Yi Mu's frown directed at her. Yes, yes your face upsets me greatly. Quickly get out of my sight. She ordered in a wicked voice that made the servant quickly scutter away in haste, for fear that Yi Mu would change her mind and take back her words. When she ran away, all the eavesdropping servants also scattered like ants. Seeing the surrounding was now clean of bystanders, Yi Mu was finally able to observe Mo Linyuan once again. This person is really a magnet for accidents. Even when he hasn't gone out to the world yet, he is already suffering misfortunes. All right let's call it a day. Both of you go back also let Xiao Lang to treat your wound with the ointment. You may depart now. But Mo Linyuan's attention was somewhere else his dark eyes were staring at her feet. No one was able to notice this, but Yi Mu had ran out barefoot. The palm-sized, jade-white feet were hidden under her long skirt it would be difficult for others to see, unless they were almost parallel to the ground. Did Yi Mu felt urgency when she heard them in distress? She ran out without even remembering to wear her shoes. Does she really have no ulterior motive? When Mo Linyuan saw that Yi Mu was about to leave, he suddenly opened his mouth, making her stop in her tracks. An hour hasn't passed yet for today. He was referring to the amount of time they were supposed to do for a horse stance. Yi Mu looked back at him, tilting her head confusedly. You are wounded can you still continue? Yes. He stood up straight, then proceeded to half squat taking a Zama step, glistening sweat gliding across his pale forehead. He had already undergone almost several days of training, that's why he was more determined and didn't want to be easily swayed by the pain. His eyes were sharper, and most importantly, his pride didn't allow him to retreat and let Yi Mu think he was useless. Xiao Lang saw that Mo Linyuan insisted to continue training and had to begrudgingly follow suit. All he wanted was to have a rest. He really can't slack off with Mo Linyuan around. Watching them be resolute about her given training, the corners of Yi Mu's mouth inadvertently lifted, ultimately breaking to a smile. Good. You're both doing very well. Starting tomorrow, ITLL be two hours a day. Ack. Young lady no. Yi Xiaolang mournfully cried out when he heard this. 
Meanwhile Mo Linyuan nodded and only said a word in return. Yi Mu finally laughed. Seeing how hard they were working, her heart felt less restless. When the warm, morning sunshine fell on her face, she especially felt more rejuvenated. In order to reward them for their hard work, Yi Mu added a new sequence to their regimen, slowly packing their schedule for the whole day. Yi Xiaolang grumbled endlessly but was still earnest about learning. All thanks to Aji who said that learning these things will make them better in the future. Chapter, 17 It was another day at noon. After being occupied with schoolwork for most of the morning, Mo Linyuan and Xiaolang had lunch with Yi Mu, together at the same table. At this time, there was only the servant girl, Xiao Chiu waiting on them. Mo Linyuan had took two bites before stopping still. He always had a bad habit of being a picky eater, particularly hated garlic. Rather, it would be more fitting to say he detested everything that smelled bad. It was due to his upbringing as a child, where he was raised in the imperial family of the Mo country. It was known to be the opposite of the damp and cold Yu country and had less spiced foods. Therefore, not only did he detest garlic, but also other forms of cuisines with heavy spices. So, when every time they were eating, only Yi Xiaolong could be seen eating mouthfuls, while Mo Linyuan on one side is trying to slowly force small bites. But today, he suddenly found out that there wasn't even the faintest smell of garlic on the table. Almost every dish they had eaten before had been cooked with garlic, but today had been a different scenario. What's wrong? Yi Mu saw that he had stopped eating and she slightly raised her eyebrows questioningly. But Mo Linyuan was still tight-lipped, almost as if he had seen a ghost. Yi Xiaolang who noticed this also thought something was wrong. He looked at Mo Linyuan strangely. What is it? Is there something bad about the dish? Xiao Qiu, the servant girl who had been silent throughout, smiled and said. The young lady said she didn't like the taste of garlic. However, cooking meals without garlic will only cause poor physical constitution. So, this servant told the kitchen to find a way to remove the flavor of garlic. Hearing this, Mo Linyuan looked at Yi Mu with even more shock displayed on his face, but Xiao Qiu wasn't able to pay attention to this and continued revealing revelation after revelation. Our young lady is very clever. The kitchen said they didn't know a method to get rid of the smell. But the young lady had solved this problem and told them to steam garlic with tea and other variants of fragrant spices. In the end, the steamed garlic doesn't have the spicy smell or strong flavor of garlic at all. And now the big kitchen has started to follow this way of cooking meals with garlic. When Mo Linyuan heard this revelation, he was stunned and immediately sliced the pork meatball in front of him into half with his chopsticks. Looking closely, there was certainly garlic in it. But when he took one bite, he wasn't able to taste that flavor at all. For some reason, Mo Linyuan's chest was filled with panic. Back when he was a child, he always had bad stomach aches because he refused to eat garlic. Then, his mother and father were still there, but no one had thought of asking someone to find a way to remove garlic taste so he could eat dishes spiced with it without hurling from the pungent flavor. They would simply ask the imperial doctor to prescribe medicine for him when he was uncomfortable and thought nothing more of the matter. But Yi Mu noticed even such a minor thing. She also thought of a way to remedy it. This gesture. If this gesture is fake, then what else is true? Yi Mu, sensing the weird atmosphere forming in the dining table, hurriedly knocked on the wood surface and said, eating a meal only to talk a lot are you both thinking of avoiding this afternoon's schoolwork? At the thought of the mountain of tasks they are to do this afternoon, Yi Xiaolang speedily ate up his meal. The shell shock Mo Linyuan also resumed eating silently. Even if he was only chewing food in his mouth, he felt that there were fish bones stuck on his throat. He was only nine years old. At this age, his mood was subject to frequent fluctuations. He held his chopsticks in a vice grip, knuckles turning white. He badly wanted to grab Yi Mu by the shoulder and shake her irritably. He wanted to know why she was doing these things for him. Why is she being so kind to him suddenly? What's her purpose? Mo Linyuan felt that she was so confusing to the point that he doesn't even know what kind of disposition he must have to deal with her. Time flies and a month rushes by quickly. During this time, Mo Linyuan's wound has finally healed. 
Chapter, 18 One particular day, all the servants in the residence were called by the head female servant for a lecture. Therefore, in the courtyard, only Yi Mu and the two boys were left. Because the Yi Shaolang and Mo Linyuan were currently slaves, they were still not entitled to see the head servant. With no one else present this afternoon, Yi Mu had gave them a half-day holiday. Yi Shaolang was ecstatic. He used live in the jungle, wild and free. But fate cruel, he had been caught and brought to this place, where he had to be careful of every step he took and word he uttered. Tightly restricted, he feels he's already close to suffocating. Young lady. What are we going to play? He asked excitedly. M.O. Linyuan merely glanced at the other party. He continued to read, feeling he didn't need a holiday. He would only study and train himself. Cultivate every moment to become stronger. However, Yi Mu was caught in a difficult dilemma. What could be interesting in this ancient era where you can't play computer games? She looked up to the bright sky overhead and decided. It's a fine day today. Let's fly a kite. Okay. Okay. Yi Xiaolang nodded, enthusiastic to comply. Yi Mu turned around and rummaged a kite out of her cabinet. She brought out a very large peacock kite, a toy collected by the original Yi Mu before but was never used. Today, it will finally see the sky. Because the kite was too big for Yi Mu's small stature, most of the tails dragged across the ground as she ran to raise the kite up. It was a futile effort. Thinking there was no other option left, Yi Mu turned her line of sight towards Mo Linyuan hidden on one corner. Heavens! You are still reading until now. Yi Mu was astonished. Did Mo Linyuan have no childishness in him at all? He had three times as many academic assignments than Yi Xiaolang and now that she had given them time to entertain themselves and relax, he was still unmoved. Mo Linyuan placed down the book he was reading, with some helplessness he replied, I still have a political essay to memorize. Master will quiz me on it tomorrow. Nowadays, Mo Linyuan was a bit more talkative than before. After all, in spite of everything, humans have fleeting emotions and changeable minds. He had felt Yi Mu's sincerity through her actions lately, making him feel conflicted and his heart topsy-turvy. Hearing these words, Yi Mu moved towards him and grabbed his book, forcefully throwing it aside. Whatever. Hold the string Xiaolan will run ahead with the kite, and I will be behind. That's the final word. What else could Mo Linyuan do if she's being a domineering small bean? He could only accept the coil with a deadpan face. However, he remembered he had only played this kind of toy once, so he wasn't very skilled in flying kites. And over there, Yi Mu has already yelled to commence flying the kite. Immediately, Xiaolang ran ahead with Yi Mu in tow behind him, chasing after the long kite tail. Yi Xiaolang runs very fast Yi Mu was a special soldier in her original world, but her current body was just a lolita. Plus, Mo Linyuan was just standing like wooden stick at the back and refused to move. Therefore, they ran for a long time without getting the kite up. Watching disappointment flit across Yi Mu's face as she looked at the kite, Mo Linyuan finally laid down his guard and ran with them. Just then, a strong spring wind blew, and the kite slowly descends to the sky. It's going to fly. Young lady, don't let go now. With that, Yi Xiaoyang released the kite from his hands. As soon as his hands let go, he went to grab the coil from Mo Linyuan's hand. Meanwhile, Yi Mu also loosened her hold on the kite's tail, but she wasn't able to see where her feet was running and tripped. Be careful. Mo Linyuan instinctively threw the kite coil to the approaching Yi Xiaolang and dashed towards Yi Mu, catching her, almost in a blink of an eye. But Yi Mu only gave him a quick glance, rather, her eyes were glued to the sky, watching the huge peacock kite slowly rise. Her mouth involuntarily opened in awe and she felt a great sense of achievement in her heart. Did you see it? It's flying. Yi Mu eagerly shook Missouri Linyuan by the shoulder. Her body was still in Mo Linyuan half embrace, but it still didn't stop her from jumping up and down in a frenzy. Maybe the sunshine was too good, maybe the wind was too much. But when Mo Linyuan looked at Yi Mu's delicately powdered small face, framed by her round, bright eyes, 
his heart couldn't help but tremble at this adorable sight he finally admitted that his doubts were slowly disappearing. For, this kind of a lovely little girl makes the people who see her unconsciously accept her. Chapter, 19 This acknowledgement made Mo Linyuan sigh weakly. He held her up with a complex look, bending over to pat the non-existent dust on her skirt, whispering. Did you know that you almost fell? Eventually, Yi Mu removed her sight from the kite to look at him. She asked curiously, weren't you able to catch me? I didn't fall, so it's okay. Mo Linyuan lowered his eyes and whispered, but I won't catch you every time. You have to be careful yourself. When Yi Mu heard his words, she determinately looked at him. Giving him her full attention, she placed both hands on the sides of her waist, why won't you catch me every time? She had asked him in such a righteous way. As if she was saying that he had to be good to her, even if she had been bad to him before. It was such a childish question, even more coming from a dumpling. But this didn't make him feel hatred for her at all. On the contrary, he felt that at this moment, she was so cute. Enough for him to have the impulsive desire to hold her in his arms and pinch her chubby cheeks. Why won't you catch me every time? Mo Linyuan was at a loss, and his thoughts were disoriented. Meanwhile, Xiaolang shouted for Yi Mu, young lady. Come and fly the kite. Coming. Yi Mu heard Xiaolang calling for her and immediately broke free from Mo Linyuan, who was still mulling about the words to say, and ran towards Yi Xiaolang. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but feel a little annoyed. He looked at Yi Xiaolang, who was currently around Yi Mu, pulling the coil for her. And for the first time, he felt that he was quite an irksome presence in his eyes. For Yi Mu, she thought her actions weren't earth-shattering enough to garner other people's attention, but the people in the general's residence were extremely flabbergasted. The bloodthirsty and cruel Yi Missy has completely changed demeanor. Now, she was not fond of killing anymore, and instead liked to play as a despot. What fantastic news! Despite what other people might think if they knew she was raising the future emperor, when Yi Mu closes the door to start his training, she had always placed emphasis on the proper way to raise an emperor. It goes without saying that Mo Linyuan should have an all-round development of three important things, ethics, intelligence and physique. That's exactly right. After all, a person who becomes emperor for many years to come, shouldn't mature as a tyrant under her care. And for Yi Xiaolang, she thought it was best to make him learn martial arts. After all, in this chaotic world, no matter how strong the mouth is, it is not as big as the fist. But that's the million dollar question. How will they be able to practice martial arts? Her techniques weren't bad if she trained her body once again. But in this world, it's not considered as the best option when there was a huge difference in might when one uses internal martial arts. Moreover, the bodies of the people in this place might have different core structures from the people in her world. The humans in this world are born with a natural disposition for internal energy. As long as one cultivates his chi and opens the meridians, one can practice internal martial arts. However, many good ancient skills have already been lost. Perhaps, the male lead doesn't have the secret book of martial arts yet? With this thought in mind, Yi Mu secretly called out to Mo Linyuan at night. Young lady. Mo Linyuan didn't know what pressing matter Yi Mu was going to tell him that she would call him so late. But he knew one thing, and that she would not harm him in the slightest. Shu. Sure. Yi Mu told him to keep his voice down and said, just follow me closely. Then two people moved stealthily, trekking towards the most remote place of General's residence. Mo Linyuan was behind Yi Mu, and he could clearly see when she would curl up and walk alongside the corners of the wall. Doesn't she know that this was her own home? But like a little mouse, she would shrink her presence. For the second time, Yi Mu's adorable appearance made him smile. When Yi Mu turned to look at her back, she saw Mo Linyuan's smile in the bright moonlight framed by rockery, he was standing dressed in linen and grey, his delicate and handsome face amused. Looking more like an ethereal fairy than the brilliant but serious emperor described in the book. Chapter, 20 Yi Mu was dazzled by this rare smile. But she quickly brushed this off, and seriously said. What are you smiling for? Follow me, it'll take you somewhere good. 
Mo Linyuan hurried to catch up. Before long, Yi Mu had taken him to an abandoned, run-down courtyard. During her stay in this world, she hadn't been idle she already found the way to this place and was only waiting to act tonight. It had been written specifically in the book that when the male lead was still a slave, he once stumbled into a very secluded courtyard in the Yi residence. This courtyard was originally the dwelling of the former Yi ancestors. But then, a couple of the concubine-born children rebelled for the head seat of the family, and they united to burn their father and the first wife to death. A huge, terrible fire had broken out, it was unstoppable and that day, dozens of people had died in this courtyard. Thus, it had been sealed off no one dared to step foot inside the premises. The male lead had found treasure here. To recall the plot, the male lead was starving for a long time, being withheld food by the original Yi Mu. In the yard, he had found a snake and ran after it. It was then that he found a book covered in sheepskin. The book hadn't been too detailed on how he was able to obtain it, but the snake should certainly lead them to it where was the snake now? What are you looking for? Mo Linyuan couldn't help but ask when she saw Yi Mu in a daze. All this time he had been quite observant of Yi Mu's actions. His initial suspicion that she had ulterior motives gradually turned into doubting the identity of the current Yi Mu. A person's character can't drastically change that much. Even if she was careful to fake it, he had still found a lot of loopholes his final conclusion was that she wasn't the original cruel little girl anymore. Nevertheless, he thought, this person was better and far more interesting. Most of all, he accepts her person. And she was a much simpler person than he actually thought. Unaware of his thoughts, Yi Mu glanced at him and lowered her voice. You can help me find a snake too. Mo Linyuan wanted to laugh again. Snakes are cold-blooded reptiles usually afraid of humans. How could she possibly find snakes when she was walking around and making a commotion like this? However, he was still very obedient and helped her to find one. A moment later, Mo Linyuan thought of something and suddenly opened his mouth. Young lady, you've never drank milk before. Yi Mu who was poking through the grass didn't understand why Mo Linyuan would suddenly bring up this unrelated observation she had always drunk milk early in the morning. Isn't it vital in order to grow the body, ah? Uh, my goodness! Are you telling her the original owner doesn't drink milk? No wonder she was short as a four or five year old when she was already supposed to be six. Seeing her stunned for a completely different reason, Mo Linyuan added, you don't like plants, you don't like colorful things. You specifically detested white, but like red, the color of blood. And, oh, you're also left-handed. He said these things in a calm, conversational tone like one would talk about the weather. But it was enough to finally make Yimu comprehend his hidden message, to remember the things she had been doing for a month. She immediately directed her sight down the skirts of her light blue blossom dress, suddenly feeling as if there was cold running up and down her back. The things he was saying had he found out that she was an imposter. Yi Mu turned to look at him. At the moment, they were both standing apart some distance across the courtyard. His calm demeanor and unfathomable eyes made Yi Mu panic. You are talking about my former former preferences, yes. I'm still young, my habits would naturally change. Yi Mi pretended to answer this as level-headedly as possible. But Mo Linyuan merely raised his eyebrows slightly before walking towards her step by step. I know habits change. But, your father, Yi Li is a suspicious and cruel man. He was slowly closing in, the soles of his shoes making crunching noises on the grass. These days you don't see him that much. Furthermore, the people around you do not dare to question your new habits, so you might think everything is fine. But, he halted, only in arms away. He enunciated slow, giving her a penetrating stare, if Yi Li suspects that you are not the same Yi Mu from before, it will be dangerous. Chapter, 21 Yi Li is an evil man, and such a man only collects enemies rather than make friends. He naturally won't feel at rest if there was anything suspicious around him he won't let the matter go. Standing in front of Yi Mu, although Mo Lin Yuan was slim, his lanky profile entirely covered Yi Mu's little body. Yi Mu, with her stout arms and legs, could only reach the height of his shoulders. She finally raised her head towards the delicate youth in front of her. 
But his eyes were like bottomless pools of the deep ocean, looking at her as if he could see through her guise. She could only swallow nervously. You! What do you mean? Yi Mu's height may be short, but she refused to be intimidated with this height difference. She puffed out her chest and placed both hands on the sides of her waist. In a loud voice, she declared, I am only me. I am not some fake. Yes. Yes, you are. Mo Linyuan suddenly reached out to brush the hair on the top of her head. I don't care whoever you are or whatever you plan on doing. You have saved my life I won't tell a soul about this. Afterwards, he removed his hand from her hair to stand on the side, just now, I never said anything, and you never heard anything. He was merely telling her to be cautious. He was acting out of concern for her. For this new Yi Mu. Listening to this young man's elegant voice, Yi Mu's heart rate unconsciously sped up and she couldn't help but take a few steps back. She was just about to say something when suddenly, she felt only air under her feet. Look out! Mo Linyuan's face twisted and he swiftly reached out to grab her. But he wasn't able to save her in time, instead, both of them fell together. Yi Mu's quick reflexes were still present even in this new body. At the feeling of weightlessness, she remembered that Mo Linyuan was a child and subconsciously cradled his head in her arms to protect him from the fall. And then she remembered she was no longer the battle-hardened special forces soldier, but rather a little girl who was still drinking milk. She was no seasoned commander of the military at the moment. Belatedly aware of this circumstance, she was thrown into a state of dread, unable to think of the incoming tragedy. When their bodies hit the bottom, Yi Mu could only laugh at her misfortune. Haha <laughs> but not really, she wanted to cry. Oh, it hurt so much. Dust flew around them, in the aftermath of the fall, Missouri Lin Yuan was unscathed because he had been shielded by Yi Mu. He was stunned and quickly got off. He asked Yi Mu laying on the ground nervously, are you okay? Unsure of the right words to say in this moment. Yi Mu tried to sit up, her pair of bright eyes suspiciously tearing up. The moonlight fell on her face through the open hole, making her look like a small fairy who had strayed into the mortal world. Only if one ignores her next words. My arm Yi Mu miserably said. Her current strength extremely inferior to her old body, she couldn't force herself to ignore the pain. As a result, after she fell down, she really felt the overwhelming urge to cry. Mo Linyuan looked at her wrist, and towards her grieving little face, his heart in the heart pricking at the sight. It's all right. He said comfortingly, at the same time, he suddenly reached out and tried to hold her in his arms. Thanks to all these years, he was thin, but much taller than the average nine-year-old. Where did you fall? Let me see. Seeing his coaxing appearance as if talking to a small child, Yi Mu felt embarrassed. It wasn't that she couldn't bear the pain, rather her current body was too delicate. Her heart bristled especially when he rolled up her sleeves to reveal a large patch of blood on her elbow, skin had been scraped off from the fall, and she was surely going to develop bruises on her body later. Mo Linyuan saw this and quickly tore off a piece of soft silk from Yi Mu's dress. He then used it to wrap her elbow carefully. How can I let you be hurt this badly? Vexation could be heard from his voice. But this was directed to himself he blamed himself. He was older than her, he should have been the one who had protected her. Yi Mu originally wanted to resist crying but on a second thought, she was only six years old. It would be too fake to hurt oneself greatly and go on without crying. So she let the corners of her mouth slowly drop, and the golden beans fell tear by tear from her eyes. When he tried coax her, she especially cried more vigorously than before. When Mo Linyuan saw Hugh crying so much, he was immediately left at a loss on what to do, you it's all right. Don't cry. But Yi Mu couldn't care less about Mo Linyuan's panicked state right now. Children shouldn't be able to hold back their tears what should they do if they had a big wound. And of which actually hurts. Of course, cry a waterfall. Mo Linyuan, who had always been calm, was a little freaked out and he quickly drew her closer to his embrace in hopes of calming her. He didn't know how to comfort people or to make them laugh. Therefore, the only thing he knew to do at this moment was to hug her, reassuring her in a bland voice, 
don't cry. It could be said therefore, that no matter how smart a teenager is, he will still lack knowledge on that this hasn't encountered before. Chapter, 22 Yimu let off steam and cried for a while beside a flustered Imo Linyuan. It was only when the pain reached a tolerable level that she stopped crying. Did the male lead's bad luck rub off on her? She should have stayed inside her room, ah. It was a different story altogether for the teenager holding her. Her soft, small body mildly smelled of milk before then, he didn't want to spare her a glance, but this time, her rich and vivid expressions would make any other people to stop and stare, to hold her in their arms and take care of her. Just then, when they were both in danger, she chose to protect him rather than herself. If she hadn't protected his head, it would have been his face that met the ground. I'm all right now stop hugging me. It doesn't hurt anymore. After thinking she had sobbed enough, Yi Mu pulled herself together and wriggled out from M.O. Linyuan's chest. Suddenly losing the little dumpling from his arms, M.O. Linyuan felt slightly strange. Yi Mu looked around. The surrounding area was dark, making her think she fell into a cellar. But they had to get back up. Because the male lead found the secret book of lost martial arts in the yard, it wasn't stated that he had fell from finding it. Meanwhile, M.O. Linyuan also got up. While he too was observing, he stepped on something solid and bent down to pick it up, examining it up close. What was a book doing here? Was this what Yi Mu had been looking for? Young lady, were you looking for this? Yi Mu turned to see the book in his hands illuminated under the faint moonlight. Her eyes immediately widened, and she couldn't help but utter, Where did you find it? M.O. Linyuan looked up from the book and casually said, It seems that it fell down with us. The pages of this book were not made from ordinary paper. Running one's fingers across it gives the sensation of touching cortex. At first sight, it could already be considered as an artifact. Yi Mu was all over the moon, she ran towards him carelessly and immediately stumbled a second time. She tripped once again. What is it with her new set of arms and legs? At the very least, her earlier fall was worse compared to this. M.O. Linyuan was shocked and instinctively rushed over. And before Yi Mu could cry, something caught her attention that held the tears at bay. With only the faint moonlight serving as light, she was only able to discern a heap of small, round things beneath her. But upon closer inspection, they glistened gold when hit by the light. Gold isn't this gold. Are you all right? M.O. Linyuan hurriedly lifted her up and was worried that she would start crying again. However, he was more taken aback when Yimu suddenly laughed. Before he could ask her what was the matter, Yimu had already shoved a handful of coins towards him. Look! Look! This is gold, right? M.O. Linyuan heard these ridiculous words and automatically looked down. Despite the low lighting, he was able to distinguish his surroundings well because he had good night vision. Not only in Yi Mu's hands were there gold it was literally everywhere on the ground. As soon as he looked up back again, he took out the wooden lighter from Yi Mu's waistband. The fire crackled as it was lit up, instantly illuminating this small space. It only lasted a while before it became extinguished. But within those few seconds, they had already seen enough. Gold, piles of it surrounded them. In addition, there were weapons and armors mixed with the sparkly coins. When the fire had gone out, M.O. Linyuan went towards a certain direction and pulled out a knife from the treasure there. That's when he knew everything they had seen just now was real. There's no other explanation for this hidden treasure this could only be the treasures left by the ancestors of the Yi family. Yi Mu was even beyond delighted, and she stood up to bounce up and down, a silly smile on her face. The book never said anything about these hidden treasures in the Yi residence. And looking at the numerous equipment with indisputable quality, Yi Mu felt that the original Yi master apparently had a selfish, devious heart to keep these treasures from the next generation. But sorry, it's now all hers. Ha 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 ha. This it's raining gold. She pounced on it with a pent-up squeal, holding the pile of gold before tossing it overhead and laughing. With this, she can do a lot of things. Chapter, 23 Hiring experts left and right, she would be able to use the fastest method to cultivate the strength of the male lead, 
and they could already equip their cells with these ancient weapons and gears. They'll find the city boundary map afterwards the male protagonist will go and unify the realm under his rule, while she'll finally be able to get back home and to continue living her old life. The path was now a lot smoother it's basically a cheat given from the heavens. Yi Mu was so happy she momentarily forgot her body ached, she excitedly said to Mo Linyuan, with everything here, it's easier for us to do anything. Anything we want. It doesn't get any better than this. Mo Linyuan, who was still dazed, suddenly looked at her the moment she spoke. She had said we instead of me. If it were another person here, he would already think on ways to silence him. Only this silly girl would tell him everything and treat him as if he was family. After the feeling of exhilaration soon simmered down, Yimu tugged Mo Linyuan's hand and said, let's go up quickly and cover up this place, so that no one else can find it. N. Mo Linyuan climbed up first and then pulled Yimu out. Even if Yimu felt pain all over her body, and her clothes were dirty she still felt refreshed inside. What could beat the experience of falling on top of a mountain of gold? She felt that today is definitely an auspicious day of her zodiac. Holding back their excitement, the two children blocked the hole carefully with some withered grass and small branches. After that, they made sure the pit was hidden well and only when they were satisfied did they decide to leave. But soon after they went out the abandoned courtyard, Yi Mu had heard someone talking. She eagerly pulled Mo Linyuan, directing him to a hidden corner. Mo Linyuan had also heard it and became alert beside Yi Mu. They waited for a while, hoping that it had been a fluke, but unexpectedly, someone passed by them. It was the person with the highest status in the residence Yi Li. General, I've killed the suspected spy and threw his body down the dry well. There is no hidden danger in the residence for the time being. However, Fu Yun came with the news that the Prime Minister of the M.O. country insisted that their crown prince had escaped to our country of you. Only when he is found will they help with the general's affairs. He had added give me a hand, or else we'll give up the deal. When Yi Mu heard the word crown prince she subconsciously looked at M.O. Linyuan. M.O. Linyuan, on the other hand, was listening attentively, and wasn't able to catch Yi Mu's imploring gaze. The burly man grunted derisively, that when Taiping is too deceptive. He had dared to go back on his word when he had already promised this general. Now that the news of the Yu Emperor being ill has already spread, he took this chance to turn his back on Yuzhen to demand their crown prince before he would offer help. What a truly wicked mind! The advisor sighed gravely, the MO country's economy is flourishing and they are rich. If we receive no financial support from the MO Prime Minister, it would be too hard for us to move the plan forward with only our existing troops. Yi Mu internally thought that the people in the Yi family really didn't know how to be content with what they have. The head wants to raise troops to revolt, the descendants had rebelled, the ancestors were greedy. It's as if one tried to be fiercer than the other. Just when Yi Mu was about to signal Mo Linyuan to leave with her, a mouse suddenly skittered across the ground they were hiding. Yi Mu tensed all over. She thought, damn it. Why now of all times? A pair of sharp eyes swept over their hiding spot in an instant. Who's there? Yi Li hollered. Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan looked at each other in trepidation as they heard the sound of footsteps steadily approaching their direction. Yi Li is a master of martial arts. Even if they tried to escape, he would definitely catch up. When that time comes, he would only learn of their identity and it would be over for both of them. Mo Linyuan suddenly decided. In order to avoid both of them being caught, he quickly pressed Yi Mu back and went out their spot without waiting for her opinion. It's you. Yi Mu stopped and narrowed his eyes menacingly. He had his reservation of this slave who had stubbornly refused to die under official Lu. He asked, an unpleasant look on his face, what did you hear? Treason was major offense with a heavy punishment, let alone for a little slave even if it was his own son present, he would kill him right away without reservations. Besides, he already has too many children he could make do with one less. Therefore, when he had asked this inquiry, his eyes were burning with promised murder. Chapter, 24 Mo Linyuan, knowing Yi Li's cruel nature, denied this allegation with a shake of his head. He fervently replied, 
I just passed by. I didn't hear any tea. But before he could finish, Yi Li fiercely seized him by the collar. Dragging the scrawny teenager towards his eye level, he threateningly asked in a subdued voice. Then explain what you were doing in a place like this late at night. Towards the end, his voice reached a low roar, his bell-like eyes glaring at Emo Linyuan ferociously. As if he was about to devour him at any moment. If it had been an ordinary young boy, he would have already been scared witless and turned pale from fright, but Emo Linyuan was unperturbed. He kept himself from panicking so that Yi Li wouldn't suspect him further. He answered calmly, slowly. I was hungry there wasn't enough food given to Meso I came out to find something to eat. There are many edible weeds, fruit trees, small rabbits and the occasional snakes that can be found in this area. That's why I'm here. Yi Li could see that Emo Linyuan's face as was not only completely serene but did not look the bit least as if he was lying. But so what? He thought. If he appears in a forbidden place with whatever reason he has innocent or not, he shouldn't blame Yi Li for being cruel and merciless. He scornfully laughed and roughly pushed Emo Linyuan toward his counselor to the side. As panic began to rush, Emo Linyuan watched as Yi Li slowly unsheathed a small knife. Last time, you barely escaped death by the skin of your teeth. But who would have thought that you, boy, is actually doomed to a short life? But rest your worries, it is an honor to die by this general's hands, and you even obtained this privilege exclusively inside his residence. When Yi Mu heard these words, she almost rushed out blindly in fear. But immediately, Emo Linyuan shouted, Wait! These two words were uttered loudly and urgently as if he knew that Yi Mu wouldn't restrain herself and irrationally show up when she heard this. Not only did Yi Mu stop in her tracks in surprise, but Yi Li was also stunned at this abrupt uproar. What? Do you have anything else left to say? Yi Li slightly raised his eyebrows, but the knife in his hand wasn't lowered the slightest. Honestly speaking, I heard the general's words. Mo Linyuan wanted to move about, but the counselor's hold on him was extremely strong. Pain seized him as he was squeezed by the shoulder in warning. Moreover, it was plausible to conclude that the counselor was also experienced with martial arts and, as with Yi Li, probably knows how to wield internal force. Therefore, he was only weak and powerless while locked in a vice grip. For his next few words, he had to speak evenly and not show Yi Li even the smallest fear, else Yi Li might kill him for the simple, obstinate reason for wasting his time. The general is looking for the absconded Emo crown prince in this country, is that right? When I had been living among the citizens, before I was taken as a slave, I had heard snippets about him he is about the same age as me. Moreover, I have been living as a recluse for a long time and can, fortunately, speak the official language of the M.O. country. If the general urgently needs the support of the prime minister of the M.O. country, he can send me to make up for it. If I'm about to die anyway, let me experience a worthy death. Yi Mu's fingers unconsciously dug her nails into the wall when she heard this. To be held captive by the M.O. prime minister wasn't a favorable option, nor was it a good thing either. If Yi Li somehow acquired to this, Mo Linyuan could temporarily hold off death. But this situation was still falling from the jaws of one tiger to another equally ferocious one. On the good side, it would be a long journey towards Mo country. With that, she would have abundant time to formulate an escape plan to save him. When Yi Li heard this offer from Mo Linyuan, his eyes couldn't help but brighten in greed. Yes. Now seeing that this child up close truly resembles the description provided for the M.O. Crown Prince, he thought it was a clever idea to send a similar looking child to cheat when typing and obtain the upper hand first. But rebellion is not an overnight success. In the event that the boy leaks information ahead of the right time. Yi Mu, held her breath, nervously awaiting Yi Li's deliberation in the matter. Yi Li thought hard for a while, trying to consider the pros and cons. However, in the end, his wariness prevailed. He finally shook his head and said, You are a smart kid. Unfortunately this general doesn't trust you. And now that you know of this general's plans, you have to be silenced for a lifetime. Mo Linyuan's heart couldn't help but tremble in fear as he listened to Yi Li's sadistic laugh. But indeed, you were right in saying you deserve a worthy death. 
Even to this moment, official Lu still has an interest in you he never forgot you. If you were sent to him, you would bring me money and even forge a connection isn't that a worthy death? Send him back to that beast. When Mo Linyuan suddenly remembered the atrocious assault on him last time when he was pressed on the coffee table, his body tightened up defensively in dread. Making up his mind, Yi Li hid the knife back and waved a hand towards the counselor behind Mo Linyuan impatiently. Let's not delay, else something comes up. Zhao He, send people to deliver this boy to official Lu right now. Yes. The counselor complied without commenting further. He grabbed Mo Linyuan and prepared to take him away. No way. Yi Mu knew the moment he would enter official Liu's mansion, he would die a miserable death. Without waiting for another moment, she immediately decided she would act. It was now or never. Chapter 25 She briskly walked towards the other end of the yard and ran towards where Yili stood. When she came out to the open, she deliberately changed her steps from light to heavy as if she had been running from a distance. And when she saw Yili, she donned an expressive shocked face. Father? Why are you here? When Mo Linyuan saw Yi Mu come out into the open, he felt his heart sank. This silly girl, why wouldn't she protect her herself? Yi Li was even more astonished to see her, but his forehead immediately creased into a frown. Especially when he saw that Yi Mu's clothes were stained with earth like Mo Linyuan's, his eyes instantly looked at her in suspicion. Muir. Why are you still running around late at night when you are supposed to be sleeping? Besides, you are dirty all over. When he said this, a murderous aura threatened to leak out from Yi Li. His hand unconsciously found its way back on the hilt of his recently sheathed knife. Yi Mu pretended to act surprised when she saw him and afterwards replaced her expression with a giddy look. Father. You've actually been here all this time. I have been looking for you I have very good news to tell you. But this good news was the least of Yi Li's concern. He beckoned the counselor to halt although he had ordered for him to take Mo Linyuan away to official Liu's residence at the soonest. He decided to watch and listen as to what kind of news Yi Mu had brought this time. Yi Mu feigned a confused countenance the moment her eyes landed on Mo Linyuan being held back by the counselor. What's the matter, father? Why did you seize one of my people? Where are you taking him? Yi Li merely sneered and arrogantly strode towards Yi Mu, towering over her small frame domineeringly. He has committed a crime and was about to be rightly executed by your father. Why, do you refuse to give him up? Upon hearing this, Yi Mu showed a grieving look, before firmly speaking, Father, I know you have to mete out punishment, but first, please go with me somewhere first. When you see what I have been meaning to tell you, will you change your mind? When Mo Linyuan heard this, he wouldn't have thought his heart would feel heavier. Impossible did she want to reveal the hidden treasures to Yili. All because of him. He remembered how overjoyed Yi Mu had been when they had discovered the treasure and thought that there was no way she would tell Yili this secret. Her face had been full of excitement, making him feel that she had wanted to do a lot of things with it. And now, that mountain of gold was about to be snatched away from her hands all because of a slave. All because of him. Mo Linyuan could only feel shell-shocked. She couldn't be possibly this knave, right? It's impossible for anyone to trade treasure for a slave's life. Is she so silly? She should have known by now, that even if she didn't come out for him, he wouldn't hold it against her. But regardless of this fact, she still stubbornly showed herself, placing herself in danger together with him. Yi Li hesitated, thinking it was some sort of trap, however, he soon chided himself for being anxious. These were just two little children. Whatever tricks they have up their sleeve, it would hold nothing against two full-grown adults. Therefore, in the end, he agreed to come with Yi Mu. Ordering his counselor to follow him in the meantime, Yi Mu led the way towards the hole they had hidden before in the abandoned courtyard. While on the way, Yi Li had been staring at her back several times in wariness, his murderous spirit not dwindling the least. Soon after, he remembered the man in black who had tipped Yi Mu about the emperor's condition, and he held back his suspicion. Seeing Yi Mu's exuberant steps as she led the way, entirely defenseless and unaware of his killing intent, Yi Li realized that she was clearly just a child one that didn't have the appearance of a conniving person. 
but it is to be expected. She's just six years old. We're here. It's here father. Yi Mu turned to look back at Yi Li, eyes shining in the dark. Her visage was like a child expectantly waiting to be praised for a job well done as she pointed to a spot in the yard. Father, I swear you will be so glad when you see it. You are the only one who deserves it. At this overexcited tone, Yi Li's suspicion was slowly being replaced by gnawing curiosity and confusion. Frowning, he asked, what the hell is it? But Yi Mu only ambiguously said, Father, last night I dreamt of grandfather. Although I haven't seen him in person, I knew right away he was one of our esteemed ancestors. As soon as Yi Li heard that it was all because of a dream, he soon grew impatient. He still had a lot of important things to do than listen to Yi Mu talk about dreams. How can he be in the mood to waste time on stupid, insignificant things? And dreams, of all things. But Yi Mu wasn't crestfallen with Yi Li's lackluster reaction, instead, she spoke the next words in a hushed tone. Chapter 26 Grandfather told me that I will bring glory to our Yi family in the future. In addition to that, he said that I would become a princess of the Yu country. Yi Li was utterly caught off guard when he heard this statement. A princess? Was Yi Mu able to know of his hidden schemes against the emperor? With this thought in mind, his eyes became sharper as he stared at Yi Mu. His originally mild killing intent has shot straight up to a hundred percent. Unperturbed, Yi Mu was ignorant of the murderous aura coming from Yi Li and was still laughing. Great grandfather also said that in order for our generation to achieve great things, he has given you a gift. He told me the treasure can be found on where he once lived it's here. She continued. As soon as Yi Mu's speech ended, a cold gust of the night wind blew past them, making both Yi Li and the counselor feel chill behind their backs. So I came out of my room in the middle of the night. Since this dream had seemed so real, I came to look for this treasure here. Now father, guess what I found? The dream is real. I really found grandpa's treasure. However, Yi Li could only frown when he heard this. Afterwards, he stared Yi Mu down. Muir, there's nothing here. Nothing that can be called treasure. He enunciated slowly, his patience thinning. The more he thought about it, the more he felt ridiculous with his self. This could all be an elaborate prank. How could he easily trust dreams as prophecies? He was a hardened general who had killed countless people and he had almost believed such a silly thing. Instead, he tried to rationalize things and came to the conclusion that Yi Mu might have been eavesdropping and this was a poorly made up excuse to escape her imminent death. Father, it's true. Yi Mu hurriedly said, if you don't believe me, then see with your own eyes. There are mountains of treasures in the abandoned courtyard. When I had been tirelessly scouting the area, I accidentally fell into a pit and saw the treasures there if that's why I'm currently dirty. Yi Li continued frowning torn between two opinions. He could not believe such a ridiculous dream told by a child of all people could be true, but on the other hand, there was a nagging feeling in his heart telling him a six-year-old girl won't have the courage to tell him such an audacious lie. And in front of his face, nonetheless. So in the end, he complied. He would see this treasure with his own two eyes. Meanwhile, Enmo Linyuan had been looking at Yi Mu all this time with a complex look. However, Yi Mu merely smiled at him, trying secretly to placate him. But how can he feel at rest? How far was her stupidity, that she was willing to give away riches worth of many generations to come for a single, irrelevant slave? But he could only be left with his complicated emotions as they soon reached the hole in the abandoned courtyard where he and Yi Mu had painstakingly hidden it from prying eyes. When Yi Mu brought Yi Li to the place where she had covered it with the grass and twigs, he really came to find that there was indeed a hole. His heart beat furiously at the sight of it. Could the things his daughter have said be all true? While he was stupefied, the counselor had been tactful enough to light a small fire from his wooden lighter. Yi Li soon stepped out of his trance as the wooden lighter was handed to him. He took one long look at the dark pit, breathing deeply before jumping inside. The counselor then took Yi Mu together with him and followed after Yi Li, jumping into the unknown abyss. This height was already treacherously high for children, but it was nothing for adults like them who knew martial arts. 
The moment Yi Li reached the bottom and his footwear made clinking noises on the ground, he instinctively looked down as was stunned with the gold and silver littered on the ground where he stood. He held the fire around him and saw that the treasures didn't end there for quite a while he was shocked still, driven to silence. Tis is this really all true? Were his eyes not deceiving him? Yi Mu's dream was actually real. Beside him, the counselor was similarly stunned by all the gold and silver everywhere. A flash of greed entered his eyes with all these, a man could do anything. Yi Li felt as if he was the one dreaming, he hesitantly walked over to a gold pile and pulled out an intricately designed dagger. The fire reflected off the blade's surface, giving off a shiny sheen it was sharp and lethal at first sight. Moreover, there were still more of this. High-quality armors and weapons were also scattered together with the gold and silver coins. Was this truly given by the ancestors? He found himself asking this question. Else, how could one explain where these exquisite piles of riches came from? How would one explain that Yi Mu, who had been brought up as a spoiled young lady, would venture out an unsightly place in the middle of the night instead of ordering her servants? For a long time, he could only try and digest this surreal reality before him. What magnificent, great news! Chapter 27 He couldn't help but turn his head to look towards Yimu, but then he saw that Yimu had been staring at him with worshipping eyes. He repressed his excitement and asked, Mir, tell father what else did you see inside your dream? When she heard this, she looked at him with an even more revered look and said, I also saw my father sitting on the dragon throne you became an emperor. And you were so glad of my achievements that you made me a princess. You said I was your pride. She beamed at him, Father, don't worry about me. Great Grandpa had mentioned I would be of great use to you in my dream. I promise I won't say a word until you've accomplished your plans. I want to be the most powerful person around you. It is fine even if I don't marry all my life, and together with my emperor father, I will also be a princess of this country. Obedient only to you and even more capable than my elder brothers. After Yi Li listened hard at Yi Mu's monologue, his killing intent for her disappeared completely. A person who could give him prophetic dreams from the Yi ancestors could only be considered an important asset to him. And Yi Mu is his daughter, his own blood and flesh. She would surely not be a threat in the future. Besides, she has a fierce personality like him. Maybe, as his ancestors said, Yi Mu would help him achieve great things. He was silent for a moment as the cogs in his mind turned. Lastly, he looked at Imo Linyuan again. What about him? Why won't you let father kill him? Yi Mu changed her eyes and turned quickly, she gestured him over with her small fingers. She made him bend over to her height before she whispered in his ear, after last time when I had almost angered official Lu by mistake and saved him, he became loyal to me. At first, it was because I wanted him to join our residence to become one of my trusted people. But it's also because of the Empress' daughter, Princess Chi, liking him too now that he listens to every word I say, I felt that keeping him beside me would be beneficial in the future. Yi Li nodded his head briskly, and his piercing eyes fell on Mo Linyuan once more. In addition to his killing intent, he was now calculating the boy's worth in his mind. He refused to let him go when he had heard these precious secrets. Besides, Princess Chi only had a mere look at the kid's face. Even if he doesn't kill him, he has other devious ways to make the boy keep this secret to the grave. Can this kid read? Yi Li asked sharply. Yi Mu shook her head quickly, how can a slave be literate? Yi Li thoughtfully rubbed his chin, his murderous aura faintly dissipating from the air of this narrow space. No one can know about the treasure or the rebellion. He thought. Yi Mu was the exception, and as for this slave. In one swift move, he pulled a dagger from the pile of treasure next to him and handed it to Yi Mu. Since he can't read, then it's an easy thing to settle. Muir, in order to prove that you can really help father in the future, go ahead and cut his tongue out. Yi Mu was immediately startled hearing this and the smile on her face stiffened. Mo Linyuan was also stunned and looked up towards them. Seeing Yi Mu remain silent, Yi Li looked at her disapprovingly, What, you don't want to? I thought you said he is loyal to you. Now is the time to test his loyalty. Test him. 
Yi Li's tone was majestic, that of a seasoned general and an expert of martial arts talking as a superior. Whether it be his men or his, Yi Mu, he looks at them equally like ants easily crushed under his feet. Although the one might think this dialogue was a discussion and a not a one-sided discourse, the tone held authority beckoning Yi Mu to yield and follow. Bowing her head, Yi Mu could only furtively clench her teeth in restless frustration. She didn't even show any signs of wanting the treasure, why is there still a need for this man to be extra cautious? Several times, she had thought of trying to fight him. Mo Linyuan and Yi Xiaolang were now her people. She had said she would take care of them, to not let them suffer even a little harm. How could she break this promise? But a moment later, she relaxed all over again, using all her strength to stay calm. She remembered in her mind that she had transmigrated too early into this book. With her little arms and legs, it's impossible to think about killing someone else it's even hard for her to be slightly agile. Not to mention how would her little, inexperienced body fare in combat with a grown adult like Yi Li who was a master of internal martial arts. She wouldn't last a second. Father, you're right. Yi Mu looked up again, this time her eyes were shining in giddiness. She looked at him admiringly, complimenting him, you are truly creative. I will do it at once. Just to see if he's really loyal to me. Finally, she took the dagger with a smile and said earnestly, look at me father. What you had asked me to do, I will do it well. I will prove to you that I am much better than my brothers. Chapter 28 With that, she turned to M.O. Linyuan. When Yi Li heard she had said, he grinned and started to brush his beard in amusement while the counselor had finally released Mo Linyuan before retreating behind Yi Li. In the darkness, only one torch remained lit. The flickering of the flames made Yi Mu's shadow dance around them. Because both Yi Li and the counselor stood behind Yi Mu, they had not seen what she was doing. Mo Linyuan looked at her in a quiet manner, his heart swirling with countless emotions, as his chest ached with an impending sense of panic. But he wouldn't resist, not at this very moment. He knew that if he would resist, all her sacrifices, made for his sake, would be all in vain. It didn't matter what the consequences of losing his tongue would be. He dared not move a muscle. Yi Mu approached him with measured steps. Her eyes bore countless of emotions as well, but she only gave him a smile. You'd fare better to not resist. She murmured to him, I'm saving your life. She urged, hoping he understood, Father doesn't say things without deep meaning. Just as long as you would allow me to cut out your tongue, you won't die. She promised, as long as you follow me, even if you're mute, with me your future is endless. Mo Linyuan tried to look at her clearly at her shivering body as if she doesn't think she could bear harming him that she doesn't believe she could do it. He thought about how she always looked after his well-being, cared for him. He thought of when she saw him in trouble and had not hesitated to run out. He thought of how she saved his life, even with the risk of losing the treasure. Despite knowing what was about to happen, he forced himself to be at ease because it was her for her. He wouldn't wish to make things all the more difficult than it already was. Had let her cut his tongue out, and with that in mind, he felt himself ease into relaxation. However, there was one thing he wanted to say. Should he remain silent, he would forever bear the regret of never saying it at this very moment. I know you're doing this for my sake. He finally said, locking eyes with her, trying to tell her, he knew very well why. However, I do wish to say one last thing to you. He swallowed his saliva and continued, wanting to make it count. He let out a slight chuckle, in fact, when I had been caught by that animal, I swore something. She looked at him, her eyes telling him she was scared for his sake. I swore that if I ever get saved this time around, I'd be good to that person for the rest of my life. Holding her shoulders in a comforting manner, he let out a shaky smile as a tear slipped through his eyes, so don't say it's just a tongue. Tongue, feet, even if it's my life, I'd let you take it. He nodded at her, the genuine truth touching their very hearts, you can take it. When Yi Li saw how Mo Linyuan can remain so loyal to Yi Mu, he felt himself ease up a bit. As long as his tongue is removed, he can let Mo Linyuan go, and leave him to his daughter's capable hands. He may yet have use of him in the future. After all, 
his daughter held exquisite beauty. There would be plenty of great opportunities coming in the horizon. But Yi Mu hadn't been listening to the heartfelt confession of Mo Linyuan. Her hands shook and trembled, on her forehead a thin shin of sweat forming in trepidation as she clenched her teeth. Open your mouth. She demanded. And without any hesitation, he opened his mouth, offering up his tongue, but something was wrong. And he couldn't tell what it was. Yi Mu, her face was contorted in pain, almost as if. And with a downward glance, his eyes widened in realization. Without waiting for him to say anything else, Yi Mu did what she had to do in a swift manner and cut the inside of his lips with expert dexterity. Letting out a blood-curdling scream, Mo Linyuan spat out a bloody lump of flesh. Falling, he landed seated on the ground as he stared in shock at the lump of flesh that came out of his mouth. Clamping his hand over his mouth, he was unaware of the blood trickling down his hands as he stared at the lump of meat. Excellent! Yi Li exclaimed and laughed in glee. The lighting was poor, with the sky turned to night and lone torch lighting over them. Yi Mu faced away from them, her sleeves covered and wide that Yi Li had not seen what exactly it was Yi Mu had done. But the flesh and blood that lay on the ground wouldn't have been able to deceive people. Yi Mu picked it up and threw away the dagger she held. Wiping off the sweat on her forehead, she held the piece of meat in front of Yi Li, her face twisted in an expression of crazed excitement. Look, father. I did it. She exclaimed, it was so simple. I had thought it was a little complicated at first, so I was nervous. But I had more fun than I thought. Chapter, 29 At this, Yi Li and his advisor looked at her differently. Touching his beard once again, Yi Li nodded at her as he stared at the bloody lump of flesh. He patted her in the head in an affectionate manner and chuckled. As expected of my daughter. He praised. The counselor, who also saw Yi Mu cut someone's tongue out, was a little terrified of her. He tried to show a happy expression, but he was trembling, his heart full of fear of Yi Mu. She resembled Yi Li greatly, that perhaps, when the time came, Yi Mu would be more ferocious than Yi Li. After all, Yi Li hadn't known what to do at six years old. But even so, it was impossible to cut out a person's tongue without batting an eye or even appear affected by it at the tender age of six. Yi Li was in such a good mood at achieving his goal and gaining great fortune without so much as lifting his own finger. Turning to his counselor, he gave an order. Get your way over here. He said to the trembling counselor, I want things here to be taken care of immediately. The counselor had no doubt that time was of the essence and went to do as he was ordered. However, Yi Li's eyes darkened in malice, and suddenly the counselor found a blade protruding from his very chest. The counselor was also well versed in the martial arts. He was opportunistic as well. If he ever saw treasure, surely he'd want to make a great career out of it. But Yi Li doesn't want word of it getting out. That was why the counselor had to die. He needed to be silenced here and now. Yi Mu hadn't expected Yi Li to order someone be killed and then to kill someone else in one night. She had been astonished, however she continued her ruse. She listened to Yi Li, and threw out the knife he had used, turning to him with a smile on her lips. Let this be our secret daughter, he tells her, touching the top of her head in an affectionate manner, the blood still staining his hands, and onto her hair, take care of you little slave, do as you wish to him, just as I once did to my slaves. He locked eyes with his daughter, only dead people are obedient. After being momentarily stunned, Yi Mu finally let out a breathy laugh. Of course, father. She beamed at him, I understand completely. She told him before turning back to Mo Linyuan, who stayed seated on the cold hard floor. Looking at him grimly, she let out a scowl, he'll never let anyone, especially my own people, to betray me. Good. Yi Li praised, leading both Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan out individually. He waved his hand by the wall that was located right next to the pit. And in that instant, piles of stones fell down and covered the pit entirely. To achieve great things, one must be required to plan carefully, he told Yi Mu, no one has even thought to use such method. He boasted, to which Yi Mu nodded courteously towards him. Truly father, 
you speak of only great wisdom and use only the most practical of tactics. She egged on. Yi Li fell for Yi Mu's blind worship, accepting her praises in an eager manner as well. He wasn't even the slightest bit suspicious of her at all. Seeing as you've proven yourself worthy, I shall send you towards the foreign academy. He told her, there you will begin your studies. What your brothers have, shall be yours as well. Yi Mu brightened up at the opportunity her father presented her and bowed in reverence towards him. I thank you father. She told him, I will not disappoint you. Finally, Yi Li nodded in approval. Now go on. You still need to be up bright and early tomorrow. He told her, I still have things to do, so you go back by yourself. From the corner of his eyes, Yi Li spared Imo Linyuan once more another glance. His face was pale and ashen, his hands bloodied from covering his mouth from which his own tongue was cut. He looked like a man without a soul. Yi Li thought, it was fortunate that Imo Linyuan hadn't screamed. It would have caught people's attention, and should it come to that, he would have no choice but to let this little slave die down here. Worry not slave, he told him, staring at him in a haughty manner, you're safe for now. Be thankful I've witnessed your true loyalty to my daughter. However, his stare turned glacial and gave Mo Linyuan the deadliest glare he had, you shall be her very own dead man. Which means you take whatever befalls upon her, be her shield, her sword, everything she'd ever need. Die for her if need be. He ordered and snapped his fingers, now go and escort my daughter back safely. Without a thought of how M.O. Linyuan would respond to his orders, Yi Li swiftly turned on his heel and walked away briskly. With this unexpected treasure falling into his hands, a lot of things he couldn't do before can be deployed now. Yes, greater things are coming. Chapter, 30 As soon as Yi Li had disappeared out of sight, M.O. Linyuan finally shook from his own stupor days. Hurriedly, he rushed toward Yi Mu's side, just in time to catch her as all strength left her body. She fell to her knees and sat dejectedly, cold sweat now visible on her own forehead. How could you be so reckless? M.O. Linyuan hissed worriedly for her. His tongue was intact, because the lump of flesh that he had spit from his very mouth was from Yi Mu herself. It was clear that Yi Mu was in great pain. God knows she tried so hard to make sure she didn't show any outer pain of what she had done, just as long as they wouldn't find out. Finally, she threw away the lump of flesh bloodying her hands and leaned against Emo Linyuan's arms. Her lips turned pale, as Emo Linyuan carefully tugged at her sleeves to see how the blood stained her arms. But Yi Mu would not dare look at him and turned her head to the side, frowning in a stubborn manner. I told you, I'd take care of you. She mumbled softly. When Yi Mu had been talking to Mo Linyuan, with her back turned to Yi Li, she chose that opportunity to cut off a piece of her flesh from her arm without hesitation. And when she placed the cut on Mo Linyuan's lips, she stuffed her own flesh into his mouth, which caused him to immediately spit it out, creating the perfect illusion of his own tongue being cut off. So even when her own hands bathed in blood, it could have been easily be excused with her cutting out Mo Linyuan's own tongue. Mo Linyuan clenched his fists, however he remained by Yi Mu's side, not daring to move. He cradled her in his arms, careful not to hurt her any further than she already was. How could you have been so reckless? He whispered now in a dazed manner, so reckless he kept repeating. He had been ready to offer her his own tongue, so he didn't know why she would think to hurt herself for him. She had even cried in his arms when she bruised herself from before. And now cutting her own flesh this was an entirely new level for someone like him. How could she hurt herself like this? At seeing his suffering state, Yi Mu felt compelled to ease his mind. She knew he was feeling the guilt. As if he was the one that cut off her flesh. Don't worry. She said, wounds heal. The skin will mend itself, but if a tongue would be cut out she trailed off, shuddering at the thought if she did as her father wanted if your tongue had been cut off it wouldn't grow back. She told him. So hush now. You still need to send me back quickly before father notices. Nodding in agreement, Mo Linyuan carefully lifted her body up and sprinted towards her small courtyard, to where she was living in. But despite his current chore, 
his mind wouldn't ease up in replaying the events over and over and over in his head. When she shook in pain, when she forced a smile even when she held her own flesh and blood for Yi Li to check. Such recklessness he couldn't even fathom it completely. What had possessed her to do such dangerous thing? As he ran, hot tears fell onto Yi Mu, but she hadn't noticed it. She felt so tired so in pain, she hadn't registered the tears he had shed for her own sake. All she knew was she was finding it difficult to stay awake. She could feel her own body grow heavy, even when she wasn't using it. But if she would show any ounce of pain, Emo Linyuan would surely feel even more terrible for her. She couldn't allow it. It wasn't his fault. The decision was hers. For so long, he lived in suspicion, betrayal, and always on the run. The people that surrounded him always told him to bear with it. And he always worked so hard, to be stronger, even when back then he didn't know why he needed to be stronger. But he knows why now. The stronger he is, the lesser the time had watch Yi Mu cut and bleed for his sake. The stronger he is, the more he could ease the problems Yi Mu had just to buy his own freedom. She wouldn't need to have a treasure house. The stronger he becomes, the more meaning his life gains. When Emo Linyuan finally arrived in Yi Mu's room, he rushed to give her some medicine for the wound, but his hands shook as he does so. He couldn't help but recall when the dead men escorted him from Emo country. He had wanted to take his younger sister with him at that time, but in order for her to curry favor with the Empress Dowager she had betrayed him, which caused multiple deaths. All those people who tried to protect him had been fatally wounded and died. And this was his own sister his own flesh and blood. He also recalled his mother, who had forced him to read and recite text after text, just so she could gain the opportunity to meet his father emperor. And when he wouldn't do as she had asked, she would whip him herself. And now? Now here was a girl, with no relations or ties to him at all, yet would cut her own flesh and shed blood for him. Remembering what she did, his heart became filled with determination. His hands shook less as he continued with great concentration in treating her to the best of his abilities. In the cold and quiet night, his own rapid breaths are all that could be heard. Yi Mu had slipped towards unconsciousness, and her body curled as she slept. Staring at her, Emo Linyuan couldn't stop but feel sorry for the pain he's caused her. With blood-stained fingers, he hesitantly reached out, stopping only a few inches away from her pale cheeks. After a few moments, he finally caressed her face. Silly girl, he whispered to her, knowing full well she won't hear him now, I promise I won't let you get hurt anymore. Not for me. Chapter, 31 when Yi Mu had woken up several hours after she fell asleep, she took a few more moments to blink before recalling what happened after her ruse of cutting Emo Linyuan's tongue and covered her face in embarrassment and shame. Back then, cutting a part of her flesh of was nothing to her. She even got shot twice at one time, but still was able to walk on her own two feet and complete the task that had been given to her. And yet last night she clenched her fists in frustration. Last night was a disgrace. You're awake! exclaimed Emo Linyuan all of a sudden, surprising Yi Mu. It was just the crack of dawn, and there were only the two of them in the room. Immediately, Yi Mu sat up, but pain shot through her arm. Her face scrunched up in agony. Shed gone soft. Here. Emo Linyuan said, offering a cup of water, drink. Nodding in acceptance, Yi Mu greedily drank the water not realizing how thirsty she had been until the water finally quenched the thirst she had neglected. How are you feeling? He asked, concern etched in his features. At this early time, Yi Mu had originally wanted to say she was all right. She only lost a small amount after all. She could still bear with it, but then also. Wasn't this also the ideal time to appeal herself to Mo Linyuan? This would be a good opportunity. Having resolved what to do, her lips quivered as she hissed in pain, it hurts, so much. She gasped, tears forming at the corner of her eyes, it's so painful it feels like I'm dying. She said weakly and waited for Emo Linyuan's face. She admits she hadn't made a good impression for Emo Linyuan, but she would do her utmost best to make sure to change how he sees her. As predicted, Emo Linyuan's gaze hardened and nodded in understanding. Wait here, 
he said, he'll go fetch some painkillers. Sain Yi Li had decided not to kill him and made her escort after his tongue was supposedly cut off, he couldn't ask for analgestics, he was a mute. And they won't give it to him. No wait. Wait! exclaimed Yi Mu, and straightened up, it's fine, it's only a flesh wound, nothing dangerous. In fact it would be more dangerous for you to go out right now. People may realize your tongue haven't been cut out at all. She explained. Mo Linyuan became even more distressed to hear her worry about his safety more than she was concerned for her own. Don't worry, I can get Xiaolang's help in this matter. But Yi Mu's face fell at the mention of Xiaolang. Don't tell Xiaolang just yet. She told him, he'll inform him soon, but from now on, you are a mute. She told him. Mo Linyuan stared at her in subtle surprise. He had thought she trusted easily, which would be the reason she had been so kind to him. But perhaps he was mistaken. Yet why such kindness has been given to him? It made Mo Linyuan's heart skip a beat as he thought about it, but he quickly tamped the thought down. Thoughts like that were unwelcome, but he couldn't help it. He found himself feeling joyful at the prospect. Still, your injury. It's all right. She told him with a reassuring smile, when everyone will awaken, he'll just get someone else to fetch it from Yili. It'll be fine. It's just. It was a pity the treasure was taken away, she thought. As if reading her thoughts, Mo Linyuan said, he'll find you more treasure, I swear. Stunned, Yi Mu stayed in rapt attention with every word Mo Linyuan said. In all honesty, I am the crown prince of Mo country, but I fled from there. He admitted, and one day I will return ten times more of a golden mountain to you. He continued his impassioned speech, but now, I will play my part as your very own mute. You have my heartfelt gratitude for last night young lady. Chapter, 32 He knelt down on one knee as he thanked her reverently. Yi Mu, on the other hand, found herself relieved that he finally admitted to her his true identity. This only meant that he had trusted her just enough to reveal such a piece of important information. His gratitude also meant she was one step closer to the city boundary map. I don't need a mountain of gold and silver. Yi Mu smiled, but then said, but I see you are sincere, she mischievously told him, tell you what, in the future, if you manage to own something that is of no use for you, you can give me that instead. Smiling at her, Mo Linyuan nodded in earnest. But what thing do you specifically have in mind? Perhaps I can offer some of my services for you to find it more quickly. He told her. He may have fled the country of Mo, but he still had some people who he could trust. Originally, he had planned to flee and return as soon as he got out of the Yi family, but now. He wasn't in such a hurry to leave. Relaxing, Yi Mu leaned back and waved her hand in a casual manner, it's not important now. She told him, only when you stumble upon it, if you do, I shall ask for it, until then promise me you won't give it away to anyone else, ah. Nodding in agreement, Mo Linyuan bowed, whatever it is you shall ask, he'll give it to you. He promised. After all, he already owed her two lives. Then it's settled. She beamed at him, before squinting her eyes as she looked outside. The dawn is beginning, hurry, you must get home. But, she grabbed his hand urgently, remember your role. You are dumb now, a mute. You do understand. Mo Linyuan hesitated for a bit. He didn't want to leave her like this, but he knew he had to leave her servant girl would arrive any minute now, and the implications of them both in one room could be disastrous whether or not it was true. Seeing her feeling refreshed and well rested after last night's sleep, he felt a little better. Not so worried as he had been before. Of course. He answered her, have a good rest then. Yes, of course. She said, urging him to make haste in leaving, don't worry about me at all. After Mo Linyuan had gone out, the sun had already risen up as well, its light spilling from the horizon and towards the earth. Mo Linyuan found himself untired despite having not slept a wink at all. Looking back at the closed door, he reached into his pocket and pulled out a small square object, whose color was of marble jade. Inscribed on it were four huge characters which stated. The Eternal Yi Dynasty. It was the Emperor's Jade Seal. 
Mo Linyuan had noticed at the moment Yi Mu lit up the wooden lighter. Amidst the mountains of gold and silver, he saw something which oddly resembled a dragon robe. And when he saw the seal, he took it without another word. Giving this to the emperor of Yu would mean the Yi family's certain death. And though he didn't like most of the Yi family, Yi Mu was also a member of the household. He needed more time to think this through. Ultimately, he hid the seal once again inside the robes of his arms. When Mo Linyuan had left her room, Yi Mu had immediately pulled out a book from beneath her clothes. It was entitled, Supreme Heart Sutra. This was it. Touching it in awe, Yi Mu winced a little as she moved her wounded arm and mumbled under her breath, I had been careful not to lose you. She murmured, For you, I lost a piece of my own flesh. Surely you will bless me now to be a master of the martial arts. The kind that is undisputable, and unbeatable before anyone else. A few days have passed, yet it all went by in a flash. And in those few days, Yi Xiaolang had been quite silent. Originally, he chalked it up to his life having improved now. With good hosts, he would definitely have something to look forward to in the future. But in the course of one night, his companion has had his tongue cut out. And it was only because he couldn't sleep that night, so he went out for a walk. And with his late night walk, he had bumped into someone he shouldn't have. This made him understand, that each one of them, subordinate after subordinate no one is safe. Every one of them will be killed like pigs for slaughter. It wouldn't matter what skills now Yi Mu would teach them. He wasn't so excited anymore. But even so, he throws away his previous laziness and begins to be earnest and assiduous in training and learning. Mo Linyuan, he noted, was well trained than any one of them. If he had good help, from perhaps a well-known instructor, then perhaps it would open up new possibilities for him. His progress had been in leaps and bounds before anyone else. But the intensity of his training has made Yi Mu worried. She fears he was overexerting himself. Pushing himself to his very limits. Chapter, 33 The others weren't to be overlooked at as well. They were all so diligent. So instead, she used her own influence and took them to the foreign academy together with her. In any case, they are both her own followers. No one else will doubt her after witnessing her given lessons towards them. But the teachers the Yi family had hired were also experts of their fields. The courses were well taught and often hard to learn. A far cry from the teachers she had hired in private. Yi Li was absolutely making sure his sons received only the finest in order to ready and mold them to be the princes of the country. Did he have to be so obvious with broadcasting his ambitions? She thought to herself. After the classes for the day had ended, Yi Mu found herself standing up with great difficulty. Her body had grown soft, too pampered. It made her recovery slow. Several days had already passed, and still, the pain from her injury burned with stinging pain. Forcing her way out of the class, she was determined to show no weakness. Surrounding her were three boys, all of whom was her elder brothers. Ever since her first day, they have done nothing but cause her trouble. Today was beginning to look a bit too much for her liking. Oh, if it isn't my hard-working seventh younger sister, you push yourself too hard to amount to anything. He teased, quickly now, how did you convince father to let you into the academy? What's the secret? He persisted, if you don't tell me, there's no knowing what my fists won't do. He lightly threatened. Yi Tian, Yi Mu's fifth brother, was the only son the first wife of the Yi family had born. He only really wanted to know in hopes of getting his own younger sister to also attend their same school. Not all children of the Yi family could ever hope to have access to the education that came with the academy. With Yi Mu in the academy, only four of them are able to attend. The others were sent to schools of faraway places or private tutors. And that only meant their father, Yi Li, had given up on them. But Yi Mu didn't like feeling cornered. She was fed up with being confronted, teased or picked on a daily basis three or five times a day. I said I don't know. She exclaimed, this was father's order, and only he knows. If you have any questions about my admittance then ask him. She wanted to leave already, but they wouldn't let her off easily. Peasant girl. Spat Yi Tian, 
you should respect me as is my authority. You're only a daughter born from a concubine, yet you dare speak to me in such a manner. Signaling the other two brothers, they grabbed both Yi Mu's arms. It looked as if they were about to let him hit her, yet both Mo Linyuan and Yi Shaolang managed to prevent them from grabbing her. It seems like the training was paying off after all. It didn't matter how hard the brothers tried to break free from their grasps, the grip was so tight, it was as if it was made of iron. They couldn't break free. What do you think you are doing? Asked Yi Shaolang in a cool, yet threatening manner. The young lady was considerably smaller than them and yet they still felt the need to overpower her with their numbers. The other two growled in protest, still unable to yank their arms off, how bold of you to touch me, slave. Spat one of them. We are the young masters of this family. Unhand us at once. Demanded the other. Yi Tian was finding himself furious with the resistance he met with Yi Mu. He didn't like it when he didn't get his way. When someone refused, he'd make them do his bidding through force of threats. She was only from a concubine, and yet she dares challenge him. Undermine his authority over her. You slander us. Yi Tian exclaimed, How dare you slaves lay even a finger unto your masters? Seize them. Yi Mu and her two slaves. He ordered to the people around them. Should she resist, I give you permission to use force. Hurriedly, everyone did as he ordered. Everyone knew Yi Mu was only born of a concubine. For them, Yi Tian's authority lay precedence. He was born of the first wife after all. Yi Mu knew it was only a matter of time until it came to this. When she saw all the people around them rush to execute Yi Tian's orders and arrest her, she only laughed mirthlessly before glaring at Yi Tian. Xiaolang, Aji, step away. She ordered. Both servants exchanged glances with one another. Although they didn't like the order, they did nothing else but obey as she asked of them. They released both princes at the same time, while Yi Mu stood up straight and proudly in front of the people. And she turned to Yi Tian and raised her arms in a kimbo. Elder brother, you want to arrest me? They'll let you do it. She told him, I know you've hated me always, so here I stand before you. Go on. Arrest me. She goaded him, but I warn you, whatever you do to me, so will father do unto you. Yi Tian was visibly fuming at Yi Mu's words. You don't believe me? Then try to see if a little concubine girl can match a son born of the first wife. Why you little? Yi Tian spat, preposterous. Ridiculous to suggest, even for you. You'll never be above me. Beat her. All of you. Beat her to death. Chapter, 34 Yi Tian doesn't believe it. For his father to embarrass himself for a mere concubine-born daughter it was an absurd thought. Yi Mu's dark eyes swept across the crowd and she harumphed, Come. Yi Tian will not die if he makes a mistake, but it's a different story for servants like you. Come, if you want to meet death. If I, Yi Mu, can get into the foreign academy even with my status as a concubine-born daughter, you should think twice about getting into trouble with me. Measure your worth first. The people who were originally approaching Yi Mu halted and looked at each other. In fact, they were not frightened by Yi Mu's words, but Yi Mu had a kind of undeniable pride and brimming self-confidence that Yi Tian did not have. This kind of determination and fearlessness made them feel ashamed and guilty at the same time. Yes, Yi Mu was not an ordinary concubine-born daughter, as even the daughter of the first wife wasn't able to enter the foreign academy. If they come and slight her, they will definitely suffer misfortune from their own actions. Therefore, after a moment's deliberation, one of the servants went behind Yi Tian and shamefully said in a low voice, Young master, please let this matter be fighting is not allowed inside the foreign academy. The general ordered this. Then he was slapped by a furious Yi Tian. Trash. What do you mean? You dare not touch her. She's just a concubine born daughter a common girl. What are you afraid of? But the people around him only listened and bowed their heads. Yi Mu saw this and chuckled. Look, it's not that I won't let you catch me, it's you who dare not. She taunted, is there anything else? If it's all right, I'm leaving. 
After all, my father regards me highly, and my time is still very precious. After that, regardless of Yi Tian's ashen face, she turned around to leave. But she was not so relaxed in her mind. In fact, she had expected such things would happen. Yi Li would raise his children just like how one would raise venomous insects he is not opposed to them killing each other. All because what he always wants the strongest one to prevail. Otherwise, he will not allow the females in his harem to raise their children with a vicious temperament therefore, even in public places, the children in Yi residence have no restraint and are very aggressive. Even if she is at peace with the rest of the world, she will become a thorn in the eyes of others when she arrives at the foreign college. Today is just the beginning. However, she is still a fledgling now. If she is targeted by big figures in the government, it won't be a good thing for her. But the road had come to this point, and she could not turn back. But it was not long before Yi Mu went back that she was summoned by main mother the first wife. In her heart, she did not expect the other party to move so quickly. Is father in the mansion? Before going out, Yi Mu asked her maid. Xiao Chiu said, this maidservant has already inquired about it the general is currently attending a feast. No one is left here. Yi Mu frowned slightly in consternation. The mistress of the residence had summoned her even if she refused to go, the other party would find her later. Ultimately, she said, Xiao Chiu, you go to where my father is. When the banquet is over, immediately tell him my situation. Tell him that mother is going to kill me. What? With this serious order, not only Xiao Chiu was shocked, but Yi Shaolang and Mo Linyuan also wore a worried expression. They have only been summoned why would Yi Mu speak as if it was a grave affair? Isn't the main mother known for her benevolence? But Yi Mu can't explain too much at this time, because the people who came to find her from the main mother had already forced their selves inside, breaking in shamelessly. Seventh young miss, you actually don't have to prepare anything. Just go ahead, please. Wan Hong, head servant of the first wife, strode closer and said with a strong attitude. Yi Mu snorted, needed to check on your prisoner before you leave. Afraid that I might run away? Seeing Yi Mu leaving, Mo Linyuan suddenly grabbed her hand. At the present. He could only force himself to remain mute, because he was acting one now, so he could only use his eyes to signal to the girl beside him. Yi Mu understood it and solemnly said, It's all right. I can handle this. Neither you or Xiao Lang are allowed to interfere. Chapter 35 Yi Mu would often subconsciously forget that she was only six years old. She still has that protective mentality towards her people as before. Today, Mo Linyuan and Yi Xiaolang were both slaves. Mo Linyuan has his tongue cut off, so the less they appear in front of people, the better. With that, Yi Mu shook off Mo Linyuan's hand and left. In front of outsiders, she never showed how much importance she attached to them, and Wan Hong naturally did not take them seriously. Please, seventh young miss. Yi Mu snorted and strode ahead. Yi Xiaolang wanted to go after her, but he was held back by Mo Linyuan. They will only hold her back for now. And because Yi Mu had said that the Yi main mother was definitely not a good person. Finally, he motioned to Xiaolang a warning with his eyes. Yi Xiaolang understood the moment he looked at his face, do you mean we should also go to the general? He is quite scared, unsurprisingly so. After all, Yi Li is terrible and he could die a painful death if he was not careful. But when he thought of the young lady, his eyes hardened and he said to Xiao Qiu, Sister Xiao Qiu, let's go. We will go together. Xiao Qiu nodded and several people hurried to towards the lobby where the banquet was held. Although Yi Mu said that the main mother wanted to kill her, it was not something surprising for her. She had read the biography, so she knew very well that the main mother of the Yi residence was not a caring person as she appeared to be in the original host's memories. This woman held a dislike for the original Yi Mu since the day she was born and had always wanted to dispose of her, but only lacked the opportunity. The reason why she disliked her was very simple, it was all because the birth mother of the original Yi Mu, was formerly a confidant around the main mother who unpredictably ended up crawling into Yi Li's bed. She was especially spoiled for a few years, but because of her growing arrogance, she was secretly killed by the main mother a year ago. 
Then, fearing that she would be doubted by Yi Li, the first wife ceased all actions and turned to silence for a few years. She greeted Yi Mu like her own daughter, made her feel like a rich, pampered girl with healthy and delicious meals at her beck and call. She allowed her to do what she pleases, not having to learn women's etiquette, or to follow protocol and pay respects to the elderly. She let her torture people as she wished. She gave her everything, flattered her every move. And this created a strong illusion that this main mother was very kind to her. But it was all only to serve one purpose in the future, that is, when she would kill her, no one would suspect her. And now a year has passed all the grudges the main mother held for her would not be so easily contained at this time. At her most vulnerable moment, and with the earlier fiasco with Yi Tian, she could say that the main mother would obviously play her hand now. Just as she was thinking about everything, they had arrived at the most exquisite and rich place in the general's mansion. In the pavilion behind the sharp rockery and clear, flowing water, a lady was gracefully drinking tea. Behind her were countless attendants, flanking her lone frame. Her long silk dress was intertwined in red and blue as they dragged on the ground. Yi Mu squinted towards her direction, eased her thoughts, and went forwards to salute. Mother, little Seven is here. When Ru spared her a cursory glance, not bothering to acknowledge her greeting. When she opened her mouth to speak, this gave Yi Mu a bad feeling. Muir has been blessed with great power and prestige lately I've even heard that even your older brother wants to avoid its sharp edge. Her voice was gentle, and her features were plain and soft. But with the calculating light that occasionally flashed in her eyes, one could determine she was definitely no ordinary, meek person. Yimu knows that the other side did not call her over with a good intention. The only thing she could do for now, is to buy time. In hopes that Yi Li, in exchange for the treasures she bestowed upon him, would come to save her. So Yi Mu stood up and said, Did my elder brother tell you that? Brother misunderstood, little Seven usually respects him the most. Last time, it was just a natural joke between brothers and sisters. Are you making a joke out of this? When Ru did not expect that the little girl in front of her could casually make a big deal a small matter. Chapter 36 when Ru gave an icy sneer. Muir, you grew up in just a short period of time I still remember a year ago that your biological mother had just died. And you looked so pitiful, that if this madam hadn't brought you under her wing, you would have lived a hard life like all your other concubine-born sisters. Yi Mu cheekily said with a smile, that's why the madam of the residence is truly benevolent for doing taking care of Little Seven. Little Seven will truly repay you in the future. When Wen Ru heard these words, her smile became brighter. You don't have to repay me. She played with the china cup filled with tea on the palm of her hand and narrowed her eyes, what do you think you became so ill that this madam needed to take you to the residence hospital to recuperate, but then you became so ill to the point you died? Do you would the general blame this madam? Yi Mu felt her heart jump. Her worst hunch came true the woman didn't want to simply teach her a lesson and let her go, but wanted to kill her now. She tried to act naive and said, Madam, what are you talking about? Little Seven doesn't understand Madam's words. After all, Little Seven is not sick. And Father said last night that he would go over my homework from the academy and evaluate them. How could I become sick at such an important time? When Ru looked at her empathetically. What a poor child. One won't know if they are sick. I'm afraid you won't see the general tonight. Besides, even if you see General Lee, you would be too sick to say anything. But rest assured that the general will surely understand your filial piety. She magnanimously said and with a wave of her hand, two handmaids from behind her came out. One was holding an ominous-looking small bottle in her hand. Directly at first glance, the growing intense situation isn't looking too good. Yi Mu stepped back and forced a stiff smile. Madam, I just bumped into my elder brother once. Is it necessary for you to do this? Wen Ru stood up and calmly said, that confrontation. No, not that. Don't you know? It was only because of this madam's kindness that you lived until the fortunate age of six. She paused and looked at Yi Mu like a poisonous snake. You should not have been born at all. Like your slut of a mother, you let this madam feel distressed every night. 
it's necessary to vent out one's pent-up feelings. Only, the more I hate you, the more I need to act nicer towards you. In this way, who would suspect you would die in my hands? Yi Mu retaliated, Mother, you are wrong. Even if within a year, my biological mother and I died for no reason at all, and people would turn their heads to the side, tight lipathy would know you did it. However, only if I was an insignificant girl would such a scenario happen I have been of great use to father lately. Otherwise, why do you think father would allow me to go with my elder brothers to study at the prestigious foreign college? Speaking of this matter, when Ru became even more furious. Even her daughter wasn't able to study at the foreign college. She thought, how could this daughter of a slut be more privileged than her own daughter? So instead of being scared, her hate for Yi Mu reached an all new height. Come servants. The seventh young miss is guilty of the following offenses. Arrest her. Arrest? Are they going to play dirty and force the medicine down her throat through this? Yi Mu instantly turned around and ran. She wouldn't sit back another moment and wait for rescue. As soon as she ran, Wen Ru sent more people to chase her. Yi Mu's small arms and legs were almost outflanked several times. Damn it, if she successfully runs away today, she will definitely humiliate this old hag. Chapter 37 On the other side, Mo Linyuan and his companions were stopped. The general is currently attending a banquet for the Zhao Emperor and official Lu. How impudent of you to rush in. Do you not value your lives? But Yi Xilang's impulsiveness wasn't to be stopped, grabbing the bodyguard, he urgently said, the young lady is in danger. The young lady is the general's daughter general needs to save her from death. The guard merely scoffed at his words and shoved him away. You're joking. How could the seventh young miss be in danger at her own residence? If you refuse to leave and make more trouble here, they'll have no choice but to arrest you. Seeing that this person refused to believe them, the three children were anxious. Mo Linyuan knew that Yi Mu holds some importance in Yi Li's heart, however, he knew it was too little for him to desert a banquet held for the emperor for her. Therefore, he must find a way to force him to leave, but he must see him first. Just then, Mo Linyuan had an idea and wrote the word Lu in the palm of Yi Xiaolang's hand. Yi Xiaolang was unable to comprehend the meaning of his actions at first but when he saw Mo Linyuan point to his recently healed shoulder, he immediately understood. That abnormal official Lu was also here, ah. Don't tell me, they are going to do that? He morbidly thought. He looked hesitatingly at Mo Linyuan, but Mo Linyuan only returned a solemn nod. It had to be done. So, with the two of them together, they ran towards the slave office. And sure enough, there were people in the midst of selecting slaves to be sent to the main hall. This was a good chance for them to mix in. Meanwhile, on the other side, Yi Mu made a chaotic scene in the rain and dew garden of Wen Ru. Useless wrenches. Even grown adults like you can't catch a single six year old child. Do you want a death sentence? Wen Ru could no longer maintain her gentle mask. She struck the table with force, and all the servants hastily crowded towards Yi Mu in fear. However, Yi Mu was as slick as a loach, always slipping from their hands. Adding to the hurdle was the garden which was wide and spacious with this they unable to catch her easily. Yi Mu was also glad that she has not been lazy during this period and had already recovered a little bit of her old agility back. She lured people around the garden in circles, making them jump up and down through obstacles. In her mind, she only thought, Yi Li must come quickly. But in just a flash, a tall man blocked her way. And Yi Mu directly sensed the strong killing intent emanating from this person. This wasn't good. To appear before her so fast, this person could only be a practitioner of internal martial arts. Unfortunately, Yi Mu was short in stature and her frail body inexperienced to fighting. With only two tries of his hand, he was able to grab Yi Mu and lift her up like a young cub. Yi Mu wanted to fight back the moment she was lifted from the ground, but the other party had anticipated this and mercilessly landed a heavy blow to her stomach. Her whole body immediately shook in pain, and she shrank to a ball. Madam, I caught her at last. 
when Rue felt embarrassed to have asked a trained person to resolve a small matter. She readjusted her appearance before speaking. With an apologetic smile, she said, I'm sorry for inconveniencing Master Yen, then she turned her head and said crossly, Why don't you go over there and arrest the dead girl? Yes. Yi Mu badly wanted to escape, but the man holding her in a vice grip was too strong. She was shaking in pain as she was easily arrested by Wen Ru. After handing over the girl to Wen Ru's servant, the man surnamed Yen left without looking back. Wen Ru had a longing look as she watched the man's retreating back. Only when he was out of sight did she turn her attention back to Yi Mu. She walked step by step towards her, fronting a commanding air. Condescendingly looking down, she said, Little girl, I didn't expect you'd have good agility even at an age so young. You are actually quite crafty to try and resist your fate. Seeing Yi Mu's forehead covered with thin sweat, she smiled and said, But you weren't expecting someone to be here one versed in internal martial arts, did you? You must know there are only a handful of people who are knowledgeable in the arts of internal martial arts. She paused and sneered, nevertheless, it's your fault that you deserve to die. Slight me and I will make you experience a painful death. After this grandiose speech, she waved her hand towards the servant with the poison to step forward. Yi Mu was harshly forced to kneel on the ground. She raised her head in pain to look at Wen Ru, you'd better kill me directly, else father sees what you are doing to me he'll make you pay. You. Wen Ru's frame shook in fury. But this taunt from Yi Mu reminded her that the poison has no antidote and had slow effects. Although she would suffer in agony, with death held at bay, Yi Li might caught her red-handed. It was better to kill her fast, but one that brings ultimate pain. As since you have chosen how you want to die you'll help fulfill your wish. Call the person in charge for the instruments of torture. This madam is going to have a fulfilling show seeing how you would beg for mercy. Yi Mu lowered her head and clenched her teeth. Compared with ingesting unknown poison of which she doesn't know the antidote, it was better to suffer physical agony. She will prevail at all costs. Chapter 38 However, for now all she could do was to desperately place her hopes on Yi Li despite how slim the chances of him saving her may be. She hated how she was too young and weak to do anything. It made her feel humiliated to her very core. Meanwhile, the group of selected young slaves were sent to the raucous banquet hall, and among the slaves who were wailing, only two boys did not make a ruckus or shed a tear. They were none other than Emo Linyuan and Yi Xiaolang. At this time, the people in the hall had just finished talking about serious matters, and now they were heading to the second part of the banquet, of which was entertainment. Official Lu didn't bother to look at the slaves. He eagerly rubbed his hands, and with a greasy smile, he whispered to Yi Li, General, to be honest, this official has no interest in these young fellow show is that young slave of yours doing? Yi Li didn't expect him to be still concerned about Emo Linyuan's state and was slightly irked seeing his eager face. However, his face was impassive as he stroked his beard in thought. He explained, that child from before. After you left him with a deep wound, the boy wasn't able to recuperate properly. I'm afraid a fragile body would only bore you. Who knew that while he was saying this, two young boys would rush out from the huddled group of slaves. One of the boys, who was Yi Xiaolang, shouted, General. I bring bad news. The young lady is in grave danger. Please, you must go and save her. His words stirred up a wave of commotion in the once celebrating banquet hall. Those who came to the party were either from rich families or of noble status, so when they heard that there was danger, they all became anxious and jittery. Yi Li immediately slammed the table in fury. Upon realizing that these two bold fellows were none other than Yi Mu's two little slaves, he was driven mad with anger and spoke without thinking. Bastards! What preposterous things are you saying? Danger? Where? Someone, drag these two slaves out and execute them. Hold on. Official Lu suddenly stood up and stared at Mo Linyuan with gleaming eyes. Mo Linyuan had been training for more than a month, and with Yi Mu naturally nurturing them under her wing, his complexion was better than before. When he saw Mo Linyuan's pale skin like the color of milk, he almost drooled. General, please wait wait for a minute. 
He panted and excitedly pointed to Mo Linyuan, General, since this kid is still alive, why don't you give him to this official instead of killing him? Official Lu was so thrilled that he blurted these words without thinking, and he didn't care of Yi Li's deepening frown at all. Yi Li's eyes were intensely fixated on Mo Linyuan. He had always wanted to kill this brat a long time ago he knew too many secrets. How could he give him away to someone else? However, when he remembered how Mo Linyuan was still a fledging, an illiterate, and how his tongue had been cut off by him, he thought, even if he gave him away, it shouldn't be a problem. Moreover, none of the boys that fell into official Liu's hands have lived past three days. Handing him over wouldn't be a bothersome issue at all. Afterwards, the frown between his eyebrows loosened. Since official Lu has spoken, then this general. No, you can't. Yi Xiaolang suddenly interrupted them. Thinking of the word Mo Linyuan had written in his palm, he mustered his courage and slowly said to Yi Li, General, Aji has something important to show you. If you want look, you will definitely regret it. After saying this, he turned all his attention towards Yi Li, waiting for his reply. If it was an ordinary young slave who had said such words, Yi Li would have definitely snorted in contempt. But the little slave who knew so many of his secrets actually had something to show him. He narrowed his eyes, which held a dangerous glint to them, and suddenly stood up. He got down from the seat of honor and walked towards them. Footsteps loud and heavy, the hall suddenly became so quiet that one would be able to hear a pin drop. The Zhao Emperor waved his fan thoughtfully watching this scene while official Lu nervously looked between Yi Li and Mo Linyuan. He was deathly afraid that Yi Li would come down and directly chop Mo Linyuan up. On the other hand, Yi Xiaolang also took a step back in fear. Only Mo Linyuan remained calm, raising his head to look straight into Yi Li's eyes. Chapter 39 For a long time, the hall was enveloped with an oppressive aura, making everyone feel as if their hearts were being constricted. Yi Li laughed in a sinister fashion as he walked in front of Mo Linyuan. He looked down at his tiny frame from above, is there something for me to see? Well. Hand it over. Immediately, one could hear the sound of people in the surroundings swallowing their saliva. The emaciated Mo Linyuan looked so weak and fragile in front of Yi Li, who was tall and large as a bear as if he would break with a single twist. But he stood unyielding, his expression was placid and even had a bit of sereneness to it. He quietly placed an item in Yi Li's hand. This is. Only quite a few people could see what seemed to be an object made from jade being handed to Yi Li. Since it was small, from their distance they weren't able to see it clearly. When Yi Li caught sight of the jade at the young man's hand, his expression instantly turned extremely unsightly. He turned it over and saw that the words the Eternal Yi Dynasty engraved on its back. This made his entire body turn cold and his limbs become stiff because this was a treasure taken from the pit in the abandoned courtyard. After discovering the treasure, although he did not send his people to guard it in the open, he had his trained experts to secretly watch it. This brat could not have stolen the treasure after he had it secured. Therefore, the only possibility was that he had taken it the night he had found the treasure this brat sneakily brought it out from below. And now, he was giving it to him the hidden meaning was too obvious. This was a concealed threat. Once this imperial jade seal would wind its way to other people's hands, his ambitions would be revealed immediately. His grand plan all his plans would be in vain. The most serious consequence was that none of the members of the Yi family could escape death. Thinking of this, Yi Li's eyes surged with killing intent. He used his internal energy to shatter the jade, and then suddenly lifted Mo Linyuan up, fiercely pushing him against a huge pillar. You're courting death. All of the female servants in the hall kneeled down, and all of the guests who came to attend the banquet had solemn expressions as their bodies tensed up. Mo Linyuan's pale face gradually turned red as he was being suffocated, but there was no fear in his eyes. He grabbed Yi Li's hand with one hand and his free hand pointed towards the direction of the Zhao Emperor. This blatant threat made Yi Li even more mad. His meaning was very clear. Since he was able to take out this imperial jade seal, he might also have taken something else that could kill him. However, Yi Li's real motive was to usurp the throne of the emperor. 
Currently, the Zhao Emperor was here if he saw and hear something he shouldn't have, then an imminent disaster was to befall on him. Therefore, although Yi Li wanted to directly strangle Mo Linyuan to death, the veins on his arms only bulged from holding back and the fingers on the little boy's neck were lackluster. Being threatened in front of his face, even if he wanted to smother this slave to death, he could only hold back. At this moment, even if official Lu couldn't bear to leave, he also didn't dare to touch Yi Li's tiger whiskers. On the other hand, when the Zhao Emperor saw Mo Linyuan point at him, he folded his fan and said with an indecipherable smile, General, don't get angry just yet. This emperor sees that this little guy is too serious to be playing. Why isn't he speaking? What kind of riddle are you two on? Hearing the voice of the Zhao Emperor from behind him made Yi Li's body quiver imperceptibly. He glanced at the Zhao Emperor who could have him killed in the blink of an eye. Straight away, he felt the distinctive feeling of fear and his back became covered in cold sweat. Indeed, he should have killed this little slave back then. He shouldn't have been threatened now. No it's nothing, your majesty. There was only silence before Yi Li began to laugh dryly. He suddenly let go of Mo Linyuan and said, These two children are people close to my daughter. They said that my daughter is in danger at the moment, but I don't trust their words. So, this general wanted to see if they are speaking the truth or not. And this boy is only a mute. Is that so? The Zhao Emperor replied in an ambiguous manner, making Yi Li unable to comprehend the meaning behind his words. Chapter, 40 Yi Li released his hold on Mo Linyuan, making the boy unceremoniously slump towards the floor. Yi Xiaolang hurriedly went towards Mo Linyuan's side, holding his hand to offer comfort despite his own body trembling slightly. Just a moment ago, he was truly afraid that Yi Li would strangle Aji to death. What did Aji give to Yi Li for him to spare his life? However, Mo Linyuan only slapped his hand away and signaled with his eyes. Only then did Yi Xiaolang was able to retract his train of thoughts. He hurriedly said, General, we must leave quickly. The young lady is really in danger, we don't have a choice but to charge in. When Yi Li heard this, he pretended to be anxious and said, This general has matters to settle with his inner residence and will regretfully leave for the time being. Please enjoy yourselves to the fullest there's no need to be polite. After he said these, he waved his hand motioning for the entertainers to continue their dance. Afterwards, more beauties were brought over by the butler for the guests to choose from. Yi Li moved to a corner devoid of prying eyes, only then did he remove his fod to glare fiercely at Mo Linyuan before taking the lead and walking towards the very front. Mo Linyuan patted Yi Xilang's hand and led him to follow. The moment they came out, Yi Li could no longer maintain the smile on his face. However, he did not immediately alert the Zhao Emperor of this matter. Before he left, he pretended that nothing had happened. Yi Li shifted his gaze back to Mo Linyuan. You are quite calm for your age lacking the demeanor of a child at all. Yi Li's gaze promised danger, but when he spoke these, his tone this was very casual. Mo Linyuan was a mute, so he naturally wouldn't say anything in reply. He only left in a hurry. He had already left Yi Mu for a long time, so there was no telling what had happened to her. But if he didn't answer, Yi Li would stop and return back to the banquet hall. And if he didn't leave, Mo Linyuan naturally wouldn't be able to leave either. Mustering his will, he turned around and glowered as he looked at Yi Li. This fearless appearance made Yi Li want to laugh. You're not afraid of death at all. Mo Linyuan was burning with anxiety. This was clearly Yi Li's own daughter's life that they were talking about, but he was not the slightest bit apprehensive. He didn't ask for the reason nor did he care where she was. Instead, he opted to stare daggers with a mere slave it was simply inhumane to the extreme. He clenched his fist while Xiao Lang knelt by his side. General, spare us. We were just too worried about the young lady who had been summoned by First Madam. It's unknown whether she's still alive or not, so please, quickly go and save her. Yi Li's face sunk, and he bellowed, ridiculous. What danger can there be if she gets called by the madam? He really didn't believe that the other party would come to him for such an absurd reason. Yi Xiaolang was at a loss for words to say. Mo Linyuan pulled him up from the ground he didn't say anything, 
but he made gestures with his hand to guide him on what to say next. Yi Xiaolang understood the silent message from the other party and he turned his head back to Yi Li. He clenched his teeth and said, if the general would only take a quick look. If we have been caught lying, we are willing to accept any punishment. When Yi Li heard them say this, he swung his sleeves and went towards the courtyard the main wife was in. From far away, he had already heard some unusual sounds. After Yi Mu had been caught, she was tied to a wooden bench. The person in charge for the instruments of torture wasted no time to follow the madam's orders to torture her. Every hit of the wood against her flesh was getting fiercer by the minute, and her skin broke and bled. When Rue sat unconcernedly at her pavilion, her face beaming with a sadistic smile as she listened to the sound of the stick hitting flesh. What a tough bone. Refusing to beg for mercy even if you're already like this. What a shame. Yi Mu could only remain silent from the pain. She didn't have to look down to know that her lower body was already covered in her blood. For this woman to be able to torture a child without batting an eye Yi Mu thought she must absolutely not fall into her hands. All right, stop playing. Wen Ru, finally finding the scene dull, looked to the west and snorted, just kill her. Yes, madam. Upon hearing this, the person who held the wooden stick raised it up high. And a trace of killing intent flashed across his eyes. Without a doubt, if she was to be hit with this stick, she would definitely die. Yi Mu raised her eyes slightly, her eyes glued towards the tightly shut courtyard door. A trace of disappointment flashed deep within her eyes truly, a world without human rights was indeed full of difficulties and torment for those at the bottom. Is this it? Is she going to die? She slowly closed her eyes, accepting whatever her fate may be. However, at this critical moment, the gates to the courtyard were loudly kicked open. Chapter, 41 Stop! When Yi Mu heard Yi Li's voice, her body unconsciously trembled. And in the next second, her vision dimmed. A refreshing smell that carried a medicinal scent surrounded her. It was Imo Linyuan who stood in front of her, blocking the stick that she was about to be killed with. With a muffled cry, Emo Linyuan was ruthlessly hit as he knelt on one knee, shielding her bleeding frame. His hands were carefully wrapped around Yi Mu's head. Don't be afraid anymore I've come back. Only Yi Mu could hear Emo Linyuan's low voice. The moment she heard this, she, who didn't like to cry or rely on others, suddenly felt a stinging pain in her eyes, her nose turning stuffy. Her eyes were bloodshot as she stared at Emo Linyuan with an indescribable gaze. It was as if she could see into the deepest depths of his soul. Formerly, Yi Mu had always had a heavy heart towards transmigrating to this place, especially being tied up with him. But now, I'm glad you're here. After saying this, she closed her eyes as the trace of a smile appeared at the corners of her mouth. Now, she was thankful that she was able to encounter and resolve these difficulties with him together. Mo Linyuan was caught off guard by her gaze and he stared deeply into her slowly closing eyes. Then, he heard her whispered words, her voice which seemed to be on the verge of dissipating into air. When Yi Li saw Yi Mu's miserable state, he couldn't contain his explosive anger. Bastard! Who gave you permission to do that? The moment Yi Li got angry, Everyone in the courtyard knelt on the ground like a quail. When Ru was even more surprised. Wasn't the general currently at the banquet hall entertaining esteemed guests? Normally, these kinds of banquets would last throughout the night. When Ru. Yi Li's voice reverberated, and when Ru's body further shook in fear. Yi Li's eyes looked as if it was about to drill a hole in the weak girl kneeling at his feet, when you originally killed Xiao Su, I secretly let you off the hook. And now, you want to include this child do you think you can fool me? You don't believe that I can make you scram from your position as the head wife right now? Husband. When Ru wailed. Yi Li's words had instantly caused her face to turn deathly white. Husband, please calm down. Husband, calm down. T this concubine has a reason for doing this. Oh. Yi Li's tall frame bowed over her quivering body on the floor as he stared at her, then enlighten me, for what reason are you doing this for? As when Ru racked her brains for a plausible explanation, she suddenly had a devious idea. 
It's all because Muir tried to steal. She wanted to steal the eastern pearl that this concubine had displayed on her makeup table. This concubine had caught her in the act and this child refuses to admit it. This concubine was angered to the point off this concubine only wants to teach her a lesson. Eastern Pearl Yi Li's gaze was unclear, but when Ru grabbed his leg and said, Yes. The Eastern Pearl, which is the biggest pearl in the world, unparalleled in its beauty. But Yi Li merely laughed. When he was done, he suddenly kicked Wen Ru away. Yi Mu didn't even bat an eye when she handed over the treasure from the ancestors, so how could she possibly be interested in her Eastern Pearl? How ridiculous, he thought. When Ru was kicked upside down, her body propelling backward. If she wasn't supported by her servant girls at the back, her face would have smashed the ground painfully she didn't expect that her lie would be exposed so easily. After being kicked, she could only look from the ground at Yi Li in astonishment. Yi Li couldn't explain the reason for his actions, therefore he merely gave her an icy look and sneered. When Ru, you better remember this, all the people who have schemed in front of me are already buried in the earth. If you don't want to be the next one you better behave, be meek like you were in the past. Sparing her one last glance, he then shouted to the people beside him, take the seventh young miss and depart. Chapter, 42 Yes sir. Yi Xiaolang hurriedly went to support Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan who had suffered a heavy injury. As Mo Linyuan stood up, blood flowed out from the corner of his mouth, and Yi Xiaolang hurriedly motioned for him to receive Yi Mu. However, the unconscious Yi Mu held on tightly to Mo Linyuan's clothes without letting go. Seeing this, Mo Linyuan wiped the blood from the corners of his mouth and gave a slight smile. He shook his head at Xiaolang before leaving with Yi Mu in his arms. After exiting the room, he turned around to glance at the courtyard behind him. His phoenix eyes narrowed slightly on his frosty face. That bone-piercing killing intent was completely unconcealed, as if it could swallow everything in its path. To dare to harm her so what if it was the first wife? He had to make these people pay the price with their blood. Meanwhile, Yi Li sent someone to treat Yi Mu. While the doctor was opening the medicine, he looked at Imo Linyuan and asked ambiguously. What else did you take out of the treasure pile? Imo Linyuan shook his head, indicating that he really did not have anything behind his sleeves anymore. You think I would believe you? Yi Li sat on the stool and coldly snorted, you threatened to use the imperial jade seal from the treasures to make me leave the banquet today. Do you believe I'm naive and refuse to think that perhaps you will take out something else tomorrow? Ridiculous. You cannot leave this place with your life intact. Mo Linyuan pursed his lips. Before, in a panic, he thought of a method to force Yi Li to save Yi Mu. Now that the person had been saved, Yi Li would naturally not let him off. Mo Linyuan glanced at Yi Mu with a calm expression. No matter what, as long as she was fine, all of this was worth it, he mused to himself. But he couldn't die yet, so he could only open his mouth to save himself. However, just as he was about to open his mouth to speak, Yi Mu's low cough came from the bed. Mo Linyuan hurriedly walked to Yi Mu's side and Yi Mu grabbed his arm. Mo Linyuan was startled. He lowered his head and saw Yi Mu's round eyes. She mouthed a signal stop talking. Muir. Yi Li stood up and looked over the bed. This bizarre daughter of Hish realized held some value to him. She had given all the treasures to him, using all of them to honor him she was the only daughter who was loyal to him. Moreover, with Yi Mu's mother dead, he had no one else to rely on in the manner but this child. Father. Yi Mu laid on the bed and looked at him weakly. You said that Aji was threatening you, but truthfully truthfully, I was the one who asked him to do it. What? Yi Li's eyes turned cold. However, when he was about to speak, he saw large tears suddenly fall down Yi Mu's small, pale face. If I didn't, how could father have come so quickly to save me? It was the first time in his life that Yi Li felt guilty, but he quickly glared at her. Even still, you shouldn't have taken that thing. And you even got someone to threaten me, did you even know what that is? Yi Mu shook her head, looking pitiful, I don't know what it is, I just want to look at it and play with it. I really didn't bring anything else, so if you don't believe me, you can go take a look at the treasures. 
There must be some sort of account book inside count them and you'll know that I'm not lying. Yi Mu's words made sense. Furthermore, given her young age, it was uncalled for her to be deceitful. She thought that the imperial jade seal looked good, so it wasn't impossible for a child like her to develop a fancy for it, in turn making her take it out. Chapter, 43 Yili rubbed his forehead, a growing headache imminent. He felt that something was off. Then you shouldn't have let your people threaten me. The Zhao Emperor is in the mansion. If you are not careful, our Yi family will be destroyed. You are really he trails off in frustration. Father. Yi Mu loudly interrupted him, if not for Zhao Emperor, would I have ended up like this? If I didn't threaten you, will you stop caring about the Zhao Emperor for your daughter? Her pair of big eyes stared fixedly at him, with tears in them that seemed about to fall, making her look extremely fragile. If it wasn't for Aji, your daughter would have died today. If you want to kill him, you might as well kill me too. Because I know, without him, no one in this house will fight so hard for me anymore. Rather than dying in the hands of others in the future, it would be better to just die clean and fast now. After she finished speaking, she laid on her arms and began to weep loudly. Her entire body shook as if she was in pain, and her cries rose in octave until she her voice became hoarse. Anyone could hear her feelings of being wronged loud and clear it was something that anyone who heard it would not be able to bear. That voice made Imo Linyuan's heart ache. His eyes gradually turned red, and his heart felt like it was being blocked by something he felt extremely uncomfortable. He only hated that he couldn't speak up to soothe her grievings, so he could only carefully press his hand on her shoulder, offering silent comfort. A knot had been formed between Yi Li's brows. An emotion he had never experienced before made him irritable, but he felt that he couldn't become even more fierce. Even if he was angry, he wouldn't be able to get angry now that Yi Mu was like this. Enough. After a long time, Yi Li finally patted Yi Mu's back. Don't cry. Two won't kill him. But are you sure you really didn't take anything else? Hmm. No. Yi Mu raised her head and angrily said, If I say no, then it's a no. Do you want to search me? You little thing. Yi Li was angered to the point that he laughed instead. You aren't big, but your disposition is. No one had ever dared to speak like that in front of him. Yi Li hesitated for a moment before saying, All right, I won't kill him. However, official Lu likes him and has repeatedly asked for him. What do you think I should do? When Yi Mu heard this, her heart skipped a beat, but she immediately thought of something else as she rolled her eyes. Father Official Lu is a popular person in the palace. The reason you're on good terms with him is because you want to get something from him, isn't that right? Yi Li's originally smiling face stiffened as he earnestly sized up Yi Mu's pale but calculating face. Recently, he felt that his daughter was extraordinary, and it wouldn't be excessive to even call her a child prodigy. Oh. Can you take a guess on what I want? He said, testing her. He actually admitted it. Yi Mu slightly curled her lips. This book, apart from being an autobiography, could also be considered a history book, so not only did Yi Mu know what Yi Li wanted to do, she also knew how the Yi family would be destroyed in the end. This daughter has a guess that it should be something like a military deployment. As the most trusted person in His Majesty's side, Official Lu definitely has information about the Imperial Guards in his hands, right? Father, am I right? This time, Yi Li was not only shocked. He even felt a tinge of fear as he looked seriously at Yi Mu. Muir, how did you know of this matter? Why are you bringing it up? Yi Mu glanced at Emo Linyuan. After a moment of hesitation, she made up her mind. I want my father to reject Official Lu first and keep him in suspense. After the time is ripe, I will personally send someone to guide Aji to official Liu's mansion as a spy and then steal the information you want. When she said those words, not only was it Yi Li, but even Mo Linyuan raised his eyes to stare fixedly at her. However, his gaze was not of shock or disappointment. Rather, he did not understand why she would do such a thing. Yi Li went silent at this. Because of his ambition, anyone who entered the general's estate would either sign a death contract or become a slave in other words, 
unless they died, they would never be able to leave. Chapter, 44 But to send someone else to be a spy in a stranger's house, and even more so a loyal, little slave who isn't afraid of death. Yi Li thought for a moment before suddenly laughing loudly, all right. You are truly worthy of being your father's daughter. You really take good care of father. Rest assured, since madam has injured you, father will definitely stand up and seek justice for you. Yi Mu didn't speak, her eyes glued on the sheets. Only after did she brought up the topic about the treasures did Yi Li remember that he should stand up for her. This she was at a loss on what to say. However, Yi Li was only oblivious to her thoughts, he only felt that the more he looked at them, the lighter his mood became. He stared at Mo Lin Yuan and asked, but this kid is very smart though you think he would listen to your words. Lest, follow it. After all, official Liu's residence isn't not a good place for a slave especially for him. What if this fellow was unwilling to go and had some hidden intentions along the way? Yi Li stroked his beard and felt a little hesitant. Mo Lin Yuan did not express anything for Yi Li's lack of trust towards him, his eyes were only looking at Yi Mu, awaiting her next words. Yi Mu said confidently, you saw it too. He was extremely devoted to me and was not even afraid of death. So, I can guarantee with my life that he will be trusted. Even if we were to release him from the residence, there would not be any problems. Yi Li only relaxed after hearing Yi Mu's words. That's right, he remembered that this kid blatantly dared to threaten him just for Yi Mu. A scheming child it was obvious that he would be able to get out alive. He really was a good choice as her daughter's dead man. All right. Father will go and reject him right away. Muir, have a good rest first. There are still some important guests in the main hall. Father will be departing first. Before he could leave, Yi Mu decided to amplify his guilt towards her. Therefore, with a slight downward tilt of her head, she whispered, Father you must come and visit Muir often. When Yi Li heard her voice, weak and small, his heart suddenly clenched. At the same time, his hatred for Wen Ru rose even more. He decided that he would definitely teach her a good lesson later. Don't worry. With father here, no one will ever dare to hurt you again in this general's estate. When Yi Mu finally said this, she let out a long sigh of relief. Thank you, father. After that, she watched Yi Li leave. After Yi Li left, the servant girl also went inside bringing in the medicine. Yi Mu would have argued that it was just a superficial wound and that drinking the medicine wouldn't have much of an effect, but she refrained from saying anything. She just drank all of the tonic in one gulp. It was actually to appease a worried Mo Lin Yuan sitting beside her bed. Does it still hurt? Mo Lin Yuan asked softly. Yi Li had already used the exclusive wound medicine bestowed by the palace to treat her, but with how severe her injuries were, Mo Lin Yuan felt no matter how good the medicine was, it would be impossible for her to get well right away. Much better she answered consolingly. If she wasn't feeling better, she wouldn't have woken up so quickly and coincidentally hear the conversation between him and Yi Li. When I said I wanted to send you to official Liu's residence, why didn't utter a complaint? Yi Mu glanced at him, puzzled. He poured her a glass of water, basking the room in silence and let her wash away the taste of bitterness from the medicine in her mouth. Why should I? His eyes were still, his raised phoenix eyes calm. I know you won't harm me, that's already enough. With this offhand reply, Yi Mu's expression became difficult, I won't be able to do much about this. The Yi residence is heavily guarded, although easy to enter, it's hard to leave it let alone for a powerless person like me. Even the main wife who governs the harem can't easily step foot outside. She paused and exhaled, that's why, I wanted to use this opportunity to let you escape. Leave the Yu country and return to your own country. Mo Lin Yuan was beyond stunned. The smile on his face was completely wiped away, and his voice trembled slightly. Why do you want me to leave? Yi Mu laid on her stomach as she spoke in a vexed tone. What there's no definite reason why I only feel that it's too dangerous for you, as the crown prince of another country, to stay in this treacherous residence. Especially that I'm not able to protect you I'm only still young. 
So, when you familiarize all of the Supreme Heart Sutras to mind, you must leave immediately. Chapter, 45 She looked at him and firmly said, Don't worry. He'll come find you in the future. This was an era where one's power was the ultimate deciding factor and one's life was only inferior to grass. If she were to be left alone, the Yu country would very quickly become a very dangerous place, and the imminent future of the Yi family facing downfall in the future made things grimmer for her. It would be better for Mo Linyuan to return to the country of Mo to prevent himself from falling into danger with her, but she would not be able to protect him on this quest. Most importantly, according to the plot, when Mo Linyuan reached ten years old, he had faked his death to leave the Yi residence and return to his homeland, just in time to avoid the chaos in the Yu country. He would soon be ten years old, so it was high time for him to go back. Hearing that Yi Mu said that she would go find him in the future, Mo Linyuan's cold chi slightly dissipated. What about you? Why won't you come with me? Yi Mu shook her head, I know so many secrets of Yi Li. If I were to go as well, he would chase after me even until the ends of the earth. You're different, he thinks you're disabled and an illiterate. Even if you run away, there won't be much danger of him chasing you down. And although driven to rage, he won't punish me because of you. Hearing her reasons for refusing to leave, Mo Linyuan only shook his head stubbornly. Then him not leaving either. Why? Yi Mu raised her head to get a clear look at his face. He actually didn't want to see such a good opportunity to get out. Why? Didn't he want to go back and settle things in his country? Yi Mu thought. If I leave, the trust that you painstakingly built up here at Yi Li's place will all be destroyed. Moreover, with the fiasco today, the first wife would be eyeing you covetously, with more resentment than before it will only be very difficult for you after I escape. He explained. This was because it was Yi Mu's suggestion to send him away. Once he ran away, Yi Li would worry about him leaking information and vent his anger on Yi Mu. Although she may feel this isn't the case, Yi Li already knows he is devoted to Yi Mu he wouldn't have been able to escape if she hadn't guaranteed him his freedom. Yi Mu, on the other hand, cared less for these things and refuted, it's fine, I have a way to protect myself. Moreover, I still have Xiao Lang. When he heard this, his resolve to no longer leave was strengthened. This is your opportunity. Your identity is special, and I can't let you wander around in danger so casually. If you leave, it will also be much easier for me, so you don't have to worry about my well-being. Mo Linyuan pursed his lips. Yi Mu continued, Moreover, you are the crown prince of the Mo country, and right now the empress has taken control of the Mo country. You must go back and take back everything that belongs to you your place is not here, not in the Yu country. Truth be told the Yu country will soon be plunged in chaos. Mo Linyuan suddenly smiled. A smile seemed like it was full of self-mockery. How can you be so sure that I will definitely return alive? Even on the way towards the M.O. country, misfortunes could happen. Nothing will happen. Yi Mu said confidently, because you are M.O. Lin Yuan. You will definitely succeed. Yi Mu's words, which were filled with sureness, moved M.O. Lin Yuan's mind. This was because he was Mo Lin Yuan so everything would work in his favor. Why had no one ever said such a thing to him before? His lips tightened to a thin line and he fell silent. After dusk, there were no lights in the room. Their silhouettes were basked in hazy light the slight curve of the corner of his eye, as well as his deep gaze, were like a painting, mysterious and fascinating. This scene became deeply imprinted in Yi Mu's mind. She suddenly felt her heart beating a little faster, especially when Mo Lin Yuan did not speak seriously, what was there to think about? Wasn't it better to go back? Just as she was at a loss for what to do due to Mo Linyuan's stare, he suddenly stretched out his hand and covered her with the thin blanket. He slowly said, If that's what you want, he'll do it. Chapter 46 His handsome face was magnified in front of her eyes, and even though he was still young, his future appearance could already be vaguely seen. At this rate, he would definitely become a brilliant, powerful, and peerless handsome man in the future, just as how he was written in the books. Yi Mu couldn't help but hold her breath. Her chubby face couldn't help but swell up at the close scrutiny, as she stared at him with a nervous smile, 
looking into his phoenix eyes. B but before you leave, let me take good care of you she murmured. Mo Linyuan nodded at this. Then, he felt his hand reach out to rub her on the head. This kind of feeling made him feel as if he was patting a pet. Hmm. A pet? A few days passed in the blink of an eye. After being confined by Yi Li, the first wife of the Yi residents all of a sudden became silent, with this unexpected Victorino one dared to mess with Yi Mu again. Since Yi Mu was injured, she also refused to go anywhere outside her abode. Today, she was in bed, exercising futilely. Although she was injured, it was necessary for her to move a little. However, because of the pain in her butt, she could only crawl on the bed like a caterpillar. Seeing this, Yi Xiaolang couldn't help but snicker. He even teased that when Aji came back with the medicine, he would let him have a look at her predicament as well. Yi Mu was so frightened that she immediately quickened her movement. Tears streamed down her face she really wasn't acting cute on purpose, it was just that her body had gone numb from lying on the bed for far too long. Just as she was trying her best to exercise, a racket suddenly came from outside. Yi Mu raised her head unconsciously towards the sound and saw the door being kicked open by none other than Yi Tian. Yi Mu, get the hell out of this residence. Yi Tian bellowed, his face red. Yi Mu's servants were camped outside, but none of them had dared or stepped forward to stop him. It was the Yi Xiaolang who ran over to stop him. Fifth young master, what do you want to do? Our young miss is still recuperating. Scram! Who do you think you are to dare stop me? Yi Tian frowned scathingly. Without saying anything further, he lashed the whip in his hand. The whip was full of barbs that were like small blades if one were to be stuck with it, the pain would be unimaginable. Yi Xiaolang was alarmed as he subconsciously avoided the attack. However, after successfully dodging the attack, he was surrounded by the other party's men. Such power! Yi Mu laid on the bed and looked at him with a serious expression. Big brother, what do you want to do? She didn't wait for Yi Tian to reply before coldly laughing. Or could it be that brother felt that his mother was lonely in the dark room, so he wanted to go in and accompany her? Shut up! Yi Tian furiously pointed his whip at her. Who do you think you are to threaten me? I am my father's only legal son. Even if I kill you, father won't do anything to me. Before he came, his mother had told him this, My son, no matter what you do to your younger sister, your father will not do anything to you. Because you are his son, you can do anything you want. Is that so? Yi Mu was secretly on guard, I don't know who instigated you to do this kind of brainless thing, but Big Brother should care about not being used as a gun by others. Pfft. Who's your brother? Yi Tian said with a fiery temper, Today I will teach you a lesson and let you know what a concubine-born daughter's duty is. As he spoke, he raised the whip and decisively aimed it at Yi Mu's face. Yi Mu was shocked and immediately wanted to dodge, but before she could do so, Yi Tian's hand was grabbed aggressively by Mo Linyuan, who had suddenly appeared by his side. Chapter, 47 It was obvious that Mo Linyuan had rushed over his forehead was covered in sweat. Although he was younger than Yi Tian, his thin and weak body seemed to contain a great deal of strength. He grabbed Yi Tian and pushed him back. Yi Tian's entire being was like a piece of paper being tossed as he continuously retreated. His expression also became that of fear. But just as Yi Tian was about to fall, a man caught him. It's you. Yi Mu had been lying on the bed the entire time, but her attitude immediately changed upon seeing this person. Her eyes were blazing with fire. It was this man. If he hadn't punched her on the stomach that day, she wouldn't have been nearly beaten to death by Wen Ru. Mo Linyuan also felt the immense strength from this man. He stood in front of Yi Mu, his entire body vigilant. Yi Tian had originally been frightened by Mo Linyuan, but now that this man had appeared, he immediately felt reassured. All right then, you're just a little concubine but you still have an aide by your side. But it's a pity that you have met a strict teacher. Yi Tian motioned to the man behind him, with him here, it is useless to resist. Master Yen, quickly help me capture this brat. When the tall man heard this, he frowned, 
but in the next second, he stepped forward to attack Mo Linyuan. Wait! Yi Mu hurriedly stopped him. But soon after, her eyes turned cold as she relaxed and sneered, before we recklessly beat people up, we need to get it clear. Aji is my father's man. Do you dare to lay a hand on him? What? How is that possible? Yi Tian didn't believe that Yi Li who was always cold towards his sons, could treat Yi Mu so specially. He pointed at Mo Linyuan unhappily and said, Stop lying. He's clearly just a slave. Yi Mu supported her chin with both hands and smiled maliciously. That's right, he's a slave, but that doesn't conflict with my father's positive opinion of him. Although my father isn't in the residence, you can ask my father's trusted aides or the general's director. Ask them if father thinks highly of me. Her smile broadened making Yi Tian feel more irate, father explicitly arranged for him to be my person, so if you dare to harm him, you will definitely not be able to escape. Her words weren't wrong. Yi Li was still waiting for Mo Linyuan to go to official Liu's mansion to steal confidential information about the Imperial Guards. How could he not value him? When Mo Linyuan heard this, he just stood there quietly. His phoenix eyes slightly raised as they carried a trace of coldness while he looked at Yi Tian. Furthermore, he was extremely calm, unnerving Yi Tian further. With him acting this way, Yi Tian immediately believed Yi Mu's story. After all, Yi Mu wouldn't dare to say an outrageous lie when asked this serious question. This knowledge caused Yi Tian's heart to be at a chaos it was as if his entire body was being pricked with thousands of needles. Could it be that their father valued Yi Mu so much that he even sent his trusted aides to look after her? No wonder he felt that this little slave's temperament was not simple from the start. So that's how it was father was too biased. However, after understanding the situation, he did not have the guts to make a move on Yi Mu anymore. After all, in this family, Yi Li was the sky, and his mother would only feel fear when she saw his father, not to even mention a powerless child like him. However, Yi Tian was extremely unwilling to leave just like that, especially when he thought of his mother crying confined in a dark room. All right you have guts. Yi Tian took half a step back as he unwillingly said, I want to see what kind of tricks you use to get father to value you. Yi Mu smiled amiably. No matter what ability it is, you can't learn it yourself. Take care on your way out, I won't be sending you off. Yi Tian tightly pursed his lips and turned around in anger. However, the moment he turned around his eyes flashed with a malevolent light. In the next second, the whip in his hand lashed out at Yi Mu. Be careful. Yi Xilang's alarmed cry could be heard. Chapter, 48 Mo Linyuan didn't even think twice to take the whip, but the tall man beside Yi Tian suddenly stepped forward and stopped him. Mo Linyuan's extended hand was grabbed as he widened his eyes. He watched as the whip whistled towards Yi Mu. At that moment, his heart felt like it was about to stop beating. Yi Mu was caught off guard, but luckily, although she was injured, she was still able to move. Her body tensed up as she rolled on the bed, and with a paw sound, she managed to dodge the attack. However, her left hand was still cut by the whip, leaving behind a trail of blood. Yi Tian cried in pity. How could she have avoided it? Yi Mu wasn't someone to be trifled with. After her left hand was hit, her right hand instantly retaliated. Picking up a jade ornament from the table by the side, she viciously threw it towards Yi Tian. The man protecting Yi Tian hastily tried to block it, but at this moment, Mo Linyuan gave him a strong tug. The jade ornament slipped through his fingertips, and in the end, the tip smashed brutally against Yi Tian's shoulder, causing him to bleed profusely. Ah! Yi Tian screamed miserably as he held his shoulder and sat on the ground from the pain. When he saw his hands were covered in blood, he panicked and screamed, Master Yen, save me. Master Yen, quickly save me. Yen Su pushed Mo Lin Yuan away and, in a flash, stood in front of Yi Tian, while Mo Lin Yuan instantly walked to Yi Mu's side to shield her behind him. Seeing that he was losing more and more blood by the minute, Yi Tian's panicked voice became sharper and more spiteful. Also painful. Damn it. You bitch. Scoundrel. 
how dare you do this to me? I must tell my father, tell my grandfather I must tear you into ten thousand pieces. He screamed in agony. Young master. Yen Su finally called out to Yi Tian and embraced him, retreating from the room. Yi Mu didn't have the strength to stop him as he listened to Yi Tian's curses getting further and further away. His lackeys also hurriedly ran away from the scene. She had been caught unprepared by the first wife before although she understood the dangers of this world, she was still not decisive enough in the matter of revenge. Yet, because of her lack of resoluteness, the other party had once again come knocking on her door, almost taking her life in the process. If she didn't have a certain level of skill, then even if she didn't die, her face would be disfigured. This world was indeed a world where strong people ate the weak, and she couldn't even belittle a small child, because the children hear their ruthlessness and indifference to human life, were now carved into her mind. It was as if when the whip came down on her just now, he didn't have any hesitation to kill. Maybe even if there wasn't any conflict between them, he could still kill her easily without batting an eye. Since that's the case, they shouldn't blame her for counterattacking from now on. Young lady. Are you okay? Yi Xiaolang rushed over, his eyes filled with worry. He felt that the little miss was very pitiful. She was so young how could so many people bully her? Im Fin Yi Mu glanced at Mo Linyuan. What about you? Are you okay? Mo Linyuan shook his head, his eyes abnormally sinister. Chapter, 49 I also didn't expect Yi Tian to have an internal qi expert by his side. However, that person seems to be only employed temporarily and not an official servant of Yi Tian's, because I saw him previously protecting Wen Ru. He further elaborated, Wen Ru was very polite to him, holding respect for him as if he was superior in status. But I never thought that after she was locked down, she would order him to protect Yi Tian. As Mo Linyuan listened to Yi Mu's words, a glint of light flashed across his eyes. In other words, Wen Ru at this moment didn't have an expert guarding her side. Yi Mu didn't think too much about Mo Linyuan's calculating face and told Xiao Lang to call the physician once more, and to chase everyone in the room out. Mo Linyuan then carefully rolled up her sleeves and subconsciously held his breath. It's alright Yi Mu's entire body felt very uncomfortable, but she was still comforting him, Yi Tian's attack only scratched me. Seeing Mo Linyuan's darkening face, she hurriedly said, I dodged quickly. But he didn't really hurt me. Ah but the old wound on my arm seems to have split open. Sure enough, after rolling up her sleeves, Yi Mu made a hiss sound. Her meaty face instantly turned even paler. After that, blood started to seep out from where the flesh had opened again. What's with this bad luck? Why is she always hurt these days? Mo Linyuan's pupils constricted. The blood-red area before his eyes was a striking, horrifying contrast against the white and tender skin before him. It glared at him. Even if this place was healed, it would still leave scars. And this scar was caused by him, how could he remain indifferent? He lowered his head to apply medicine to Yimu, but his body was surging with boundless hostility. It was like a black hole, gloomy and dark, filled with the elements of instability. Even Yimu didn't understand the cause of his bloodlust, he was just a child, so what was there to be so mad of? She retracted her hand, Im really fine just do whatever you want. Im still a child, he'll grow up quickly heal quickly. But this time, Mo Linyuan ignored her and firmly grabbed her hand. When Yimu saw that Mo Linyuan didn't say anything, she could only stare at her wound in embarrassment. His she whimpered uncontrollably. Damn, it was really painful. The place that was originally closed, split open once again and became a bloody mess. It hurt so much that she didn't want it anymore. But when she saw the wound Yi Mu's eyes suddenly lit up. She reached out her hand to hold Mo Linyuan's hand. What is it? Mo Linyuan raised his head to look at her, only to see Yi Mu's pair of eyes brightening with a mischievous smile. All right, all right. Let's get ready. I'm going to act. Yi Li was in the palace handling matters when he heard the news from his trusted aides. Immediately, the space between his eyebrows tightened. What? You said Muir's hand was crippled by little Tian, 
and he even almost disfigured that little slave called Aji. How ludicrous, this evil creature! Because he was afraid that his plan would be ruined by Yi Tian, instantly, Yi Li's heart burned with anxiety. He was unable to continue with the task at hand. He hastily withdrew from the palace and rushed back to the general's manor. Young miss, are you sure? Yi Shaolang asked with some unease. At this moment, Yi Mu's arm had already been wrapped. Upon hearing this, she didn't even raise her head as she spoke. Don't worry, Yi Li will return. With her current role regarding Yi Li's plans, it was impossible for him to ignore her. Even if he did, he would especially not allow Mo Lin Yuan, who had an important task, to be disfigured. Furthermore, her injuries were all from that brother of hers. She purposely bandaged them in the room so that the doctor would not be able to see the extent of the situation and believe that her injuries were not serious. Sure enough, after Yi Mu said this, he heard Xiao Qiu hastily run in to announce something. Miss, the general is here. Hearing this, Yi Mu immediately laid down. Even though the wound on her arm was wrapped well, the smell of blood still seeped out. It was impossible to deceive others. Chapter 50 Muir. Yi Li quickly walked in inside, but the moment he entered, his eyes swept around in every direction but where the bed was as if he was looking for someone else. With a small, bitter smile, Yi Mu interrupted, Is father looking for Aji? He was frightened so I let him rest. Father can be at ease for the time being Aji has not been disfigured. Yi Mu laid on the bed as she spoke in a muffled voice. Her scratchy, pitiful voice caused Yi Li's face to uncontrollably heat up, making him feel an unprecedented sense of distress. Nonsense, I only returned when I heard that you were injured. How did you get hurt? As he spoke, he sat by Yi Mu's side and tentatively placed his large hand on Yi Mu's head. When he approached, Yi Mu immediately felt the pressure emanating from his internal qi. However, she didn't reveal anything. She only raised her head, revealing a pair of swollen, red eyes that were like a rabbit's. That look of grievance didn't need to be pointed out, for anyone at a glance would surely understand. Father tell me, will I die? When Yi Mu said this, he truly felt sorrowful. She hadn't been inside this novel for long, but she fully understood how difficult it was to live in this world. She had become smaller her heart had become smaller, weaker and she was sometimes afraid that if she died here, she wouldn't be able to go back. How could that happen? Yi Li was caught off guard with her pessimistic words. It seemed that this child had truly received a great shock. But this could only be expected. This little girl had been threatened by people time and time again. Those schemers really didn't place him in their eyes. Yi Li lowered her his head, as the young girl continued to speak, her voice sounding so miserable. Even though my father loves me dearly, he can still do whatever he wants to me. That's why I'm asking father now, will I die? She should have dressed up like a porcelain doll, quietly waiting for her marriage. But now, she was like a dying animal, unspeakably pitiful. At that moment, Yi Li felt his heart tighten. Indescribable anger and frustration caused him to frown a fierce light flashed suddenly through his eyes. After a long time, he suddenly spoke resolutely. Muir, you recuperate first. It'll be back soon. As he spoke, his bear-like, tall body stood up and left in large strides. Yi Mu looked at his back in astonishment. For some reason, she felt that Yi Li's eyes held some fondness for her. Her last thoughts as she watched him disappear out the door were, even a man like Yi Li feels heartache. When Yi Tian was called out, he realized that something was wrong. However, his heart filled with hatred only clouded his thinking. Why? He could only frustratedly demand. He was the legitimate son. The only one. Why did his father value a daughter so much who was merely born from a cheap concubine? And now he was also going to be punished for that lowly girl. Carrying such resentment, Yi Tian was still somewhat indignant when he walked in front of Yi Li. Yi Li sat in front of the desk and looked at him with a cold smile. Kneel. He ordered. Although Yi Tian was unwilling, he still kneeled down. After he knelt down, Yi Li waved his hand and a person walked out from the shadows. 
He held a whip in his hand and was facing Yi Tian's back. Execute the punishment. Yi Li didn't say anything else, directly proceeding to use the family's law for punishments. When Yi Tian heard Yi Li wanted to reprimand him by the whip, he immediately struggled. Father. Why would you let him hit me? He was not convinced his father could be so callous he was clearly injured, could his father not see it? Yi Li could naturally see the wound on Yi Tian's shoulder. This was because the person who had reported it earlier said that Yi Mu had used a jade ornament to injure Yi Tian when she fought back. But how old was Yi Mu? How much strength could she have? Thus, he didn't have the slightest pity for Yi Tian's injury. He only felt annoyed that Yi Tian was making a big fuss out of nothing. Moreover, when he thought about the deep wound on Yi Mu's hand and how she was left-handed, he feared that she wouldn't be able to use her dominant hand anymore. Thus, he hated Yi Tian's tactless actions even more. Chapter, 51 How much strength did this brat use to injure a small child like her? Why? Yi Li sneered. Relying on the fact that you injured your younger sister, and, as her older brother, you don't know how to be courteous you should not have hit her. He said decisively. But she hurt me too. Unable to accept his father's words, Yi Tian stood up while holding onto his shoulder fearfully. His eyes were turning red from all the misgivings he felt. She is only a peasant, a lowly bastard born from a servant. What right do you have to punish me for her? Why? Yi Li followed his words and enunciated each word clearly, in answer to everything you have said, I'm the one in charge of this family. His rough facial features slowly relaxed, but his eyes were gloomy like a wolf's, also secretly ridiculing him, if I want to do this, I can do so. You will be punished. If you have any complaints, they'll punish you until you obey. After saying that, he waved his hand, and someone executed the punishment upon Yi Tian. Ten lashes to set an example. No. Yi Tian screamed, Father. You can't do this to me. Yi Tian continued to struggle on the ground, but it was all in vain because Yi Li had already stood up and left without even giving him a glance. The pain of the whip striking his flesh directly went towards his soul. The humiliation and anger that filled Yi Tian's heart turned into an endless loathing. Yi Mu Yi Mu. We are irreconcilable. His anguished screams of bitterness and pain filled the air, making those in the vicinity who could hear unable to help but shudder. Yi Mu sneezed a little and rubbed her nose, then said to Mo Linyuan, who was wiping her face, Just leave these to my maidservant. And before you go to sleep, you should read more of the Supreme Heart Sutra finish it as soon as possible. She could not be blamed for being so apprehensive. Today, she had completely offended Wen Ru and her son, and there would certainly be no end to their conflict. Therefore, it was better for her to send Imo Lin Yuan away as soon as possible for him to avoid getting into trouble with her. Imo Lin Yuan paused for a moment before he whispered, I've already memorized it. Finished memorizing it? What? That fast? Yi Mu's eyes widened in surprise and awe. She then quickly put on a smile and said, Good. That's a good thing. I'll arrange for you to leave this place immediately. After Mo Lin Yuan heard this, it was as if he became more silent. Then, he looked at her and suddenly said, What if I don't want to leave? Yi Mu was stunned. At her unmoving figure, Mo Lin Yuan resumed to wipe her face with a wet handkerchief only then did she react. Wh why don't you want to leave? She stuttered, completely at a loss. After saying that and without waiting for Mo Lin Yuan's reply, she frowned and said impatiently, don't you want to take back everything that you used to own? Don't you want to avenge your imperial father or mother or something she mumbled, her words trailing towards the very end when she realized she was speaking too much. However, Mo Lin Yuan was unperturbed. Young lady, he suddenly called out. Yes. Yi Mu answered subconsciously. Then, she saw Mo Lin Yuan squatting in front of her. After wringing the handkerchief clean, he continued to wipe her hands. He held her fingers in his palm. They were small, tender and white but who could have imagined it? That she would be able to cut off a piece of this flesh without batting an eye. Mo Linyuan carefully wiped her fingers. 
His voice was very soft and gentle, the reason I don't want to leave is very simple. If I leave, who will change the medicine for you? If I left, who would be with you? Who is going to stay by your side? He stated this as if he was talking to an irritated child. You're still so young and you've always left yourself scarred. My heart can't really be at ease if I'm not with you. When Yi Mu heard the youth speak in a calm and elegant voice, she suddenly felt a warm feeling blossom in her heart. Was he treating her like his little sister? The feeling of being meticulously taken care of felt really good. Chapter, 52 Her mouth split into a smile, and her round eyes sparkled under the dim light of a candle, and it clearly reflected someone's frantic, puzzled gaze. Haven't you noticed that I'm very powerful? So, there's no need to worry about me I will definitely take good care of myself. Moreover, I will undoubtedly look for you in the future. Yi Mu assured with a broad grin. Mo Linyuan paused, the fingers wiping the blood off her face going still. Then, he raised his phoenix eyes slightly and said, Yes you are very powerful. Sometimes, he felt she was above his league that it involuntarily made him feel embarrassed. Before he met her, he felt that he was already very mature among his age group the one who lead people. But upon meeting her, he unexpectedly became the one who was taken care of. This made him want to become stronger, better, for her. He was eager to achieve what he had always wanted, but there was no immense power that did not come from slow accumulation and self-preservation. However, the harder he worked, the more pressure he felt, and consequently, the more restless he became. This caused him to become even more taciturn, turning to silence for tranquility, while his personality quietly changed a bit. However, at this moment, neither of them realized this change unfurling. That's why I have to work even harder Mo Linyuan said softly. Yi Mu thought that he meant he would work even harder, so she raised her chin and said, rest assured. You will definitely become renowned in the future. What about you? Mo Linyuan pinched her fingers through the sheets. With a smile, his phoenix eyes teasing, he asked, you said that you would definitely come and find me in the future. Why is that? Yi Mu lay on the bed, unable to help but hold her breath in front of his hypnotic eyes. After a long time, she finally said in a serious tone, because because I feel that you will be a person not to be taken lightly in the future. I'd definitely want to hold to your thighs. Hold on to my thighs. Mo Linyuan raised his eyebrows. He kept having the feeling that this word matched her clingy, lovable appearance. What an interesting way of thinking. He thought. Yi Mu nodded, yes. Only you can get what others can't obtain, and do what others can't do, so I must keep up with you. Silent doubts filled Mo Linyuan's head, are you so sure I'm going to be strong? But with a slight shake of his head, he brushed them off. His mood was incomparably joyful, there was no need to dampen it with overthinking. This kind of elated feeling actually made him reach out to pinch Yi Mu's cheeks repeatedly without shame. His voice, although low, was exceptionally clear in the silent night the words also holding an affectionate tone. Since you believe I will be strong in the future, how can I just let you down now? Yes, he shouldn't have to wait any longer it would protect her now. Unfortunately, Yi Mu didn't catch the meaning behind his words and only thought that it was spurred out of self-motivation. It was only a few days later when her body was a little better that she was finally able to get out of bed. She immediately prepared for M.O. Linyuan's departure. At this time, she couldn't help but feel anxious. Yi Tian, who had always held a grudge against her, had been locked up. However, Wen Ru, on the other hand, had been released. She had heard that it was Wen Ru's influential family that had pressured her father into releasing her. It was truly annoying. Meanwhile, some place where Yi Mu was unaware of, Mo Linyuan had increasingly become busier with his own matters. Late in the evening, he appeared in Yi Li's study. Looking at the note Mo Linyuan had handed him, Yi Li slightly raised his brows. Boy, you finally admit that you can read? In fact, Yi Li had already suspected he was literate a long time ago. If Mo Linyuan couldn't read, then how was he supposed to tell him at the banquet that he had something to show him and then threatening him with the imperial jade seal? Mo Linyuan, at the face with Yi Li's intense glare, 
knew in his heart that Yi Li would not directly kill him at this moment, so he admitted it on his own accord. Yi Li swept a glance at the beautiful penmanship on the slip of paper and said in a deep voice, Why do you propose that outsiders should be silent about the affair with the drug? Is it because you're afraid of death? M.O. Linyuan stood in front of his desk. He wore a simple, clean, green robe, and even though it was made from cheap material, it was enough to make him look like a respectable man. Listening to Yi Li's words, he also wrote a few words in response to this. I'm not afraid of death. But at the same time, I'm afraid of death for I haven't completed my mission. Chapter, 53 This kind of indomitable spirit and determination caused even Yi Li, who had a stone heart, to be slightly moved. Everyone knew what consequences were to befall what a handsome young man were to go to the filthy residence of that official Lu. Not to mention that he had suffered a narrow escape from death from the same man before. He would have to endure the humiliation that ordinary people could not endure. However, this little slave was not afraid at all and still acted very eager to offer himself to the misfortune. Why? Yi Li asked, a little confused for his real motivation. He tapped the table with his fingers and said, This mission is likely very impossible for you to complete. Why do you still though you really have to put in all your efforts, to go as far to belittling your life, for this? If official Lu was easy to fool, he wouldn't have been at the bottleneck, unable to obtain the Imperial Guard's blueprint in a short period of time. Thus, Yi Li felt, for this meager slave, the chances of him succeeding were very small. Upon hearing his question, M.O. Linyuan relaxed his tense body. He thought of something and the corners of his lips curled up. His almond-shaped eyes drooped as he wrote a few words on the paper. If he didn't, she would die. If she died, he wouldn't be able to return to her side. Yi Li stared at these few words in silence for a long time. He suddenly felt that the death of such a loyal child was absolutely his loss. Especially this child, not only was he bold and meticulous, but he was also quite shrewd. With these efforts plainly displayed to him, he felt he should also extend a helping hand. Yi Li pondered for a moment before loudly saying, All right. I'll give you anything you need. You just need to remember your determination to complete your mission and return alive. M.O. Linyuan sharply raised his head, looking at him fixedly before giving a succinct bow. On the other side, Yi Mu was still worried about M.O. Linyuan. She knew that there were still some dedicated subordinates of him in the Yu country, but he couldn't leave the general's estate to find them. Moreover, those people wouldn't find him after being in captive for a long time. Especially since the general's residence was even stricter than the imperial palace of the Yu country. Her plan was to give M.O. Linyuan vast amount of money to propel the escape plan, but in reality, she held no penny, so what could she do? Ai Mu, who always had money to spend and once had no sense of crisis for money, felt a bit listless now. She held on to the pen and felt a headache coming on. Young lady. Yi Xiaolang came in with a delicious snack. Looking at the various medicines littered around and scattered clothes on Yi Mu's bed, he found it all somewhat strange. Young lady, what are you doing? Yi Mu frowned. Aji is going far away. I'm going to prepare something for his departure. Aji is leaving. Yi Xiaolang was stunned, young lady, you. Don't you want him by your side anymore? Yi Mu sighed, knowing short, this is how the ways of the world change. You shouldn't worry if you practice martial arts well, you will meet him again in the future. Upon hearing this, Yi Xiaolang's outlook on life received another serious blow. Why is it always Aji who gets hurt? No. I have to go find him. After declaring so, Yi Xiaolang put down the plate with a solemn expression and ran away from the room. Yi Mu smiled and let him go. She actually didn't want Yi Xiaolang to bear too much of a burden at such a young age. However, things often went against one's wishes. After Yi Xiaolang ran out, he turned towards the corner and was suddenly pulled by someone. Just as he was about to scream out in alarm, his mouth was blocked. However, he could keenly smell the fragrance of the medicine from his opponent's body. This familiar scent only came from one person he knew. Aji? He perplexedly asked, his voice still holding a hint of his disbelief from his earlier conversation with Yi Mu. 
M.O. Linyuan released him carefully. The moment Yi Shaolang turned around, he gave him an indecipherable look. Spending time with him for so long, Yi Shaolang naturally was able to understand him easily at a glance. Aji, you really are leaving. His green pupils on his dark face stared at him soberly. M.O. Linyuan nodded and then quietly brought him somewhere. Yi Shaolang wasn't able to understand his motives but nonetheless followed him. Finally, they reached a garden situated very close to the main courtyard. This place where are we? As soon as Yi Shaolang spoke, M.O. Linyuan covered his mouth. The duo hid behind the fake stone mountain in the garden. With his free hand, M.O. Linyuan inconspicuously pointed to a direction. Sighting while casually drinking tea in the pavilion, it was the first wife, Wen Ru, who had just been released from confinement. Chapter 54 There were six guards standing outside the pavilion and inside it were eight maids attending to Wen Ru it was tightly secured. M.O. Linyuan glanced at Xiaolang and used his finger to write something down on the ground. Your ears are sharp. Listen to what she is saying, it said. This was one of the reasons why M.O. Linyuan wanted to bring Yi Xiaolang along. It was due to the fact that Yi Xiaolang had grown up within the wilderness together with wolves that his five senses were much sharper than that of an ordinary person's. Seeing how serious M.O. Linyuan was with this request, Yi Xiaolang firmly nodded and closed his eyes to listen, concentrating on the tidbits of voices he was able to catch. Within the pavilion, Wen Ru sat opposite a man. She personally poured a cup of tea for him. Official you, it's good that you're here otherwise, how would have I have continued living? When Wen Ru said this, her countenance was filled with a hint of spring, teasingly flashing the inside of her wrist as she dipped the teapot. Anyone with a discerning eye would be able to tell what impure things they had just done, but it was a pity that she was heavily guarded. So even if Mo Linyuan were able to take a hint, he wouldn't have the opportunity to get evidence for her actions. Hearing this, the man smiled and lowered his voice, it's fine, I will always be with madam from now on. Madam this official took a lot of effort to undertake the task of protecting you, madam. In the future, you must reward me well. The two of them exchanged amorous glances, and the servants around saw it, but they did not dare say a single word. After all, the madam was very tactful with her plans. Although her words were ambiguous and suggestive, no one dared to overstep their boundaries. M.O. Linyuan naturally knew who this man was. His name was Zhao Yu, someone when Rus family had recently sent over to protect her. As for the reason why they sent another person over, it was because she had been previously strict with her son's protection and sent the other person to guard him. However, it was hard to find an expert in internal martial arts. Although this man's skills were decent, he was hundreds, thousands of miles inferior to that of Yen Su. Moreover, these types of capable men couldn't just be found anywhere, therefore she had to settle with this. Don't worry. Wen Ru replied with a smile. But then, she thought of something and her eyes turned exceptionally icy and ruthless. She lowered her voice and timidly asked. Oh that's right, I remember has father replied yet? That little girl, Yi Mu, caused Tianer to be seriously injured. I will definitely not let her off. When Zhao Yu heard this, he smiled and proudly waved an item procured from his sleeves, feel rest assured madam, this afternoon, the food has arrived. This stuff is remarkably as long as that little girl eats this for a month, she will die without a sound. No one will be able to discover anything. Repulsive. You still refuse to give it to me when Ru glared at him and tried to snatch it away, but Zhao Yu sneakily grab a hold of her hand. The servant girl beside her immediately coughed and when Ru hastily retracted her hand, glowering at Zhao Yu. Madam, don't be in such a hurry. Zhao Yu looked at her with a perverted smile and said, As long as I'm here, madam does not need to move a finger. I will definitely make that little girl die an atrocious death without a proper burial place. The man smiled viciously, and it was only then that when Russ Hart was placated. After this discussion, the duo changed the topic and began to talk about other matters. Meanwhile, when Yi Xiaolang on the other side heard that this woman was trying to harm Yi Mu again, his anger immediately flared up. This woman is too evil. She wants to poison the little miss this time. 
Let's go and report her to the general right now. Mo Linyuan signaled for him to stay calm. The two silently retreated from the scene, leaving no evidence of their spying. But before he left, Mo Linyuan's lips suddenly rose, his eyes filled with a cold light. Giving one last look at the pavilion, he scoffed. You want to hurt her? Over my dead body. Chapter, 55 Damn it! This is too barbaric. It's too much. Finally reaching a deserted place, Yi Shaolang could not help but blurt out curses, that woman actually plans to poison the young lady. He then turned to his quiet partner beside him, Aji, we have to find a way to stop her. After Yi Shaolang had told Mo Lin Yuan about the conversation between Wen Ru and Zhao Yu, someone as innocent as him still did not have the slightest inkling of the hidden scheme behind Zhao Yu and Wen Ru's words. He was only angry over the poison. It was too easy for Wen Ru to do anything to Yi Mu. As long as she could do it flawlessly, no one would be able to hold anything against her. Thus, if he wanted to take her down, he needed proof. Mo Linyuan wrote a few words Yi Xilang's palm. It's inevitable that Wen Ru will do evil again. Don't be angry. When Yi Xiaolang saw this, his eyes widened. You knew from the beginning that she was going to do something bad. Then why didn't you remind the young lady to be on her guard? He shook Missouri Linyuan's hand, hasty to depart, why did you bring me here? He really felt that Aji was acting inappropriately he felt that he felt Thady if he already knew about such an important matter, he should have said it earlier. Mo Linyuan shook his head but remembered that he was about to depart from this place. By Yi Mu's side, there was only the Yi Shaolang left to accompany her. He could not help but write. I have brought you here to tell you that the heart is evil. When you are with the young lady, besides protecting her, you must also do something to kill the danger in the cradle. Yi Shaolang scratched his head in confusion. What do you mean by killing the danger in the cradle? Mo Linyuan patted him on the shoulder and smiled faintly. He ambiguously wrote, you'll know in a few days. Yi Shaolang looked at the palm of his hand and asked somewhat sorrowfully, so, the reason why you showed these to me is because you're leaving and you want me to protect the young lady better in the future. His eyes were a little red, and he grabbed Mo Linyuan's sleeve, Aji, where are you going? What is it? Are you running from danger? Mo Linyuan looked at the youth before him. Despite being the same size as him, Shaolang had always wanted to take care of him. At this genuine sentiment, he felt his heart warm up. He pursed his lips and smiled, writing something on his palm. He'll be back, but don't tell her yet. A few days passed by in a blur until the faded day of the departure was almost looming. Evening had just come, Yi Mu was looking at Imo Linyuan, who had returned very late. Recently, Yu and Shaolang always leave early and come back home late. What have you been doing? She asked, feeling something was amiss. Seeing that there was no one in the room, Mo Linyuan explained in a low voice, During these few days, Yi Li has been continuously inviting me to the banquet. Since the servants are insufficient, Shaolang and I will go help him. He will chop firewood and I will boil water. Yi Mu simply nodded. She thought it was too bad because of her injuries that she had been lax with their lessons. Fortunately, these two children were independent and were actually studying every day, even without her guidance. Yi Mu took out the package she had prepared days before and passed it to him. Here you go. I've got everything ready. Now tell me your escape plan. She stretched out her short hand and took out a large map from behind her, laying it on the bed. Her delicate little finger pointed in a direction and she said, This is the general's estate where we are now. This it's the residence of official Lu. She gestured towards the official road with her finger, I asked what events were to happen on the day I send you to official Liu's residence. It just so happens that it's the day that high official takes a concubine. That day, there will definitely be a lot of people on the main road. At that time, as long as you. Just as she was about to explain her meticulous plans, Mo Linyuan suddenly interrupted her. You don't have to do that. I actually have some former subordinates from the Zhao country who are still actively looking for me everywhere. As long as I leave the general's estate, I can contact them so you don't need to worry about me. 
He straightened his back and seriously said, since you asked me to leave, I will definitely ensure that it'll be safe and sound. Chapter, 56 Yi Mu rubbed the back of her neck wearily. Why was Imo Linyuan flabbergasted at the notion of her wanting him to leave for his safety? It's not as if she was trying to chase him away, rather, this was the best course of action for both of them at this time. Even so, even so still need to have a detailed plan so we can be prepared in case something unforeseen happens. Yi Mu insisted on this opinion. She thought, what if he didn't contact them in time? Even worse, if he were to really enter official Liu's residence, can I still ensure his safety? While she was plagued with such thoughts, Mo Linyuan merely answered, it's alright. There's no need for a plan. He placed both of his hands on Yi Mu's shoulders, staring straight into her eyes. I have everything under my control, so you don't have to worry. What an absurd answer. Yi Mu thought. But she knew that he wouldn't risk his life so easily. Therefore, left with no other choice, she lowered her head and said dejectedly, All right, then be careful in case something happens. Actually, no vigilant about everything. Young lady. Ha. Huh. Mo Linyuan stretched out his hand and lifted up her fair and tender chin. Under the candlelight, her round eyes shone in bewilderment and concern as she looked at him. If I stay away for too long, will you forget about me? When he asked this question, his almond-shaped eyes still held their mirth, but there was a trace of loneliness in the depths of his eyes. In the end, he was still so young that he couldn't bear to part with her and Xiaolang, Yi Mu immediately believed. When she saw this, she slapped his shoulder with her little hand in a very assuring manner. She solemnly told him. Rest assured. Even till the day I die, I will never forget you. Far from his gloomy thoughts, Mo Linyuan was struck with surprise at this ridiculous revelation. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Was he truly that of an impressive person? But never mind that as long as she won't forget him, it's fine with him. Mo Linyuan stared at her fixedly for a while before he suddenly pinched Yi Mu's cheeks. Very well, young lady. You must remember everything you said just now. Yi Mu's face was completely stretched apart by his fingers. She was so angry that her eyes were widened. Hey, 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 hey. You're committing a crime against your superiors. You why aren't you letting go? She tried wriggling out from his grip. Only then did Mo Linyuan chuckle, peeling away the somberness of their conversation. He then lovingly rubbed her face again and again. I should at least give you a deeper impression. If she forgets him, he would be very, very angry. For the past few days, the mansion had not been very peaceful. Since the first wife was ill, it was difficult for gossip mongers from her area to scurry around. Moreover, many doctors had been invited over, so they temporarily didn't have time to cause trouble for Yi Mu. The next morning, Yi Mu and Yi Li sent Mo Linyuan off together. Other than them, no one else knew where Mo Linyuan was going to be sent to. Yi Mu's heart also felt quite miserable. She had been together with him for more than two months now and had grown a liking for his steadfast personality. But now he was about to leave. Despite being ill, Wen Ru was also had to go out with them. Today was the day that the Minister of Revenue would get married. Therefore, as the wife of the general, it was obligatory to pay the minister a visit together with Yi Li. However, Wen Ru's expression was a bit unsightly. Yi Mu shot her a glance before looking at Mo Linyuan. He was wearing a white silk robe and stood there with such a bright expression on his face. Chapter, 57 The general would leave through the back door in the palanquintus was Mo Linyuan's opportunity to escape. Yi Mu reminded him once more about this. After you leave, go straight towards the Mo country don't take detours. And when you get back to your country, you must study hard and not slack off, especially with regards to the Supreme Heart Sutra. Yi Mu was currently wearing a peach-colored skirt, her hair tied into a double bun. Her height was short, and her flesh was white and tender she looked just like a kid from a New Year's painting. At this moment, she was observing the surroundings while sternly warning Mo Linyuan like a little old woman. Her nagging attitude made Mo Linyuan, who was originally a little depressed, suddenly life the corners of his mouth in a slight smile. 
he held back didn't want to do anything in front of all these people. Because truthfully, he really wanted to touch the buns on her head. Towards the other side, the steward said that the general was about to leave. This means that Emo Linyuan has to leave as well. Yi Mu panicked. She took advantage of the moment while no one was looking and stuffed a small pouch into Emo Linyuan's hands. Take this. Don't worry, in less than two years, I will definitely come and find you. Emo Linyuan could tell with a pinch that it was shaped akin to a jewelry. He really didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Does the girl want to give him her entire fortune? Why is this girl so stupid? He naturally couldn't receive it, so with a flip of his hand, he pushed the item back. Without waiting for Yi Mu to say anything, he suddenly turned around and walked towards where Yi Li was. Yi Mu was stunned by his actions. She was immediately alarmed when she discovered that Mo Lin Yuan was walking towards Yi Li. Wait, what are you trying to do? She thought frantically. Yi Li was preparing to board the carriage, but Mo Lin Yuan's actions were too obvious, causing everyone to look over, including the preoccupied Yi Li. When Yi Li was halfway into the car, he withdrew his leg and looked at Yi Mu in bewilderment. Yi Mu, on the other hand, jumped in fright. She quickly followed Mo Lin Yuan. What's the matter? Under the clear sky, Yi Li was wearing a dark brocade robe as he stared at Mo Lin Yuan in displeasure. Inside the carriage, Wen Ru, who was the first to board, lifted the curtain and looked at Mo Lin Yuan with an unfriendly gaze. She knew this kid he was the one that had always been by Yi Mu's side. Mo Lin Yuan swept a fleeting glance at Wen Ru before his gaze landed on Zhao Ye's figure inside the carriage. As expected, he was here. After all Wen Ru was about to go outside the residence. As someone in charge of protecting her, how could he not follow? Mo Lin Yuan lowered his head and walked forward step by step. The steward wanted to stop him, but he was held back by Yi Li, allowing Mo Lin Yuan to come closer. Afterwards, Mo Lin Yuan blatantly handed a piece of paper with a written message unbeknownst to onlookers to Yi Li. Yi Li frowned and curiously received it. He opened the folded parchment and took a look. His attitude was originally laid back, but the more he looked at the paper in his hands, the more befuddled he became. His thick eyebrows were frowning, and the veins on his forehead were bulging, as if there was a thunderstorm brewing inside it. As Yi Mu walked over, she nervously tugged at Mo Lin Yuan's clothes, keeping her voice extremely low. What's the matter with you? I told him you were illiterate. Aren't you exposing yourself? Mo Lin Yuan turned his body and glanced at her. As a mute, he didn't speak but only used his eyes to comfort her. But at this time, how could Yi Mu be appeased by him? They were about to send him off, but at the critical moment, he suddenly made such a ruckus. Wasn't this creating a huge problem? Damn it! Just when Yi Mu was feeling uneasy, Yi Li suddenly let out a furious roar and crushed the slip of paper into a ball. Everyone's heart skipped a beat and they all lowered their heads in fear. Chapter 58 Yi Li's vicious gaze first landed on Mo Lin Yuan's body, then it slowly shifted to Yi Mu. Yi Mu's entire body tensed up, and she became vigilant. When Yi Li saw Yi Mu's anxious face, he knew that it wasn't her idea. Only then did he shift his gaze away that was brimming with killing intent. Darling, what's the matter with you? Wen Ru was frightened by Yi Li's killing intent and asked with some unease. However, Yi Li fiercely glared at her the moment he heard her voice. He scared her so much that she didn't dare to speak again. He raised his fist and asked Mo Lin Yuan, this general is asking you. Everything you have written down is accurate. As he asked this question, he approached Mo Lin Yuan. The servants around him quickly avoided him like cicadas in flight, allowing him to arrive in front of Mo Lin Yuan in just a few steps. The courtyard, which had originally been filled with the thrills of birds and fragrant flowers, was suddenly filled with danger. Even Yi Mu felt a little uneasy. This was because she did not know what was written on that slip of paper. What did he do behind her back? Mo Lin Yuan raised his chin to look at him and slowly nodded his head. It was all true, he meant to say. Yi Mu finally realized that something was amiss. 
Why didn't Yili feel the slightest bit of anger towards her for lying about Imbo Linyuan unable to read? How much of the fiasco currently happening did she did not know? This question and answer session was something that everyone didn't understand, but the only thing they knew clearly was that, the moment Yi Li saw Mo Linyuan nod his head, his face turned gloomy. His brows relaxed, but the veins on his hands bulged. This was a characteristic that everyone familiar with Yi Li knew he was angry. But even more than that, it was an insurmountable rage. After a long time, when perhaps it was just for an instant, Yi Li suddenly ordered, Men, take this person's clothes off. Now. The person that he pointed at was stunned for a moment, then instantly fell back in panic. That person was none other than Zhao Yu. Me. General. Aren't you ordering the capture for an innocent person? When Wen Ru heard this order, she felt a bad premonition. She vaguely guessed what was written on the paper, but she forced herself to remain calm and sat in the carriage without moving an inch. No, don't worry, don't be in a hurry. Even if that brat discovered something, he had no proof. She thought, frantically. After all, the security around her was very tight. Not everyone could sneak in to investigate and get evidence for her misdeeds. Yi Li ignored Zhao Ye's rebuttal and resistance and directly ordered his men to strip off his clothes. Yi Mu didn't understand what was going on and tiptoed to look over. But at this moment, Mo Linyuan retreated behind her back and used his hand to cover her eyes. She inwardly cursed, damn it. It was fine that he hid things from her, but he was really adamant on refusing to show her what he had done. The more Yi Mu thought about it, the angrier she got. She used her uninjured right hand to rip off his hand covering her sight. If he didn't willingly show it to her, she would force him. However, after Mo Linyuan's left hand was taken off by her, he immediately used his right hand to block her eyes once more. His attitude was very resolute, refusing to let her see. This made Yi Mu even furious. What had he done to that man? Yi Mu lowered her voice and asked heatedly, Why won't you let me see? What are you hiding from me? Mo Linyuan thought about it for a moment before whispering into her ear. You want to see it? I have one too if you want to look, just look at me. Yi Mu spat out a mouthful of blood. She wanted to see what he had done to that person, all right? She wanted to know why Yi Li would strip that person's clothes. Why does he have to look at it lewdly? Chapter, 59 Just as Yi Mu wanted to stomp her feet, Mo Linyuan hesitated for a moment before lowering his head to whisper back into her ear, if you really want to watch, then there's no other choice. When I come back, they'll be even more beautiful than him. Yi Mu didn't know what expression to make when facing him she ultimately gave up resisting. Where did a child get the confidence to say that his body was beautiful? Wait. Come back. Mo Linyuan wanted to come back. Her head was immediately in panic at this. Without waiting for Yi Mu to speak, he heard Yi Li's cold and callous order. Wenda, light a flame and come over. Roam it near his body. The surrounding female servants had their heads buried, only when Ru was still. Hearing Yi Li's unusual command, her heart tightened and she frowned as she looked over. She saw that Zhao Yu had already been stripped naked, his naked body gripped behind the back, facing Yi Li. Wenda listened to the order and went over with a torch. However, he didn't find anything after hovering the torch around Zhao Ye's body. Yi Li frowned again and unhappily swept his gaze towards Mo Linyuan. He saw that Mo Linyuan's expression was stoic as usual. He thought for a moment before clenching his teeth and ordering, go closer. When De nodded and continued to bring the torch closer, the fear of being burnt by the flames making Zhao Yun panic. Could it be that this person was going to burn him to death? It scared him so much that he threw his head back and shouted. General. General, please spare me. I am a mercenary hired by the Prime Minister's residence, not a servant who had signed a death contract. You can't treat me like this. Can't. Yi Li snorted coldly and placed his hands behind his back. There's only one type of person who'd enter my general's estate, and that is someone who'd give his all to me. Before he could finish his sentence, his eyes suddenly were suddenly fixated somewhere else. 
Because under the burning of the flames, large swaths of red spots appeared on Zhao Ye's body. Zhao Yu also felt that something was wrong and lowered his head, looking even more terrified. Even though the flames had yet to reach him, his lower body still felt as if it was about to spontaneously combust. In addition, the red spots on his body were becoming increasingly red, as if they were burning. The red dots became darker and evident towards his lower body, especially his private parts. Looking at this, what could Yili not understand? On the carriage, when Ru seemed to have sensed something and touched her lower abdomen so it was actually like this? She was being plotted against. After Yili angrily opened his eyes, he suddenly became abnormally calm. The little slave clearly wrote on the note that he suspected the Madame Wen Ru to be in an affair with Zhao Yu, who was protecting her. To prove it, the M.O. Lin Yuan had drugged Wen Rus bath water, and that drug was from the same secret medicines given straight from his hands. When that little slave asked him for medicine, he had given him many things that he might be able to use for his espionage. Unexpectedly, that daring fellow would use something against his wife. Being the first to ever dare so. Among the medicines he had given, there was a tonic that was colorless, tasteless and easily attaches to the body. Originally, these tonics were used to arson corpses, but today they could be used even in water. It was as warm as a hot bath. And when one Rus body was soaked in the medicinal liquid diluted in the water, she wouldn't be able to feel anything from the outside, but only feel that the temperature of her lower body was high. This means that the medicinal liquid only takes effect after entering. She had always complained she had felt hot and humid, to the point that she couldn't bear it any longer and continuously asked him to look for a doctor to treat her. So that was the case. Yet, this man's lower body was also contaminated with the same medicinal liquid. Doesn't this pose a serious question? To think that there would come a day when he, who was so smart, would actually be cuckolded by his own wife. The angrier he was, the calmer he became. However, the surrounding people could feel the terrifying killing intent. Everyone's hearts were in their throats. At this time, Yi Li moved and walked step by step towards Xiao Yu. Chapter, 60 Now that the torch had been removed, Zhao Yu could see the lower half of his body. How could he not understand that he had been tricked? The scariest part was that he didn't even know who his opponent was and was caught just easily just like that. No, he could not sit still and wait for death. He had to explain. Therefore, without waiting for Yi Li to come closer, he rushed forward first and loudly rambled, General. General, this subordinate is innocent. I am really unaware of what happened. I only know I was wrongly accused. A and that someone set me up. While he was shouting this, Wen Ru was sitting on the carriage, her entire body apprehensive and stiff. She didn't dare to make the slightest sound or move an inch. She held her breath as she waited for Yi Li's reply. Seeing Yi Li silent, Zhao Yu was further thrown into disarray, General, it's true. Believe me. Besides, even if I have made a mistake, I am still not one of your people. You should hand me over to. But Zhao Yu wasn't able to finish his sentence. With the whooshing sound of a blade being unsheathed, Zhao Ye's head was sent flying by Yi Li's blade. Ah! Many female servants couldn't help but scream out in alarm and horror as they witnessed the head roll unceremoniously onto the ground. The sharp voices of fear made the hair on everyone's skin rise on end. He had killed someone. They all thought. And from the looks of it, his bloodlust was far from over. There was bound to be more bloodshed. What will he do next? When the blood splashed, Yi Mu was very close. Mo Lin Yuan had been the first to block the droplets that flew towards their direction. When Yi Mu smelled the scent of blood, her expression immediately changed. A dead man. After Yi Li had killed Zhao Yu, he paused for a moment, breathing deeply, before suddenly pointing the blood-stained blade in his hand at Mo Lin Yuan. You. Mo Lin Yuan turned his head from the side and looked. His handsome, young face was dyed red, making him seem somewhat sinister. However, his expression was still calm. It was as if everything that had happened didn't faze him one bit. This made Yi Li even angrier. This is what you want to see, right? Right? 
On the day he was about to be sent to official Liu's residence, this brat had clearly given him such a big gift on purpose. As expected, he should have killed this audacious slave long ago. When Yi Mu saw Yi Li look at Mo Linyuan with the promise of giving him trouble, she hurriedly wanted to move forward, but Mo Linyuan stopped her. His gaze slowly shifted from the corpse on the ground to the quiet carriage. Even through the curtain, Wen Ru could feel Mo Linyuan's probing gaze, causing her entire body to tremble. There's still one more. Mo Linyuan smiled and signaled to the carriage with his eyes. Zhao Yu. He wasn't the only person he wanted to see die. That was too simple. Yi Li clearly understood Mo Linyuan's gaze, and his bloodshot eyes slowly looked towards the carriage. That's right. He had almost forgotten the main culprit. If it wasn't for the fact that he didn't like his wife and hadn't touched her recently, he would have been part of this scandal as well. He just didn't expect that his wife who is famously known for her demure and gentle nature would actually be different in the inside. Yi Li laughed coldly as he raised his blade high up in the air. The moment he swung it down, it was accompanied by his inner force. In an instant, the carriage was torn into pieces. A shrill scream punctuated the air, making the horses raise their front hooves in panic. If it wasn't held back by the coachman, it might have run out in a frenzy. Yi Li's blade cut off the roof of the carriage, the splinters flying off every direction, revealing Wen Ru, who was hugging her head and screaming in an ear-piercing voice. At this moment, she could no longer maintain any of her former dignity and elegance. Chapter 61 When Ru sat on the ground, trembling like a quail, and her eyes were filled with dread. Bitch! Yi Li pointed the blade in his hand at her, his eyes filled with undisguised killing intent. What do you have to say for yourself? I I I I Wen Ru was scared out of her wits. Her lips were pale, without the slightest hint of blood. She scrambled down from the carriage and knelt at Yi Li's feet as she spoke while trembling. No it's not me that Zhao Yuthuan he really adores is the servant girl beside me. I have nothing to do with him. There really isn't anything between us. During this time, when Ru was still ignorant of Mo Linyuan's scheme against her, the medicine which had been poured in her bath, nor did she know how she had been tricked, so she subconsciously tried to stir up trouble, trying futilely to save her skin. But how could she fool Yi Li? Every time she bathed, she would need to use the mountain spring water on the beautiful Jade Mountain, ten miles away from the capital. That spring water was infused with the fragrance of flowers, and after being heated it would become even more aromatic and enchanting, so it was very easy to tell who would dare to use it. Not you. Yi Li sneered as blood dripped down from the blade in his hand, drop by drop staining the earth. Then, which servant do you think this man had been fornicating with? Thinking about Wen Ru's prestigious background, Yi Li really wanted to give her a chance to explain herself, to prove everything she said was true. When Wen Ru heard this, she thought there was an opportunity and pointed her shaking finger to her side, but whoever she pointed at, they would subconsciously avoid it. In the end, Wen Ru gritted her teeth and pointed to a girl wearing a long green skirt. It's you. Yi Li stared at her. The servant girl shook her head again and again, but when she met Wen Ru's warning gaze, her eyes filled with tears. She stuttered for a long while but didn't say a single word. Yi Li had no patience. With a wave of his hand, he immediately wanted to strip the girl out of her clothes. No, General. No. Madam, please save this servant. But when Ru was too preoccupied with her own matters, how could she even think of saving her? Seeing that the poor servant girl was about to be ripped apart on the spot, Yi Mu couldn't bear to continue watching and stepped forward, Father. She's not married yet. Shut up. Yi Li interrupted her in anger. If it wasn't for the people around her provoking him, how could today's matter have happened? But Yi Mu was still persistent. Father. You always reward and punish people justly. But how can you kill people for no reason? There's a stable over there, so it wouldn't be a big deal to ask a trusted mama to go over and check her body inside. She spoke so fast, so loudly that it was too late for Mo Linyuan to pull her. It wasn't that Yi Mu was trying to force herself, but that she couldn't bear to watch any longer. 
The innocent, servant girls here would surely die one by if this was to continue. But this girl wouldn't die if Yimu would reason out for her to be checked for a minute or two at the stable. She would do everything to placate the rampaging Yi Li. Yi Li was currently in a manic. After all, no man would be able to remain calm knowing that he had been cuckolded. He wanted to kill people in anger and frustration. He wanted to tear every person he was facing into two, alive. Including this milk baby in front of her. However, under Yi Mu's resolute gaze, he actually didn't do so. When he was stared at by her pair of dark, bright eyes, he could clearly see his overbearing figure reflected in those eyes. Her attitude was so resolute, refusing to dodge away from his wrath. Yi Li's chest heaved up and down. He flung his robe and roared at the butler beside him, take her to the stable and check. Ah! Yes, yes, yes. The butler quickly agreed, but in his heart, he held a higher opinion of Yi Mu. To be able to make the furious general change his mind, this little girl was not simple at all. What happened next was much faster. After the servant girl was dragged inside for a physical examination, the mama quickly came out to inform the housekeeper, who shook his head towards Yi Li. When Ru realized that her lie had been exposed just like that, she didn't even know where she went wrong. Before she could think of a way to save herself, her hair was lifted up by Yi Li. Chapter, 62 Slut Yi Li no longer had the slightest bit of patience towards Wen Ru, but his remaining rationality prevented him from killing her on the spot. He only grabbed her hair and flung her to the side while she screamed. Shut up! You are abolished from the position as the main wife Wen Ru. Forbidden from seeing anyone. He looked around the spectators in stern warning, this general will take care of her the moment he returns to the residence. No. Blood dripped from one Russ forehead. She didn't want to believe that she had been knocked down brusquely to the ground like a rag doll. She hurriedly threw herself down at Yi Li and hugged his leg. General. Darling husband. At least tell me what I did wrong. We've been married for so many years and yet you still won't believe me. What did she do wrong? When Ru could only throw her pride away and look like a mess in front of everyone. Yi Li lowered his head to look at Wen Ru. For so many years, she had never shed a tear before this, when she knew she was about to be disposed by him. Since that was the case. Yi Li said to the butler by his side, delay the departure and bring this woman to the stable. This general will personally inspect her body. With that, he walked towards the stable. Yes the butler hurried, clearing the interior. When Wen Ru heard this, she subconsciously touched her lower abdomen her heart sank to the bottom. She would definitely get the same reaction as Zhao Yu from the heat. What do I do, how can I escape this calamity? She could only fervently think. As for Yi Mu, she was not too sure about what to do, or as to what was happening. So she ignored Wen Ru and stood still on her spot. Yi Mu did not follow her father to go inside the stable, because Mo Linyuan had remained standing in the field serenely. As if he had already known what the outcome would be. But how? Yi Mu pulled Mo Linyuan under a tree as she coldly questioned, why? Her small, fair face was tense, but her expression was one of exhaustion. Why are you doing this? You had the opportunity to escape, but right now, Regardless of whether when Russ' fate is ended or not, Yi Li will not easily let you off anymore. After all, this matter was dug up by Mo Linyuan himself. If Yi Li wanted to pursue the matter, how could he do so when Mo Linyuan could easily escape from his grasp? I want. With no one around, Mo Linyuan could finally touch the flower bud on her head as he wished. The corner of his mouth curled up slightly. Yi Li is still waiting for me to do something for him. He won't kill me. He said resolutely. But you can't do that. Stop touching my head and be serious. Yi Mu could not help but raise her voice, her anger exploding in an instant. You know how much of a dangerous person he is. Why are you doing this? You are clearly playing with fire. The more she spoke, the angrier she got. Especially when she thought about the many ways Yi Li could punish him, her chest heaved up and down in uneasiness. 
I just wanted you to return safely to your homeland. I've lost track of time thinking of how to let you escape safely why can't you obedient? Seeing her angry, Mo Linyuan became stumped for words, his initial calm turning into restlessness. I just. You just won't listen. Yi Mu's small fist smashed onto his chest with force, and his large eyes stared fixedly at her. Her face became redder, her small eyes turning moist by the second. If you had escaped you would have been protected by now. You can do whatever you want to do. But you just brush off everything I do for you, treating me like an outsider. I was only worried for your safety and you are not the least bit worried for yours. I don't. Mo Linyuan anxiously pulled her up a little before pulling her into his embrace. Her hysterical demeanor had caused him to panic a little, I don't see you as a stranger I. You do. Yi Mu's accusatory voice came in a muffled voice. She rested her forehead on Mo Linyuan's chest but pinched the flesh on his waist with all her might. She was livid because of his secret plans but more so because she felt wronged. Her nose was becoming sore. Unable to think of anything rational anymore, Yi Mu finally blurted out, I just want you to be safe but you're being too naughty. Chapter, 63 Mo Linyuan's heart tensed up hearing her words. Amidst the distress and nervousness, a trace of sweetness was spreading inside his chest. He was silent for a while before speaking in a low voice. You were worried about me, so you hoped that I would leave quickly however, I was also worried about you. Yi Mu was stunned and raised her head to look at him, only to see that his almond-shaped eyes were lowered as he deeply looked at her. You did so much for me, yet you won't allow me to pay you back in the slightest. What kind of logic is that? He whispered, his hand resting lightly on her face, his eyes serious and determined. If I don't remove the threat around you, I will definitely not be able to leave in peace. You can blame me, scold me, hate me, but if I had the choice to do it again, I will still do it. After a while, he ended his words with, I just want to protect you. You can't refuse me that, young lady. It was the first time he had said so much. Yi Mu's eyes flashed, and her heart was inexplicably flustered and helpless. Her chest was also filled with a strange feeling. The youth in front of her was so thoughtful. To even think a young child as him would want to us his frail shoulders to shield her from the wind and the rain. He had wanted to do something for her so badly, but she. How could I blame him? When she thought about how he would become the greatest emperor in all history, and how he would be able to repay the kindness given to him with a hundredfold genuineness from his heart, it was truly a reflection of his good heart. However. How foolish. After a long time, Yi Mu shook her head in sadness. She used her handkerchief to wipe the blood on his face and grinded her teeth as she said, then just forget about it. If you can leave today, immediately leave this place and never come back. But at this moment, a woman's scream came from the stable. Mo Linyuan narrowed his eyes and pursed his lips. He wanted to be obedient, but it seemed like it was too late. Thus, he hurriedly stuffed a ball of paper into Yi Mu's hands. Yi Mu didn't even have the time to look at it before the door to the stable was opened. As if she had been thrown around by Yi Li, when Russ's clothes were disheveled, and she no longer had the courage to stand up. Yi Li gave her one last deep look and walked out of the stable in large strides without even bothering to look back at her. At this moment, none of the surrounding servants were present. Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan were the only ones remaining, so it was best to face them head on. Although Yi Mu was a little uneasy, she still secretly remained on guard. After making such a scene, Yi Li didn't have any good mood left. He stared at the two children in front of him without a hint of warmth in his eyes. Someone come. Tie this slave up. When Yi Mu saw this, she immediately panicked a little. Father, you. Shut up. Yi Li yelled out impatiently. Mo Linyuan did not resist and was obediently tied up. Yi Mu knew that she couldn't delay Mo Linyuan's departure, so no matter what, she had to send Mo Linyuan out today. That was why she took a step forward and said in a domineering tone. Even if father blames me for disobeying him, I still have to say it. It's true that it was a mistake for Aji to wreak havoc on this particular occasion. But if he didn't, 
he wouldn't have been able to expose when Russ true colors, and father would still have been fooled until today. Are you telling me I need to reward him? Yi Li sneered. No. But at least don't kill him. Yi Mu said anxiously. Kill. Oh, no. I won't kill him. Yi Li looked down at Mo Linyuan from above. This kid is so cunning I tied him up because I'm afraid he'll escape halfway. Moreover, I intend to personally send him to official Liu's residence. He looked at Yi Mu in anger and stressed one last word, now. What? Yi Mu eyes widened. If he would accompany him, wouldn't Mo Linyuan truly end up in the hands of official Lu? Chapter 64 Mo Linyuan heard this, he only glanced indifferently at Yi Li. He had no intention of escaping. Prepare the carriage and take this slave with us. No father. Yi Mu wanted to give chase, but with a flip of her father's hand, the sword at Yi Li's waist was instantly unsheathed and aimed at the center of Yi Mu's brows. Wisps of chilliness were transmitted from the tip of the blade as Yi Mu's pupils constricted. She raised her head and saw that the cold blade was less than an inch away from her. Don't challenge my bottom line, Muir. Yi Li narrowed his eyes after speaking and flicked his embroidered robe before turning around and leaving. At this moment, she hated herself who was just a six-year-old child. If she had been a little older, or perhaps if she hadn't suggested sending Imo Linyuan off, things wouldn't have gone catastrophic as they were today. But to let that pervert, official Lu, capture Emo Linyuan just like that? Yi Mu gritted her teeth at the abominating thought. Just as she was about to desperately snatch him back, she suddenly caught a glimpse of Emo Linyuan mouthing a message at her before he boarded the carriage, open it. Yi Mu lowered her head and looked at the slip of paper in her hand that had been stuffed by Emo Linyuan. But after a moment of hesitation, she saw that he had already been taken away by Yi Li. Yi Mu clenched her fist and gradually loosened it. Her eyes became ruthless. After a long while, she finally opened the paper slip, burning the written message on it to her mind. It'll be all right, don't worry about me. Wait for me to come back, I will be safe. For you, I will be safe and sound. He said three sentences reassuring her with unashamed confidence. As long as he left the general's manor, he would be able to contact his men. However, he didn't want to leave, and instead wanted to take this unnecessary risk. This fool. Despite his confidence, for Yi Mu, no matter how perfect he may think his plan is, she was still afraid he would miss something important. If he went in there, even the slightest mishap could happen. No. Yi Mu closed her eyes and crushed the slip of paper in her hand. She must save him as soon as possible and stop him from creating more plans. Inside the carriage. Strangely, Yi Li did not seize Mo Linyuan to rein his anger upon him. Instead, he had untied him it was because Mo Linyuan did not resist on the way at all. It was as if he was not the least bit afraid of where he was going next. Are you satisfied now that you've made such a ruckus? Yi Li opened his mouth and his voice sounded exhausted. Mo Linyuan pretended as if he was deaf to his words. Yi Li pointed at the brush on the side and sternly said, Write it. Tell me everything else you know. He commanded brusquely. Mo Linyuan's phoenix eyes swept across them and he really did use the brush to write a very brash sentence, I'm helping you. Ha! Yi Li was so angry that he laughed. Help me. Do you really think I won't kill you? You have the guts to not only poison your mistress but also to toy with me. You don't believe me? It'll crush you to death right now. He threatened. But there was not the slightest fluctuation of emotions on Mo Linyuan's handsome face. He was still very cool as he wrote his next reply. This only proves that I am smart, and only if I am smart will the chances of success be greater. You should be happy. Ha 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 ha. This time, Yi Li was truly infuriated to the point of laughing. Being teased by a little fellow like this and he actually didn't kill him yet it was truly a miracle. So, you are determined to go to that official's residence. I have wrongly accused you. I had thought that you would flee on the way. Escape. Mo Linyuan wrote the next words down without any hesitation, I will not run away. 
I will prove myself to you. Why? Yi Li stared at him and asked curiously, You want to prove yourself? You want to become my trusted aide? Mo Linyuan thought of something and smiled. If I succeed, you will treat her better. My only hope is that she is treated better. He wanted her absolute safety. So that's why, before he left, he plotted to topple the biggest threat around her. In hopes of me treating Yi Mu better, he is adamant and fearless to go infiltrate official Liu's residence, gambling casually with his life. Yi Li held the paper in his hand and stared at him without saying anything for a long time. Chapter 65 No wonder that old cunning fox, official Lu, was still so obsessed with him. Although the youth looked a bit thin right now, he had handsome facial features. And a sharp, cunning mind beneath the frail exterior. The truth proved that this child was definitely not just a simple fish in a pond. He had the lowest ranking as a slave, yet through simple tactics as using the bathing water of his concubine, he was able to penetrate layers of defenses and plot against his mistress. Perhaps this mission could only be accomplished by him. Yi Li found himself thinking with anticipation. After Yi Mu returned, she carefully thought for a moment and immediately understood that she had been tricked by Mo Linyuan. This guy, he must have already made up his mind to go to that official Liu's place. He never thought of leaving this place, he really wanted to help Yi Li steal that forbidden army map. Damn it! Yi Mu was so angry that she fervently jumped up and down, wishing that she could grow high as an adult and get that brat back to give him a good beating. It was a pity that things did not turn out as expected. She was still a short winter melon, moreover, she was the soft and easy to shove lowly type. Young lady when Yi Xiaolang saw that Yi Mu had returned, he lay unhappily on the bed and timidly cried out. Right. Yi Mu quickly stood up and stared at Xiaolang like a tiger staring covetously at its prey. Speak. Did the guy tell you his plan? Are you hiding this from me along with him? She accused irritably. Who? Yi Xiaolang asked with a frown, bewilderment etched on his features. Yi Mu stomped her foot, that smelly Aji. Ah. Ah, Ajai didn't mention any plans to me. Could it be that the first wife wanted to harm you? Yi Mu looked at him faintly. So you were indeed aware. Xiao Lang scratched his head, young lady, I was told by Aji to leave everything to him. He said he would deal with that woman and told me to learn from him. After thinking for a while he put on a resolute face and said, he said I have to be on guard against any unforeseen events in the future so I can better protect you. Yi Xiaolang's words caused Yi Mu to gradually calm down. It was hard to say what her mood was. After a long while, she mumbled, as expected, he even led you astray. When she thought of how that brat was in danger alone, Yi Mu wanted to pull him back and beat him a hundred times. However, there was one more thing that made her feel even worse that's right. She had protected him and approached him for the sake of the city boundary map, but Mo Linyuan truly acted for her own well-being this made her feel ashamed, but at the same time, it also made her more agitated. Damn it, how in the world can I save someone? Yi Mu carefully recalled the contents in the book and searched for any information that she could use. Suddenly, her eyes lit up. The reason why Yi Li had failed was not only because he had not obtained the secret map of the Imperial Guards, but also because someone had long since discovered his clandestine plans. That person was none other than the next emperor of the Yu country Emperor Yu Wu. This person was originally an unfavored prince of the current emperor of Yu. However, he was very ambitious. Not only was he secretly managing his own forces, he was also instigating trouble everywhere, wanting to reap the benefits from the messy state of affairs. After investigation, he discovered that the Yi residence was not guarded normally, instead it was heavily guarded. So, he had guessed that there was a conspiracy stirring inside the residence. In order to sneak into the Yi residence, he sold himself to be a slave and lurked in secret for two years. In the end, when Yi Li and Zhao Wang were both caught in a dispute, only then did he turn the tables on them and revealed his identity, forsaking his fake identity as Yi Li's subordinate. Knowing every detail of their plans, he had settled the rebellion in one fell swoop. According to the current events, this person should already be at the Yi residence. As long as she could find him, 
no matter if she was to cooperate with him or threaten him, she would be able to use him to save M.O. Lin Yuan and have him escape from the residence of that grand official Lu. Chapter, 66 Yes, that's it. But how would she find him? The only thing she remembered clearly was that the person had been killed by M.O. Lin Yuan in the end, and the knife had stabbed into his chest. However, underneath his chest was another scar, deeper, that seemed to have been left behind when he was young. But she couldn't just look at other people's chests, right? How vulgar. But it's better to have a clue than grasp nothing to be a peeping Tom. It was better than sitting idle. The more she thought about it, the more vindictive she thought about doing it. Thus, when nighttime came, Yi Mu sneaked out. Currently, there were four places in the general's estate that she could not go to. The first was outside the residence since Yi Li had hired a martial expert to watch over the premises. The second was where the treasure pile was hidden. Yi Li should have placed his most trusted and capable aide there. Anyone who approaches that place will surely die. Third, Yi Tian's pavilion. After all the mishaps, Yi Tian definitely hates her to the bone. Moreover, his personality was impulsive, and he had an extremely powerful internal martial arts master by his side to protect him. Of course, Yi Mu wouldn't be so stupid and court death. Lastly, it was the terrifying pavilion where Yi Li lived. After making up her mind, Yi Mu made a preliminary search plan. In the past few months, in order to protect herself effectively in her current age, she had practiced the Supreme Heart Sutra of the Turtle the most. As long as she focused on remaining motionless, it would be difficult for the other party to find her. After deciding on her possible search routes, the first thing Yi Mu did was to go to the bathing hall. The place served as where the servants would take their baths, but it was only for those with low-level status. Usually, those of high rank wouldn't go there. At this moment, there were quite a number of people in the washroom. The servants only had time to clean up after their masters had gone to bed. Therefore, it was currently bustling with noise and excitement. Yi Mu hid on the rooftop as she mentally prepared her mind. She was already an adult, her brain wouldn't rot if she looked at it. She was trying to save him. Yes, that's right. To save someone. Thinking about how M.O. Lin Yuan had been sent to official Liu's residence for an impossible mission, Yi Mu gritted her teeth and removed the tiles from the roof. Immediately, a white body of flesh appeared before his eyes. FCK, she's not pure anymore. On the other side, official Liu pushed away all the official businesses that he could get rid of and postponed them. He could not wait any more, and he ran to the guest room giddily. Today, he had finally gotten his hands on the little boy he had been yearning for. But what he didn't know was that when Yili left, official Lu had asked for a small favor, a medicine that would make any man refuse from holding anything back. So even if Emo Linyuan were to refuse, he wouldn't be able to do anything. But would Emo Linyuan let himself be kissed? The carved wooden door was pushed open hastily. A young man was sitting lazily by the corner of the room. The moment official Lu would open the door, he would be able to see him. There were different dishes, delicacies and wine scattered on the table. The youth poured and drank by himself. His white robe was shrouded in candlelight, making him look an even more hazy beauty. The youth hasn't reached puberty yet, but his body was lean and well-proportioned. His demeanor was cool and elegant especially when his face was lit up by the candlelight, it was breathtakingly beautiful. When he heard movement, M.O. Linyuan's phoenix eyes slanted slightly as he glanced over. Just one glance was enough to make official Lu feel as if half of his body was melting. He didn't remember any of the mediocre men he had from the past. No one could ever hope to compare to this. The only thing he would remember clearly from now on was the cold phoenix eyes in front of him, causing him to involuntarily hold his breath. Chapter, 67 so good after a long while, official Lu finally found his voice and carefully stepped into the room. His eyes stared fixedly at the young man, and his lips unconsciously opened and closed in lust, you, you I missed you so much. He when Mo Lin Yuan heard this, he suddenly revealed a smile. A dazzling smile that made official Liu's soul want to jump in excitement. Is that so? He squinted his eyes and smiled, I also wanted to see you. 
He had nearly been humiliated and killed by this person that day. When he thought about how Yi Mu had also seen his most vulnerable and miserable side, he couldn't help but think about the person in front of him. And now, his wish had finally been granted. Really? Official Lu could not believe his ears. He hurriedly closed the door and instructed the others, no matter what you hear, you are not allowed to enter. After that, he impatiently rushed towards M.O. Linyuan. M.O. Linyuan held his wine cup and did not move at all. A cold light suddenly appeared within his inky eyes, reflected from the surface of the wine. The night was going to be very long. No, no, no. He's not here. While others were sleeping, she secretly opened the lapels of their clothes to check. Although it was a bit risky, she, fortunately, wasn't able to alarm anyone. The only thing that annoyed her was that she had been searching for several hours, looking at countless and different shapes of chests. But not a single one of them was the person she was looking for. Yi Mu frowned as she walked towards the house that the last servant lived in. However, at this time, she heard an unusual activity and quickly hid behind a fake stone mountain. After a while, a man dressed in black from head to toe fell from the roof. He was clearly heavily injured. His heavy footsteps when he almost fell face first to the ground when he landed was proof of this. Soon, another person could be heard this person was chasing after him. However, he could no longer run. Suddenly, he saw a miniature rock mountain garden. His eyes lit up and he hid quickly behind the rocks. Since Yi Mu had been observing the other party, she immediately hid inside the rock mountain when she saw him running towards her. The miniature mountain was quite spacious, with moonlight shining through the cracks, making it a good place for stealth. The man in black wasn't able to notice her. After he entered, he didn't dare move an inch. Very soon, a man in linen robes descended from the roof. Strange, he was clearly hit by the Ma Fei San, but how could have he escaped so fast? An ancient Chinese anesthetic used in surgery capable of inducing numbness paralysis in muscles. As he finished speaking, a man holding a large sword suddenly followed after him. It was Yi Li. Elder son, where's the assassin? General. Elder son knelt down on one knee and said, Although this person's kung fu is inferior to ours, his qinggong is outstanding. Chasing him down is akin to losing him. The black-clothed person within the fake mountain let out a long sigh of relief when he heard this. However, at this moment, Yi Li suddenly roared, Who is there? The man in black tensed up and was about to rush out when a pair of small hands reached out from behind him and dragged him deeper into the cave. After waiting for a while, Yi Li did not detect any sound and automatically assumed that no one was really within the vicinity. Meanwhile, within the fake mountain, Yi Mu pressed the stranger to the ground and tightly held onto his mouth with both hands as she focused her attention. The man who she was sitting atop on didn't move an inch. The only pair of eyes he revealed were staring at her in astonishment. It was obvious that he knew her. Shi Yi Mu lowered her voice, If you don't move, I won't move. Shall we temporarily cooperate? After a long while, she felt the person under her hand nod his head. Only then did she carefully remove her hand. However, she was still on guard against this guy's counterattack. Chapter, 68 How bizarre, elder son. Are you sure that he was hit by the Ma Fei San? Yi Li frowned and tightened the blade in his hand. His expression was slightly uneasy. Elder son recalled the speed at which that fellow escaped. He, who was originally very sure of the situation, eventually shook his head. I'm not sure. Yi Li said, forget it, who knows where this scout came from. As long as he doesn't discover the secret you're guarding, it's fine. Elder son quickly replied, General, don't worry. With me here, no one can get close to the old courtyard. Yes. Yi Li nodded, but after hesitating for a moment, he continued, This person alarmed you, but it did not alarm Mr. Han who was guarding the outer perimeter. When Elder Son heard this, he nodded his head cautiously. The possibility of him being a spy is high. Yi Li pondered for a moment before flinging his hand and leaving. Tomorrow, he'll get the housekeeper to properly investigate the people inside. Gradually, their voices faded away. 
the two people inside the fake mountain heaved a sigh of relief. But Yi Mu was still cautious, afraid that the person beneath her was lying so she didn't rush to leave. Instead, she looked at him suspiciously and asked, Hey, did you really come in from the outside or were you a spy all along? After squinting for a while, Yi Mu added, But why do you look so familiar? As she spoke, she pulled on his mask. While she was in the process of doing so, the other party originally wanted to stop her, but he was hit by the Mai Fei San and couldn't muster much strength. Yi Mu easily knocked off his hand and tore off his mask. It's you. Yi Mu glared at him. If she knew that it was this fellow, she wouldn't have saved him. This person was Yan Su, the stinking man who had helped Wen Ru catch her by punching her. Oh, you were finally hit by karma, huh? When Yi Mu recognized him, his expression became tense. Strictly speaking, Yi Mu would have some sort of animosity towards him. But she wouldn't expose him, right? But at this moment, Yi Li, who should have left, returned. Surprised, Yi Mu immediately held down Yen Su and her body sank into a tortoise state. Even though her eyes were staring unwaveringly at Yen Su, she kept all her vigilance on the outside. If Yi Li found out that she was here, it would be disastrous. Only, her hands were so itchy she really wanted to beat this man up. Seems like he really isn't hiding here Yi Li's pair of bell-like eyes narrowed slightly. He snorted once before leaving. Once he left, Yi Mu couldn't hold back anymore and fiercely grabbed Yen Zhu's collar. My face San. Very good, that is to say, you can't even lift a finger against me now. Yi Mu sat on Su Yan's waist and scanned his body over and over again as if she was wondering where to start her revenge. Yen Zhu's body was truly powerless, but he was also not a person who would just sit there and wait for an agonizing death. So what if you recognize me? If you denounce me to Yi Li, I can also denounce you. A young miss of a prominent household is wandering around outside late at night. Do you dare to lie that you don't have any impure intentions? Yi Mu let out a snort. Within the secluded space, a ray of moonlight shone down from above, illuminating the entire space. You don't need to provoke me. Don't worry, I won't tell on you. After all, she still had to exact her revenge on him. You and I have separate goals. She continued after a heartbeat. Then Yu Yen Su frowned as he stared at her, then why aren't you getting off me? Honestly speaking, if he had even the slightest bit of strength, he wouldn't let a tiny girl sit on his body. He was exactly eleven years older than Yi Mu. He never thought that he would be bullied by this little thing. Chapter, 69 Get off. Seems like you are very forgetful. Yi Mu raised her eyebrows, put her hands on her waist, and looked down at him condescendingly, do you want me to help you recall how you painfully hit my abdomen with your fist last time, causing when Russ lackeys to seize me and almost beat me to death, hmm? That time, if it wasn't for Mo Lin Yuan arriving in time, she might have really been beaten to death. How could this enmity dwindle one bit? Does she want to settle old scores? You. Cough, cough what do you want? His eyes vigilantly stared at Yi Mu, like that of a hawk. As he spoke, he pulled out a dagger that was as thin as a cicada's wing from his inner sleeve and prepared to attack. What do I want? Yi Mu blinked with a bit of gratification in her eyes. What do you think I should do when it's such a good time to take revenge? The moment she finished speaking, Yen Su suddenly moved. The dagger in his hand swirled in the cold wind as it stabbed towards Yi Mu. He had used his full strength to deal with a six-year-old child, but Yi Mu had actually blocked his attack just when he thought she could have killed her. Yi Mu wasn't as weak as he thought. Because during this period of rest, she had been training. Now, her practice wasn't in vain, because he was severely injured, plus he couldn't use any of his internal energy. The dagger fell into Yi Mu's hands in the next second. You want to kill me? Yi Mu retracted her smile as a cold light flashed in her eyes. When others wanted to make a move on her, she wouldn't be so easy to negotiate with anymore. With the in her small, white hand, she climbed higher up Yen Zhu's chest, near his neck. A dim light flashed across her round eyes. You think that just because I'm young I don't dare to kill people? How dare you? 
Yen Su also knew that his previous attack had failed and would have definitely drawn the killing intent of his opponent. However, he did not expect that a six-year-old child would be able to block his full-strength attack. I don't dare. The blade had cut a shallow wound on his neck. It wasn't that Yi Mu had been lenient, but she still had some questions that needed answers. Let me ask you. Why are you running around at this time at night? Whose person are you and what is your purpose? He could feel the pain coming from his neck and the frown forming between his eyebrows. He was actually threatened by a baby that he had never paid attention to. Moreover, his life and death were in her hands. His face was red from the vexation and humiliation he felt. You don't have the right to question me. Don't forget, I'm from the Prime Minister's palace. If you dare to touch me, Yi Tian won't let you go. When I came out tonight, I initially had the mission of killing you. Did you think Yi Tian would be unmoved after being punished? If you know what's good for you, let's work together. In the future, I will remember your kindness and will never hurt you again. Otherwise, if I die here wait for the Prime Minister's Hall behind Yi Tian to come back and avenge me. Don't think you can easily escape. His words were firm and forceful. His stubbornness that refused to give in made Yi Mu raise her eyebrows. You are very stubborn. He was proud and arrogant, and it seemed like but you don't look like a servant at all. In the beginning, I had thought you were one Russ hidden escort. Her male escort. He said in horror. This phrase was absolutely provocative to the point where Yen Zhu's face flushed a deeper red from the degrading treatment he was facing from this pipsqueak. But Yi Mu did not know why he had such a huge reaction. You are the escort. A servant girl like you isn't even qualified to touch me. Get off my body. He ordered scathingly. I'm not qualified to touch you. Yi Mu became a bit vexed from his words, could it be that you are some kind of important person? Seeing that he had become silent, she retaliated, you want speak? If you want speak, don't believe that I won't strip you of your clothes and throw you out. Chapter, 70 How dare you? He glared at her indignantly, but Yi Mu didn't say anything more. She grabbed Yen Zhu's clothes and used her actions to prove that she dared to do so. Yen Su was almost angered to death with her words. Just as he was about to say something, Yi Mu snorted, this place is very close to where the servants live. If you're not afraid to attract nearby people, then shout louder. You. He uttered in anger. But Yen Su could only feel his increasingly weakening limbs. In the end, he could only irately spat out a word, despicable. That's right, I'm despicable. If you don't tell me the truth, do you believe that I won't be so vulgar enough to reveal your body? As Yi Mu spoke, she pulled his clothes upward to reveal his muscular, wheat-colored chest. In the dim lighting, although it was hard to see, one could tell that this guy's figure wasn't too bad. Stop. He spoke sternly with eyes that believed Yi Mu wanted to molest him. His eyes were practically spitting fire. I'm warning you to stop now, or it'll make you die without a burial ground. Yi Mu scratched his ears. Please, I'm just stripping your upper clothes, not pulling down your pants. Why are you so nervous? What are you trying to do? Yen Zhu's chest was exposed, his angry breaths rapidly rising and falling. He was obviously extremely mad. If it wasn't for the anesthetic, he might have already cut Yi Mu into pieces. Yi Mu slightly raised her brows as she pointed the dagger towards his chest. Murder, of course. How many times have you tried to kill me and even threatened me just now? I will tear open your chest bit by bit and pull out your heart to see if you are afraid or not. You. At this moment, Yen Su was a little unsure. Yi Mu didn't even bat an eye when she peeled off another man's clothes. He is apprehensive if the other party would kill him through unbearable pain. Yi Mu continued to force a confession out from him, speak. Whose person are you? If you don't tell me, I'm going to make a move now. Her dagger moved down, tearing open a part of his clothing. At this moment, her vision suddenly focused on something. Because beneath Yen Zhu's garment, was a scar. And from the looks of it, he seemed to have received this wound from when he was young. 
Curiously, she reached out a hand to feel the scar. Fortunately, it wasn't very deep. Otherwise, it would have been very easy to die had the blade fully thrust through this part of his body. Her current expression was that of bafflement. So, she finally found who she was looking for. This person was the future emperor of Yu, Qi Yen. Don't touch me. When he felt Yi Mu's touch on his scar, his expression immediately changed. Previously, he was furious, but now, his eyes were filled with frost. He stared at Yi Mu with undisguised killing intent in his eyes. Don't you know? If you know something you shouldn't know, you will surely die. Yi Mu's heart jumped and she immediately patted his chest as if nothing had happened, why are you being so fierce? Didn't I just touch your scar? Who didn't stumble when they were young, it was all because you are unreasonable. Oh right, this looks like a sword wound, who would kill you? After all, this area very dangerous to puncture. None of your business. Yen Su tilted his head to the side, if you want to kill, then kill. If not, then scram. Oh. Your temper is pretty good. Her meaty fingertips tapped against his chest, and her eyeballs rolled as she suddenly said, How about this, as long as you tell me how you got injured, it'll let you go. Otherwise, it'll kill you right now. I'm being serious. After she finished speaking, she sat cross-legged on Yen Zu's abdomen. She had an upright expression on her face and Yen Su was about to die from her outrageous actions. Chapter 71 I won't say it. You can just kill me. Yen Su aggravated closed his eyes. He had already given up on communicating with this irrational baby. Yi Mu chuckled, then I won't be polite. She gestured with the knife towards his body, seemingly unintentionally saying, I was going to tell you what's inside the old courtyard. Since you're so adamant on refusing to answer, then I guess I won't talk anymore. Wait. Hmm. Yi Mo innocently raised her head. You would tell me what you know inside that courtyard? Yen Zu's forehead creased into a frown, his tone doubtful. I swear. Yi Mu said earnestly. Yen Su was silent for a moment. Although he didn't know what Yi Mu's motive was for wanting to know his old past, no matter what, it was still worth a try. All right, he'll speak. He paused, it was my father my father, who stabbed me. Oh. This father is great. Yi Mu slightly raised her brows. Continue. However, it was a strange feeling Neil one had ever wanted to know about his past before. Now, someone was willing to listen even if she held a dagger in her hand, and they were cramped in the space in this miniature rock mountain, he still had the impulse to relax and tell this person everything. This must be an illusion. Yen Su shook his head and continued. Back then, my father had his doubts. He suspected that other mother had a male escort. He reckoned that I wasn't his biological son, Soin Rath, he wanted to stab me to death. He paused, taking a shaky breath. At the very last moment, my mother rushed over and blocked the sword with her own body. But because it was too deep, the sword had passed through mother's body and wounded me too. Yen Su gently glanced overhead. Even now when he thought back to the past, he could still feel his mother's blood flowing along the sword's blade, through her wound, and towards him. This kind of vision the vision of a mother and her child being connected would invoke some warmth. But not for this scenario. No, every time he thought about it it sent chills down his spine. She blocked it for a moment so the sword didn't pierce too deeply into my body, but my father still locked me up. I relied on eating snakes, rats, ants anything, in that cell to miraculously survive. The man's heavy voice sounded even more oppressive as he drawled on. Yi Mu slightly knitted her brows, her eyes looking at him solemnly. Seeing that she was really serious, he felt an inexplicable sense of closeness towards her. After that, my mother's family helped to turn things around, so I could be let out. Still, my father didn't really like me. Since he also has a lot of children, I what is it? When he finished speaking, the space was once again silent. After a long time, his voice became cold again. All right, I'm done. You can tell me what's in the old courtyard now. Yi Mu rubbed her chin, deep in thought. 
If that's the case, it would be inconvenient for me to tell you. You. Are you kidding me? Yen Su glared at her furiously. Don't be in such a hurry. Yi Mu waved her hand. But I can tell you another very useful piece of information. Yen Su felt cheated and was enraged. Who wants to hear it? Not listening. Yi Mu patted his handsome face. Even if you don't want to, you still have to. Listen carefully, this lady observes the stars at night, and after calculating, I have discovered that your father is about to die. Impossible. Yen Su deadpanned, he can't possibly be dying soon. It's true. He is very ill at the moment. And only very few people know of his condition. Moreover, early next spring, he will no longer be able to conceal his illness, and will most likely be gravely sick by the summer. Yen Su squinted his eyes, and finally sneered, You speak as if it's true, do you know who I am? Chapter, 72 Your name I know that of course. Yi Mu extended her hand and wrote the word Qi on his chest. Qi was the surname of the royal family in the Yu country. Yen Zhu's eyes widened. He never thought that she would actually be knowledgeable about secret matters like this. Without waiting for him to reply, Yi Mu added, Don't worry. I'm the only one who knows about this now moreover, if you're obedient, I won't tell Yi Li. Even though he knew a child's promise couldn't be as serious as an adult's, Yen Su still felt relieved after hearing this. He was only able to recover his cool after a long time. Why? He asked. Why won't she kill him? How was she able to know his secret without him finding this out? And how did she even came to know it? Just who is this girl? Yi Mu waved her hand off-handedly, I have no reason. I don't know anything about His Highness' royal family, therefore I won't easily interfere in affairs I shouldn't stick my nose in. How the battle is going or who becomes the victor or the loser I don't care about these things at all. However if I don't denounce you, shouldn't you do me a favor as well? She finished with a calculating tone in her voice. Yen Su immediately became apprehensive, what is it? I know that you have some influence outside this place and that your Qinggong is slightly stronger than the old man my father has set up outside guarding the premises. I hope you can send a message and use your men to help me save a person. Yen Su frowned. What if I say no? You have no right to say no. Yi Mu's face was cold as she said, this is my reward for not spilling your secret. As long as you do what you have to do, I guarantee that I won't interfere in your highness matters. Even if your family's life is in danger, you still won't interfere. Yen Su icily threatened. I won't interfere. Yi Mu answered back, quick and callous. Good. He acquiesced, then tell me, who do you want me to save? After strictly pondering for a moment, he finally relented. Yi Mu's expression turned solemn, he was sent to official Liu's residence yesterday that Parison's name is Aji. After you rescue him, let him go. Upon hearing that the other party didn't possess an illustrious identity, Yen Su agreed immediately. In the entire capital aside from the general's estate, the imperial palace, and the heaven prison, it wasn't too much of a difficulty for him to save other people. Then can you let me go now? As an afterthought, he clarified, were you really serious when you said that my father was sick? Even Yi Li was unaware of his identity, but Yi Mu, who was still a small child, knew it. So for some reason, a part of him was torn in believing her words. Of course, if I were to exchange a secret for a secret, I would be fair and honest. But then she said, however, I still can't let you go just yet. Why? Yen Su looked up at her in puzzlement, only to see her take out his knife, her small hand touching his chest. A tooth for a tooth. Although we're cooperating now, you almost caused my death last time I haven't settled the score with you. She declared viciously. You how do you intend to go about it? It's simple Yi Mu gestured the knife meaningfully on his chest, just how about I just carve Yi Mu was here on your body? How dare you? Yen she roared, instantly furious. You, ah. I've said before that if I dare, he'll do it. You still think I am just joking with you? As Yi Mu said this, the blade had already cut open the flesh on Yen Zhu's chest, 
and blood began to seep out. Yen Su took a deep breath. The piercing pain from the sharp edge of the blade and the soreness in his body from the my boiling powder formed a stark contrast of anguish. He wanted to resist a few times, but unfortunately, the effects of the my boiling powder was now at its maximum. His muscles bulged as exerted effort to resist, but he was still unable to move at all. Don't move, relax. Yi Mu pressed the tip of her tongue against the corner of her mouth, concentrating on drawing the on his chest. If you're well behaved, they'll just leave you with a sentence. But if you're not obedient you don't believe that it'll tattoo the painting along the river during the Qingming festival on your chest. Chapter, 73 Although he did not know what this painting was, it did not stop him from becoming more livid. Yi Mu You warned me that I must save that person at all cost and get him the hell out of here. Do this, and I won't go save that person. Yes, yes. She agreed nonchalantly. But if you want rescue him, they'll go and report you to Yi Li right now. You. Damn it. Yen Su could only curse. No matter how loud you shout, I won't go easy on you. Moreover, you're mad at me. And now I'm also angry at you. That means I'm going to add another drawing of a turtle on your body. When Yen Su heard this, he immediately quieted down. Within the fake mountain, only the sound of his heavy breathing and the sound of his fists clenching could be heard. Seeing that he wasn't putting up with a fight anymore, Yi Mu was finally able to quietly take revenge. Seriously speaking, he had almost led her to be beaten to death. And now she was being too easy with just carving a tattoo on him. She was lying on Yen Zhu's body, her small figure a stark contrast his tall and slender physique. Moreover, her body was soft and tender, yet Yen Zhu's body was as hard as iron. He swore that if it wasn't for the my boiling powder, he would have definitely killed this baby. But for some reason, when her soft breath landed on his chest as he heard a naughty laugh, his anger was immediately suppressed as if someone had opened a hole through it. It clearly shouldn't be this way, but he couldn't help himself damn it. Shouldn't he have dismembered this unruly little thing into a million pieces already? Why would his body have the delusional thought of fondness to this softness? The blade was clearly cutting through his flesh, making him go through pain. Is that it? Was he going mental from the pain? Just as he was still in a daze, Yi Mu finally drew the last line. All right, let's call it a day. When Yen Su finally came back to his senses, Yi Mu used her hands and feet to get off his body. She stood inside the cave and looked down at her masterpiece from a high vantage point as she stroked her chin. This way, every time you want to reminisce about your mother in the future, you will remember the shame of today. Ha 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 ha. Seeing Yen Zhu's darkening face, she ordered, Don't stare, what did I say? You have to keep your anger to yourself while I'm still alive. After all, I'm helping you. He 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 he. After saying that, she tidied herself up and ran outside, All right, I'm going to bed now. I hope that you can help me save the person tomorrow. Thank you for that. Before she could finish her sentence, she had already run out. The way she went out brimming with energy didn't seem like she hadn't slept a wink. Yen Su silently watched as Yi Mu left in a bounce. That bane had finally left. He let out a sigh of relief and wiped away the blood on his chest. Sure enough, the wound on his chest that was previously cut by the blade was badly mutilated, he reached out to touch it, letting out a low hiss. But Yi Mu had only cut through his skin, not deep enough to draw out a lot of blood. After resting for a long time, he seemed to have finally recovered some of his strength. With all the energy he had left, he slowly walked out from the stone mountain. After returning to his room, he did not immediately change his clothes. Instead, he went to the bronze mirror to see the extent of the wound Yi Mu had inflicted on him. The originally area where his childhood scar had been, was stunningly covered by an incomparably ugly turtle. The turtle was drawn hideously on his chest, but after looking at it for a long time, he felt it was actually a bit cute. He was unconsciously thinking of a word to describe it, adorable was the only thing that came to mind. As he touched his injured skin, he surprisingly did not have the slightest murderous aura leak out from him. He even secretly had the urge to preserve this picture. I must be going insane. 
Chapter, 74 Yi Mu had a relaxed expression on her face, but her heart actually felt troubled. Although she had threatened Yen Su, strictly speaking, he still was a free man capable of making his own choices. As long as he didn't choose to silence her, he would definitely help her with her request to save M. O. Lin Yuan as soon as possible. Only, she didn't know if he could make it in time. She thought of this as she lay on the bed caught in insomnia. She tossed and turned, unable to fall asleep. But eventually morning came, and the fateful night finally passed. Yi Mu could only wonder fearfully, how did M. O. Lin Yuan spend the night? Then once dim sky had turned into a bright, azure, and inside the room, official Lu had already lost half of his life. Since he did not allow any guards to approach him and specifically told them that he would not be attending court today, he was tortured all night, without anyone to save him. M. O. Lin Yuan sat by the table and looked at the pitiful official Lu, who was tied up and kneeling painfully on the ground. He smiled and said, All right, I've had enough fun and have taken my revenge. It's time for you to die. Official Lu, who was on the verge of death, suddenly straightened his knees and shook his head desperately. Emichim. Emichim. Not death. He wanted to shout, but the ropes gagging his mouth stopped him from doing so. He would do anything Mo Lin Yuan asked, as long as he didn't kill him. Mo Lin Yuan sipped his tea, only revealing an unreadable gaze. What is it? You don't want to die. Official Lu quickly shook his head. His eyes were bloodshot and tired, but deep down, he felt a deep sense of hatred. If he didn't drive away all the people who were in charge of his protection, how could he be this unfortunate now? It was all a careless act on his part, for him to lose his life in a moment of temptation. Mo Lin Yuan shook his head and chuckled. From the looks of it, you seem to be very unresigned, he commented, getting up from his seat calmly. Do you know who I am? Hearing this, official Lu looked at him imploringly. Wasn't he just a slave? Who else could he be? He thought derisively. Mo Lin Yuan did not say much. Instead, he turned his back and took off his robe, revealing his pale and skinny back. Official Lu did not understand his actions, but when he looked up, his pupils constricted. This is this is. On Mo Lin Yuan's back, faint coiling, purple dragon could be seen. Every scale on the dragon was bright, vivid, and life licky as if it would come out from his skin at any moment. Moreover, this kind of tattoo would change according to M.O. Lingyuan's mood, appearing and disappearing. In this current era, and in the whole land, only the crown prince of the M.O. country had this kind of unique tattoo. Born during a full moon, they had to go through the baptism of needles. Only a true dragon and the son of heaven could endure continuous pain. Thus, the identity of the person in front of him was very obvious. He's the crown prince of the M.O. country. He knew that the disappearance of the crown prince of the M.O. country had something to do with the prime minister of the M.O. country. Even Yi Li himself wasn't aware on what had transpired, nor why the crown prince had fled to another country. Therefore, when official Lu saw M.O. Lin Yuan here, being ignorant to the matters of another country, he didn't know that M.O. Lin Yuan had escaped. He could only think that this was all a big conspiracy to capture the Yu country. Could it be that the M.O. country was about to start a war? His thoughts spiraled into chaos. The imperial family of the M.O. country has decreed that for a crown prince to ascend the throne, he first must have outstanding achievements and be acknowledged by the everyone in the land before he can ascend the throne. Thus, I have come to this country in secrecy and hid within the general's manner. Although what he said was a lie on his part, his words were very much true and a tradition of the M.O. country. All successive generations of crown princes in the M.O. country had done well this was also the reason why the M.O. country was more prosperous than other countries. So don't you deserve to die. After M.O. Lin Yuan fixed his robe back, he looked down at official Lu condescendingly. Chapter, 75 His gaze caused cold sweat to form all over official Liu's forehead. Official Liu's legs went soft, and he couldn't help but kneel on the ground, quaking. Mo Lin Yuan then pulled out the treasured sword hanging on the side and walked step by step towards him. Official Lu continuously retreated, feeling endless terror in his heart. 
The crown prince had been hiding in the M.O. country all this time, and I almost. Truth to be told, he was also a ruthless and calculating person. Back then, he had earned the emperor's favor when he vowed secrecy to the grave he had been caught one time, and he had chosen to die rather than reveal information. But the emperor had saved him just in time, and afterward, valued him highly for his loyalty. However the emperor was sick, and he had no information to exchange for the crown prince to spare his life on behalf of his misdeeds. This was the most terrifying aspect of it all he didn't have a single trump card in his hand. The more official Lu how cornered he was, the more frightened he became. No. He refused to think this he was still useful. After thinking it through, official Lu suddenly calmed down. He sat up straight and kowtowed towards M.O. Linyuan. That minuscule submission finally made M.O. Linyuan, who held the sword, smile. Have you thought it through? Official Lu nodded his head. At this time, he no longer dared to treat M.O. Linyuan as a child. Who knew the actual number of people from the M.O. country that had infiltrated the Yu country? Certainly not him. How could he be a match for them? M.O. Linyuan chuckled and reached out with the sword in his hand. The blade cut through the rope binding official Liu's, narrowly missing his flesh. Official Lu took out the cloth stuffed in his mouth and rubbed his cold hands. His chubby face was grave, but his eyes kept darting around in wariness. The reason the crown prince did not kill me is that. At this moment, his attitude had undergone an earth-shattering change. He had become extremely flattering. Being a smart person, he knew when to change his attitude. M.O. Linyuan nodded and laughed softly, the Yu country is just next to the M.O. country. I want to take over the land of the Yu country. Everything is already prepared from the outside the only thing that is missing is the forbidden map of the Imperial Army. Official Lu suddenly squinted his eyes. As expected. No wonder he didn't kill him this was an opportunity. As long as he had the map of the Imperial Army in his hands, he could keep his life. What was there to be afraid of? When he thought here, he once again straightened his chest. However, before he could say anything, M.O. Linyuan suddenly sneered. Do you think you have a bargaining power now? He continued, the current Yu Emperor is very ill your backer is about to fall. However, if you submit to other princes and the Emperor discovers you, he might even drag you down to his deathbed with him. So, you also have impending trouble in the future, don't you? This was also the reason why official Lu had been feeling troubled recently. He wanted to change his master but was afraid that the emperor would discover while he was still alive. However, he still clenched his teeth and said. Your highness, you should just give up on this idea. Everything else is fine, but I will never give you this forbidden imperial army map. He raised his head and waited for the bargaining price to come. He had now understood the flow of conversation. Even if I make you become the prime minister or even the king of a country, you still aren't willing. Official Lu was stunned by this sudden bomb attack. Your Highness, W. What does that mean? He stuttered, completely taken aback. Literally. M.O. Linyuan calmly said, after taking over the Yu country, well leave it to the natives of the Yu country to manage it. If you're obedient, then why can't this person be you? Official Liu's breath quickened. But how could the words of this young man be true? M.O. Linyuan ignored his concerns and said with a smile. Now, you have two choices. One, cooperate and give me the map and I will give you a future. Two, call for your people to come in and capture me now, or try to deceive me and report me to the emperor. But it's just a question of whether a dying emperor is worth it or not for you to take this route, and whether other princes might suspect you of colluding with the M.O. country. Chapter, 76 while official Lu was still hesitating, two men clothed in black entered. Crown Prince They had been searching for the Crown Prince in the Yu country for a very long time under the orders of their master. Now that they had finally found him, the expressions behind their masks were that of excitement. M.O. Linyuan knew that they had only come here because of his secret signal, so he waved his hand and told them to retreat for now. Now was not the time to reminisce about the past. And when official Lu saw someone was able to infiltrate his residence without alerting anyone, he knew that they were internal martial arts experts. 
He immediately became vigilant and could now confirm that this young man in front of him was truly not just a simple person at all. While he was thinking this, Mo Linyuan smiled and walked over to his side. What else is there to consider? His narrow and long phoenix eyes were looking at him imperiously as the corners of his mouth raised to a smirk. He slowly said, in the entire Yu country, do you believe you can have a better backer than Maya Crown Prince? Rest assured, the humiliation you inflicted upon me on that day has already been erased from my mind, as I tortured you last night. So, do you want to listen to me? Official Liu's entire body shuddered. Facing the youth in front of him, his legs grew weaker and weaker. That's true. In the current affairs of the Yu country, did he have any better place to go? If he didn't agree, he would probably die here. After all, he had no idea how many of his people were here in the Yu country. If he was targeted by the crown prince, where could he escape to? Finally, he thought, rather than being scared of others, why not just give it a try? Perhaps, he still has a great future ahead of him. Thinking this way, official Lu fell to his knees, his tone quick to become a tad more respectful. As long as your highness does not abandon me, this lowly one will not refuse. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he narrowed his eyes and smiled meaningfully. How is it? Have you gone to save him? It was the afternoon of the next day when Yimu saw Yen Su once more. While she was jumping up and down happily, and from mild impatience, Yen Su immediately covered her mouth, carrying her behind a nearby screen. Be quiet, I have something to tell you. What is it? Yi Mu tilted her head to look at him. Because she was too small, not even as long as his legs, Yen Su was currently hugging her, as light and soft as hugging a ball of cotton. His eyes flickered for a moment, and then he said in a serious tone, the main wife of the Yu Prime Minister, who happens to be Wen Ru's mother, was furious when she found out that Wen Ru was taken as a prisoner. She personally came here today for her daughter's sake. In fact, she even wanted to send someone to assassinate you. How about I just secretly escort you to Yi Li's place right now? He rambled, proposing his plan. Kill me. Yi Mu didn't expect the Wen family to move so quickly, but she suddenly thought of something and asked with wide eyes, are you delaying your departure to save Aji in order to tell me about this? Yen Su frowned, it's already too late. Why are you still thinking about this slave? Yi Mu looked at him unhappily. Who cares what happened to this slave? Of course, I do. He's my person. After taking a deep breath, Yi Mu slowly said, All right I'm very grateful that you've come to tell me this news. You even wanted to protect me, but I can settle this myself. Compared with my situation, he's in more danger right now. Yen Su coldly snorted, he's just a youth, and he's even older than you. Do you really think you still need to worry about him? Yi Mu pouted angrily and used her little fists to punch him on the shoulder. My business is none of your business. Do you want to go back on your word? When Yen Su saw how she was always thinking about others than herself, he became infuriated and irritable. He really didn't want to bother her anymore. However, when he recalled that his men had confirmed the news that the emperor was indeed very ill, he felt that this person was very useful and wanted to provide for her. Thus, he swallowed his anger and spoke viciously. All right, it'll go immediately. Don't you regret it? To think that he had come here to help her. Seems like she doesn't need it. Chapter, 77 Yes, yes. Yi Mu waved him off, go and return back quickly. Yi Mu had an impatient look her face that made him was once again enraged. He wanted to see what kind of ability that guy had that made him so unforgettable after only after a day of being separated. Crown Prince, the Empress Dowager poisoned his majesty and seized control of the imperial government by herself, but because of her short-sightedness, she made many wrong decisions, causing the imperial government to suffer and have a bad reputation. The common people have also complained. Everyone hopes for your return and to take charge of the situation. The black-clothed man knelt reverently at M.O. Linyuan's feet. They were people sent by the Grand Imperial Tudor Yun of the M.O. country, and Tudor Yun was the biological father of M.O. Linyuan's mother. 
While he was speaking, Mo Linyuan was currently at the map of the Forbidden Imperial Army in his hands and only replied with a biting remark, as you can see, I am just a youth. I have not received any systematic education since I was six years old. How can I assume such a heavy responsibility? This the two men in black looked at each other, Your Highness, why do you need to belittle yourself? You have the blood of a true dragon. As long as you return, the Empress Dowager will have to give up the throne and take you as the new emperor. A powerless young emperor, if not a puppet. He could only scorn what else could he be. What he wanted was the right to rule the country with his own will and might. He kept the map of the imperial army in his pocket and decisively said, I won't go back. Rather, I won't go back for now. Why is that? The two men chorused. Right now, the U country is in the midst of many, many things, turmoil, conspiracies, you get the gist of it. He elaborated, if I stay behind and help someone to ascend the throne, this person will owe me. Then, by the moment I return, I will have more chips to play and won't be controlled by others. These two people who were only well versed in physical prowess and not tactics did not understand, so they were still anxious after Mo Linyuan spoke his plan. Mo Linyuan frowned. Don't worry, within two years, I will definitely return. However, now is not the time. He continued, go and inform the rest of my men who are still in the U country to be vigilant. I could give orders at any time. Yes your highness. The two of them knelt down in salute. Afterward, one of them suddenly rose up, sensing the presence of nearby infiltrators. Who's outside? He demanded. Yen Su did not expect that he would be discovered so easily. He immediately wanted to retreat, but just as he was about to turn around and leave, he saw a youth walk out of the room. You're all right. Yen Su was surprised. He had been expecting the worst knowing his circumstance. Mo Linyuan obviously recognized him as well. With a wave of his hand, he called his two guards to retreat. What are you doing here? Mo Linyuan merely asked. Yen Su saw that the two internal martial arts experts listened to Mo Linyuan's words, and his expression immediately became serious. You are not a slave. What is your identity? But before Mo Linyuan could say anything, a person shakily walked out from the corner. It was Official Lu. As for Official Lu, who was originally completely immune to teenagers, he was now trembling with fear as he knelt at Mo Linyuan's feet. He did not pay much attention to the new person in his residence, because after all, there had been many people who had broke inside his house since Mo Linyuan came last night. Therefore, with his little dignity left, he pitifully said, Master, the food has been prepared. Please head over the dining area. This scene caused Yen Su to be even more shocked. Originally, he had thought that Mo Linyuan would suffer a lot here. After all, everyone knew the wicked virtues and twisted character this official Lu possessed. However, how could he explain the scene before him? Official Lu was actually a subordinate of this slave. He could only in mild awe. Mo Linyuan did not even look at official Lu. Instead, he raised his phoenix eyes slightly and smiled at Yen Su. As you can see, im well. It's more fitting to ask what are you doing here? Mo Linyuan still hadn't forgotten about the matter with when Ru the man in front of him had harmed Yimu. Not sensing Mo Linyuan's dangerous look, he only replied, to think that the little girl was still thinking about you and forced me to take the risk to come and save you. Who knew that you would actually have a good time in this place? Even treated as a young master. Mo Linyuan's eyes widened, Yimu. Why would you listen to her? Chapter, 78 Yen Su did not say much. This is between her and me. You have no right to ask. Seeing Mo Linyuan's darkening face, he added, however your life is better now. But it doesn't mean you should forget your old owner. As far as I know, someone is going to assassinate her today. What? A hint of panic flashed through the eyes of the originally calm Mo Linyuan. He thought for a moment and said, all right. He said to the two men in black beside him. Xiaowen. Zixu. You two, go back with him. Protect that person in the dark. No. 
how can we leave your highness? They immediately objected. It's all right. The rest would arrive soon there should be no problem with my safety. Moreover, this task won't be for too long. It'll follow afterward. He then strictly ordered, you two have to protect that girl at all cost. If she is hurt in the slightest or someone was able to harm her, you will both have to answer to me. When he said that, a murderous aura exploded from his body as his eyes held frost. The two men didn't dare to say anything and could only bow their heads and follow this order. He would not allow harm to befall on her. Meanwhile, Yen Su did not linger. His last thoughts were on Mo Linyuan's real identity. But he tossed this problem to the side for now he will send someone to investigate later. Right now, it was more important for him to study Yi Li's actions closely. What's that pipsqueak Yimu doing? He couldn't help but thought as he dashed away from official Liu's residence. The main courtyard was currently bustling with noise and excitement. From this, Yimu knew that the Wen family had finally arrived. They want to assassinate me. Yi Mu rolled her eyes. She then thought of a solution. Hiding in a vase in the outer hall, she entered the turtle aura. For a long period, several groups of people had entered the house. They had all come in without noticing her hiding spot. After a while, she could hear one person rush directly inside the inner room. Finding out that the person he wasn't looking for wasn't in there, he left, muttering a few words. As Yi Mu listened to the voices outside, there wasn't the slightest bit of fluctuation in her heart as she seemed to become one with the vase, immobile. Unexpectedly, she was able to hear snippets of Yen Zhu's voice among the mixed conversations. That's strange. Could it be that she went to the main courtyard? Yen Su wanted to go to the main courtyard to take a look. But as soon as he finished speaking, a hand stretched out from the vase beside him. Ah! Don't go! Im inside here a muffled sound came from the vase. Yen Su was stunned for a moment. His expression of Yi Mu was that, although she was still young, this little girl was a ruthless one. It just never occurred to him that she would hide again. And in such a conspicuous spot nonetheless. What are you standing there for? Yi Mu's stifled voice echoed when she found out he wasn't about to extend a hand, I can't get out. He shouldn't have laughed. However, Yen Su could not help but smile. He walked over and stretched out his hand, swiftly grabbing Yi Mu by the collar and lifting her out of the vase. This posturite was no different from carrying a wolf cub. Cough cough, cough. Yi Mu went as she was held up by the collar. Flapping her stout arms and legs in the air, she angrily said, Bastard. What are you laughing at? Why aren't you letting me down? DMN, you're suffocating this treasure baby. Now, even Yen Zhu's eyes were filled with laughter. Who would call themselves treasure? She doesn't have shame one bit. He carefully placed Yi Mu on the ground. The tiny figure was not even as long as his legs. Her hair was in disarray, clothes were askew and the tender, white bun's face seethed with anger. He couldn't explain how cute this sight was. Why are you hiding in a vase? Yen Su couldn't help but ask, bending to her level. Yi Mu merely rolled her eyes and answered imposingly, Who has the brains to fight me? They're all stupid. No one was even able to notice me. As she spoke, her eyebrows rose and her chin was held up. Her face, which looked so small, failed to conceal how pleased she was with herself. Yen Su pursed his lips to hold back his laughter. Yi Mu only glared at him angrily. Hey! What are you laughing at? Her tone took a more serious note as she remembered her request, did you manage to save the person I wanted you to save? When Yen Su heard this, his smile gradually disappeared and he only pointed behind him. Only then did Yi Mu realize that two men standing behind him, did her expression became more solemn. But Yen Su stood there with the calm aura, waiting for her reply. This who are these two people? She could only ask confusedly. Chapter, 79 Yen Su raised his eyebrows. You don't know them. The man you wanted me to save is like a lucky koi living inside the cool waters of the Imperial Citadel. You're the only one who is in trouble. These two men were sent to protect you. 
Yi Mu heard this and her expression turned even more serious bit by bit. Protect me. He's not leaving. The two men listened and both knelt down in front of her. Young miss, his highness has said that he still had things to do. For now, he refused to leave the Yu country. Nonsense. Yi Mu was livid, what nonsense is this? Yi Mu's little face scrunched up into a frown. You go back and tell him I don't need protection. Tell him to go back to his country quickly. The two men looked at each other. One of them with a deep voice apologetically answered, We are sorry, young miss. Until we receive an order from young master, no one is leaving. Yi Mu felt deeply conflicted. Mo Lin Yuan said because he had another purpose, he wouldn't leave. Just when she was at her wit's end, there was a knock at the door. Yi Mu glanced at them knowingly and the three men in the room immediately disappeared. She tidied herself up a bit and only then did she open the door. Young miss. Xiao Chiu hurriedly snuck in. What you wanted this servant to ask around, this servant has finally brought back some news. She leaned in and whispered excitedly, the Wen family had been in an uproar all morning. They wanted to force the general to release the main wife, but the general couldn't stand them boasting him around anymore was very angry. At this point, Zyokia's voice had risen to a pitch, he asked how the Wen family could face him when he showed them proof of for the madam's infidelity. In the end, both sides took a step back, the general promised not to marry and the people of the Wen family also agreed to send madam to the temple for cultivation. They are to send her today. As Yi Mu listened to Zyokia's report, she couldn't distinguish what she truly felt in her heart. It seemed that the Wen family's influence was still very strong. After all, Yi Li had a violent personality. If it were anyone else, they would have died a hundred times over. She waved for Xiao Qiu to retreat and unexpectedly, another person rushed in through the door. Young miss, this is bad. The servant came in and declared loudly. Madam is going to the temple to do some reflection and cultivation. But before she leaves, she was asking to see you. Meet me. Yi Mu's heart skipped a beat. It seemed like this servant had come bearing news of ill intentions. However, even if she wanted to resist it was impossible not to go when Madam had summoned her. Yi Mu had thought for a moment and then made her mind up. She then walked towards the front hall. While she still hadn't stepped a foot inside, Yi Mu had already heard the sound of sobbing. It was likely that the Wen family did not expect Yi Li to hold evidence, thinking perhaps that their original plan to pressure Yi Li into letting Wen Ru go would be successful. But now, they had no choice but to retreat and let Wen Ru unwillingly go to the temple. Yi Mu sighed and thought back to the first time she saw Wen Ru. Maidservants had crowded around her, speaking of her important seat had been a sight to behold. But in a short period of time, she fell from her high position. And until now, she was unable to redeem herself. Truly, in ancient times, the status of a woman was unfortunately inferior. Regardless of her identity, they could only live on by the will of men. After she had walked in, the entire room had turned silent. After a long time, a female voice dripping with hatred and anger, sarcastically said, You are the Yi Mu. When Yi Mu looked up, she saw that the front hall was filled with people. An imposing woman who at the head wore a long, luxurious skirt. The moment her red eyes met with Yi Mu's, she fixed her with a hostile gaze. Yi Mu saw that Yi Li was among them and relaxed momentarily, Yes, I am. Turning to Yi Li she asked, Father. Who are they? Yi Mu walked over to his side, but she knew the answer. She was only trying to find a comrade in this battlefield now. Yi Li bowed and said, They are your mother's family they were looking for you after some time he then added, You should go and accompany your mother to the temple to cultivate. Oh looking for me? But what could accompanying them to the temple help? Yi Mu asked in a low voice, pretending to be afraid. Yi Li still hadn't replied when Wen Ru, who was sitting by the side, raised her red, tear-stained face to look at her. Muir. Mother wanted to see you before she leaves. You should come with me to inner room and well speak there. Chapter, 80. What does she have left to say? Yi Mu felt very unwilling in her heart, 
but with the Wen family here, she knew Yi Li would not reject Wen Rus' last request. Sure enough, Yi Mu raised her head to look at Yi Li, in time to see him nod towards the matriarch of the Wen family, Muir, you and your mother should part on good terms. Was the relationship between the two of them really good? Think of that father. But Yi Mu could only nod and she obediently went with Wen Ru to the inner room of the front hall. There were just the two of them inside when Ru didn't allow anyone else to enter. She was wearing a plain, white muslin dress as she walked to the front, her backside revealing a trace of sadness. Yi Mu's entire body became vigilant, but she still didn't know what scheme Wen Ru had under her sleeve. Wen Ru walked towards the head seat and finally sat down. She looked at her with warm, swollen eyes. But in an instant, there was a hint of viciousness. Are you satisfied now? What? Yi Mu could only ponder what misdeeds she had done to Wen Ru, but she could only remember her being the one to scheme on a child like her. Leaving Yi Mu no room to reply, she continued, You framed me and then found a scapegoat to push the blame onto me. I didn't expect that a child like you would be so scheming. Yi Mu tried to open her mouth to speak, but seeing Wen Ru's resolute attitude, she knew her words were going to fall on deaf ears. When Russ fingers, which had been placed on the armrest, clenched tightly against the polished wood. Her knuckles turned white, and her crazed eyes suddenly turned somber for a moment. But there was a terrifying look in them, like a madman. For so many years I had stepped on so numerous people but, in the end, I only got destroyed in your hands. Ridiculous, it's truly laughable. Yi Mu was currently standing in front of her. The short person wasn't even as tall as her, she wasn't even an adult like her. The more she looked, the more Wen Ru couldn't understand, and the more her mind was driven to chaos and hatred. How could she have been defeated by a child? Yi Mu's face tightened up for a while before she finally spoke in a serious tone. Facts are the cold truth, and I don't understand why there should be reasons behind them. I only know that evil will always be found out in the end. She couldn't help but add icily, before you blame others for exposing you, why don't you reflect on your own mistakes? Shut up! The moment when Ru raised her voice, her eyes became increasingly ferocious, yes, I was wrong. My biggest mistake was to let you live until now. I know why you wanted to deal with me. She released a high-pitched laugh, isn't it because I killed your mother? Have you been waiting for this day for a long time? Yi Mu merely whispered, you almost killed me. But did you die? Wen Ru sneered as her face blushed abnormally. The moment I get sent to the temple for who knows how long, it won't be long General finds a reason to divorce me. And what's next? He will remarry, of course. When my children become BSTRDS like you, will you against them too, you little, vicious BSTRD? Do you really want the General to have only one child? She finally said. Yi Mu immediately felt speechless. In Wen Ru's mind, she was an evil person to the extreme. Anything else she would say right now would change nothing. Think what you want finally having enough, Yi Mu took half a step back as she prepared to turn around. Regardless of whether you believe me or not, I won't provoke others if they don't provoke me. Wen Ru smiled gloomily. Oh, yes. You won't provoke others. Hearing her maniacal laughter, Yi Mu felt that the atmosphere was getting bizarre by the minute. She raised her head to look back, only to see Wen Ru scream as she pounced towards her. With her reflexes, she subconsciously caught a hard item hurled towards her and in the next second, the item was fully pushed to her hands. Hot blood soaked her hand, causing Yi Mu to widen her eyes slightly. At this moment, Wen Ru's wan and pale face was very close to hers. I won't give you the chance to live a good life. You'll go to hell with me. Parting with her last words, a sly smile appeared at the corner of her mouth. In the next second, several figures barged inside the room. Chapter, 81 Ruer The one matriarch screamed in horror. The moment when Ru fell limp to the ground next to a stunned Yi Mu, her mother ran in and cradled her blood-stained body in her arms. At this time, when Ru's breath was weakening as she tightly held on to her mother's hand. She said with some difficulty, it's her she wanted to kill Mebikos. I killed her mother. 
Yi Li was only able to come inside the room after a while, what's going on? The moment when Ru saw Yi Li, her tears immediately began to fall. General, General she choked, covered in blood and looking so forlorn. I Arya really didn't betray you was it was her. She. Framed me. When Ru extended her hand towards Yi Li. For ten years. We were husband and wife general, I am willing to use my life to prove me. Innocent her last words trailed off. Yi Li's gaze sharpened with every word, but without giving him time to process things, when Ru's hand had drooped down in the next second. The Prime Minister's wife hugged her corpse and wailed loudly. Ruer. How can you be so stupid? Mother knows that you're innocent. Mother knows that too. Yi Mu, awakened from her initial shock, was forced to take two steps back by the loud noises coming from the people surrounding her. She loosened her grip on the dagger, and it fell to the ground in a clattering noise. Seeing the blood-stained dagger, a woman beside the Prime Minister's wife pointed at her and shouted, Quick, grab her. The crime of assassinating the madam is a crime worthy of death, and she cannot be let off. Once she finished speaking, the surrounding people wanted to move, but Yi Li was quick to step forward, stop. Inside the general's estate, the Wen family didn't dare to act rashly. Therefore, the Wen matriarch could only raise her head and indignantly said, Could it be that the general wants to shield this murderer? Her voice rose to a seething tone as she declared, You want to become enemies with my house for a concubine? I didn't kill anyone. Yi Mu suddenly spoke up and everyone's gaze fell on her. They were fuming and untrustful, but the more disadvantageous the situation was, the calmer she became. With a rigid face, she repeated her words in a louder and clear voice, I didn't kill anyone. Nonsense. The one matriarch shakily pointed at her with bloodshot eyes, Ruer said that you killed her because you wanted to avenge your mother. She spat, how can a mere concubine compare to my daughter's life? It's fine if you slander my daughter's innocence, but you took her life instead. They'll send someone to arrest you right now. Yi Mu knew that if she didn't say it now, she wouldn't have the chance to argue later on. Hence, she shouted loudly. She committed suicide. It was far from her seat. She had obviously been stabbed while standing, and I wasn't even as tall as her legs. How could I have stabbed her in the chest? She pointed out the cold facts in an assured tone, furthermore, a human's wound from suicide would just be a straight cut to the gut. If I'm going to stab her, it should have been a vertical cut. As for why she wanted to frame me don't have to say anything. What a sharp tongue. The one matriarch carefully handed over one rust corpse to the people beside her and stood up, incensed. She approached Yi Mu, rage seething from her every step. Are you saying that my daughter framed you? Who do you think you are? You'd use her suicide as an excuse. Yi Mu raised her head and looked at her without the slightest fear, she was afraid that I would act against her child because she knew that the end result of her visit to the temple had already decided her fate. She was afraid that she would be abandoned, afraid that her child would be reduced to nothing. She mistakenly thought that I was the one who harmed her. She did not have the heart to repent even after she died. Shut up. The Prime Minister's wife reached for Yi Mu's collar with her sharp fingernails. Easily like that, Yi Mu had nakedly exposed Wen Rus' true motive, which caused her to be so livid that her entire body began to tremble. Her daughter had risked her life to protect her reputation. She definitely wouldn't allow anyone to sully it. No matter how you quibble, as a concubine, we will see you your death for sure. She stretched out her hand to throw Yi Mu beside, but then she got up and said to Yi Li, if the general doesn't want to deal with this matter, then this madam doesn't mind taking her to the imperial court. I ask for your just decision. Chapter, 82 Enough. Yi Li waved his hand as his forehead began to swell. It was obvious that he was extremely annoyed with this matter. Yi Mu's words calmed him down from his previous anger. After pondering for a moment, he knew that Yi Mu was not lying. He, too, had felt this was all part of Wen Ru's scheme. Now that she was dead, she could preserve her reputation while taking out her revenge. But Yi Mu. He stared at the little child in front of him with his bell-like eyes. 
Wen Ru was determined to be buried with Yi Mu. And with the Wen family here, it was turning into a complicated matter. Does the general want to shield this little beast? To harm one's own mother and offend her superior such a disloyal and unfilial child even if they were to die ten thousand times, it would not be a pity at all. The prime minister's wife never thought that the general would shield this concubine-born girl even when her daughter's corpse was in front of him. Even Yi Li had hesitated repeatedly. Could it be that the precious body of her daughter was inferior to that to a concubine? Thinking of this, her eyes were filled with even more abhorrence. Her high cheekbones and thin lips were tightly pressed together. Today, she was determined to kill this Yi Mu. Yi Li really couldn't bear to part with Yi Mu. After all, this child had given him quite a few surprises, but for her, it was obviously not worth the trouble to start a fight with the Prime Minister's estate. Moreover, he had wanted to stabilize his position in the Prime Minister's side so. He stared at Yi Mu for a moment, and Yi Mu likewise was looking at him expectantly. She had already explained such an obvious plot so clearly, so it was impossible for Yi Li to not be able to tell the truth from the false. Even though Yi Mu was thinking this in her heart, she was actually very unsure with Yi Li's decision. Indeed, with every passing second, Yi Li's gaze directed at her only became icier. Yi Mu's heart slightly trembled, and then she heard Yi Li say, Mother-in-law is right. He turned around, no longer fixing his sight at Yi Mu, Yi Mu murdered her mother, the evidence. Father. Yi Mu closed his eyes and suddenly shouted, interrupting his words. This address made Yi Li feel a deep sense of embarrassment. He had actually never felt this way before, but for some reason, when Yi Mu had called out to him as her father, he felt his face tighten for the most inexplicable reasons and even felt a burning sensation. You what else do you have to say? Yi Li's voice sounded very weak, as the people of the Wen residence were very domineering as they stared at Yi Mu. Moreover, they were somewhat impatient. Nevertheless, she was just a concubine, why do they need to listen to what she has to say? They all thought, discontent evident on their faces. When Yi Mu opened her eyes again, her round, cat-like eyes were completely tranquil. She even smiled, revealing her little canine teeth. Father, bend over. I have something to tell you. General. Why do you still have to talk to her? Just take her down immediately. The one matriarch urged from the other side. Yi Li waved a hand to silence their fretful demands. He hesitated for a moment before bowing down. Finally, he heard Yi Mu whisper. Father, if I had a way to kill the Prime Minister, would you still let me die? Yi Li was stunned and his entire body turned rigid. Seeing Yi Li's expression rapidly change, the Prime Minister's wife became slightly uneasy. General, what are you waiting for? It's just a mere slave born from a concubine. Do you want my Prime Minister's residence to serve justice ourselves? Yi Li didn't look at her and was only staring blankly at Yi Mu. He saw the little girl's pair of clear eyes looking at him with a light that he didn't understand. Her only plan had been to follow under Mo Linyuan's shadow, doing nothing along the way. Now that the time came that Mo Linyuan would help her obtain that elusive city boundary map, her current situation became too pressing to ignore. With the other party insistent of getting rid of her, it caused her to feel a sense of mania. The urge to intervene and end the battle quickly became more intense, thus she had opened her mouth to finally speak in the last minute. And the moment she said those words, she had now truly ingrained her existence into this world. Chapter, 83 Yi Mu stood on her tiptoes and whispered word by word into Yi Li's ear. The Prime Minister is openly supporting the Zhao Emperor on the surface, but I know that the imperial concubine Ru that the Prime Minister had sent into the palace is pregnant. She continued, furthermore, he had asked someone to make a secret diagnosis and found out that this child was definitely a male. Now that His Majesty was ill, the number of people who knew of his illness wasn't just a few who wouldn't have their own ulterior motives. If the news of the Prime Minister protecting this unborn child were to be found out by the Zhao Emperor, does father still think that the residence of Prime Minister will be safe and sound? As Yi Li listened to her, the expression in his eyes kept changing. And if that's the case father wants to kill her daughter, who is willing to help him with her prodigious ability, for the sake of the enemy. 
Yi Mu's voice was exceptionally ice cold when she said the last final words. It even caused Yi Li to become terrified to the point that he broke out in a cold sweat. He suddenly stood up ramrod straight and fixed his hesitant gaze at Yi Mu, asking somewhat uncertainly, Who the hell are you? Yi Mu was amused with his words and cheekily replied, Of course, I'm your daughter. Moreover, I'm your daughter who adores you with all her heart. Yet, you can bear to let your daughter to suffer these injustices. Her eyes swept over one rust corpse, and her meaning was clear at a glance. Yi Li's heart was in turmoil, and he even felt a little fear towards Yi Mu. However, thinking back to how she had told him that the emperor was critically ill, how she had gifted him with the ancient treasure, and how she had provided him with a way to get rid of the prime minister and now knew she had indeed been helping him all along. Thinking about this Yi Li gradually calmed down. The prime minister's wife was worried, but she continued to interrogate him sternly, General, what do you mean by this? Are you trying to cover this little bastard? Yi Li closed his eyes. When he opened them once more, looking at the prime minister's wife again, there wasn't a shred of fear anymore. If what Yi Mu said was true, then there would be a big show between the prime minister and the Zhao emperor. If it was fake Yi Mu was still child, yet she was able to think of such a scheme in the face of danger. It was still also worth it to offend the prime minister's family for her quick mind. He said resolutely, there are still some suspicious points regarding the assassination of my wife. Furthermore, this is my family matter. This general needs to investigate carefully so I won't wrongly accuse a good person and won't cover up the culprit. So the one matriarch was so angered by his words that her entire body trembled. She pointed at Yi Li, and only after a long time did she speak again. So, you're trying to cover up for her. You don't have the slightest hesitation to become enemies with the prime minister's estate. Yi Li also wasn't a virtuous person. He sneered, my mother-in-law, I respect you therefore I call you my mother-in-law. Since when Ru has left, I want her to leave this world in a decent manner. Are you threatening me? The prime minister's wife found the ongoing situation hard to believe. She's your wife. If this matter were to spread out, would the general's estate still have any face left? Yi Li swept a glance at Yi Mu, whose complexion was a little pale. He had a feeling that something was off, and his tone became impatient. You think I care about reputation? If the prime minister would not interfere in this matter, then my wife will be given a proper burial, and her child will still be my legitimate son for the rest of his life. However, if the prime minister does interfere, then the consequences will be dire. The prime minister's wife was so angered that her vision went black. If it wasn't for someone supporting her, she would have fainted on the spot. All right all right. She was so furious that she started laughing. Her chest was felt tight that it became painful to breathe and her eyes were brimming with tears. However, she could only laugh crazily. I've long heard the rumors that Yi Li was cold-blooded and heartless, but I had always thought that others were exaggerating. Her voice relayed her grievances and anger, but my daughter she's been married to you for over a decade. And this is what you only did for her in the end. Her tears fell and she gritted her teeth and bitterly said, I wonder if there will be a day where I would risk everything for someone in the future. Since you are so heartless, then from today on, this prime minister's estate will treat it as if we never married this daughter to the Yi residence. Chapter, 84 As the Wen family left with a gloomy atmosphere, Yi Li also finally felt exhaustion come over him. He glanced at Wen Rus corpse, then had his servants wrap it and hide it for now. Hell deal with this matter later. The unfortunate Wen Ru thought that if she died, she would be able to take Yi Mu to the grave with her. Yet, who knew that it wouldn't happen? If she had known earlier, she definitely wouldn't have chosen to die. Yi Mu looked at her corpse without a hint of sympathy. There was none, after all, she had threatened her life. Even if she had died, she wouldn't show mercy in the afterlife. Furthermore, since they insisted on bringing her trouble, then they shouldn't blame her for taking the initiative. Sure enough, in the next second, Yi Li's gaze fell on her, speak, how will you prove that what you just said was all true? When Yi Mu heard this, she fixed her gaze on Yi Li for a moment. She was silent for a while and then she lowered her head and said, If I were to say that what I just said was a lie to protect my life, 
would father kill me out of anger? Although there was such a conjecture in his earlier speculations, when Yi Mu really admitted it, Yi Li didn't become mad as he had imagined. He frowned and was silent for a long time before letting out a cold snort. You dare to deceive me? You little brat, you must have a lot of guts. Even though he spoke with a straight face, his words didn't have any anger in them. All he could say was that Yi Mu had worked hard for so long, so she more or less held some place in his heart. Yi Mu seemed to sense this and let out a long sigh of relief. Actually those words were not a lie. The person who had told me that the emperor was in critical danger last time, had come to find me again and told me about this news. I don't know if it's true or not, but with father's wit, you should be able to find it out quickly. When Yi Li heard that it was that mysterious person again, his thick eyebrows immediately wrinkled. He asked in a deep voice, since that's the case, why didn't you say so earlier? He stared oppressively at Yi Mu, as if wanting to know what else she was hiding from him. Yi Mu shook his head, at first, I didn't tell because I was afraid of speaking such words, but father would think that I was only thinking of falsehood and harboring hatred towards the madam. Moreover, I had to protect myself from the madam's actions earlier and I was very afraid that if the matter had been fake, the madam would use it against me. At the end of the day, she was the one who had spoken and protected herself. And just recently, she had been forced into a corner. This fact inexplicably dug into Yi Li's cold heart and all thoughts of fury immediately disappeared. If it were any child, it would have been too difficult for them to think about things so thoroughly in that case, he could not blame her for her secretive actions. Yi Li was silent for a moment before whispering, This matter you did well. But any information that reaches Yu Yu must tell father immediately. And if that man in black comes looking for you again, you shouldn't hide anything from me. Yi Mu nodded. Seeing that she was well behaved, Yi Li couldn't help but reach out his hand and touch her head of which the curls had come loose from the earlier struggle with Wen Ru. This girl could also be considered unlucky. Not only had she experienced an unimaginable disaster, even the scene from before had made her lose her former liveliness. As Yi Li thought of this, a strange feeling spread in his heart. Especially when her fine and soft hair rubbed against his palm, he suddenly felt the endearing feeling of the words, blood is thicker than water. I almost sent you out together with the Wen family. Do you hate me? Before Yi Li could come back to his senses, he had already asked such a question. When Yi Mu heard this, she pondered for a moment before answering. Father, is power really so important? In order to be an emperor is it necessary to lose people important to you? Chapter 85 Yi Mu's words made the corner of Yi Li's mouth once again tighten. He withdrew his hand back and conspicuously placed it behind his back. The country that the Qi family rules over half of it should have been mine. But if they refuse to give it to me, then I can only seize it from them. After he finished speaking, he looked down from above, his face filled with an almost iron-blooded coldness. After a long time, Yi Mu ultimately made up her mind. I understand. Father, I will definitely help you. And this time, she was serious. Regardless of who it was, since she had interfered in the chaos of the Yu country, she must make it come to an early end. On the other side, Emo Lin Yuan was sitting on a swing in a vast courtyard, listening to his subordinate's detailed report on what had happened in the Emo country during his absence. He had changed out of his slave's clothes into pure, white clothes. He was dressed in a rare brocade the color of moonlight and his head was adorned with a silver crown. He looked like an immortal child that had fallen into the mortal world. A subordinate couldn't help but add, His Highness was kidnapped for a few months and the situation in the court has only gotten more tense by the day. His Highness has to go back and take charge of the situation. Mo Linyuan knew clearly the dire need for him to return back, but. There's no rush. Mo Linyuan frowned, I want to take someone with me, but to take her with me is an extremely troublesome process. Therefore, I've decided to support someone to make things easier. This is something I'm serious about. The person kneeling on the ground widened his eyes when he heard this. Who needed the crown prince to muster such a large force? He anxiously replied, but this is a matter of the Yu country, our participation is no less than igniting a fire. Mo Linyuan smiled. 
Not at all. I asked you to investigate that person called Yen Su. Did you manage to find anything? Not yet but I believe there will be news soon. Mo Linyuan ignored their hesitant gazes as he kept his thoughts to himself. Then there's no rush. He smiled, the person I want is here, so no matter how chaotic the Yu country is, I only want to stay here. A few days later, the general's manner was in mourning. At the same time, the atmosphere in the residence had become heavy. Yi Li had used the treasures in the old courtyard and was preparing for huge battle. Yi Mu felt that it was very obvious that the fastest way to calm the chaos was to let Yi Li successfully ascend the dragon throne. After all, no matter who became emperor, that person's position would probably be unstable with Yi Li still alive in the flesh. Moreover, she didn't even have to use her hand with someone as powerful as Yi Li by her side. Why does she still have to sacrifice her safety? Furthermore, as long as Yen Su didn't pay her any attention, then he would not have any chance to turn the tables on the battlefield. And if Mo Linyuan was really able to obtain the Forbidden Army map, then Yi Li could force his way to the Imperial Palace with absolute certainty. Therefore, since the chances of Yi Li succeeding were so high, what was there for her to hesitate? And as for Yen Shusha could only apologize. Seeing that he was also unwilling to return to her, she had no other choice but to let him be. In any case, she knew that official Lu had been drugged and Mo Linyuan's subordinates had returned to his side. It was safer for him to stay in that official's estate than to stay in here in the treacherous general's residence. Yi Tian had come to look for trouble with her several times, and due to the ugly matter with Wen Ru, the prime minister's estate had already begun to show signs of breaking away from the general's residence. However, the prime minister kept the affair of whether or not the concubine Ro was pregnant very tight-lipped Yi Li had no way of finding out, so he delayed his plans and waited for the best opportunity to make a move. Until one day, a banquet was thrown in the imperial palace, inviting all unmarried ladies of aristocratic families in the city. Chapter, 86 Young lady, you wanted to enter the palace. Previously, Xiao Lang had always thought that Aji would be in danger if he left the residence but now that Aji was able to write a letter every now and then he was obviously safe. Yimu nodded, feeling a headache coming, I don't know what the other party's motive is, but logically speaking with my mother is dead no matter who it is, they have to be filial and pay their respects. However, the invitation only invited me. Hearing Yi Mu's words, Yi Xiaolang felt a little uneasy again. There can't be a trap, right? Never mind that, I will still go with the young lady. Recently, he had been practicing martial arts with the two experts beside the young mistress. And his improvement had increased by leaps and bounds that he would definitely be able to protect the young lady now. Yi Mu shook her head, it's dangerous in the palace. I can't take you with me, so you should only continue your studies diligently at home. Did you memorize the phonetic sheet I gave you last time? Aji had learned it in two hours. How many days have you been learning it? When it came to studying, Yi Xiaolang was only at a loss for words. Two will continue studying with him when the young mistress comes back. I knew you would be lazy. Yi Mu glared at him in exasperation. At this moment, Xiao Chiu ran in, a little alarmed, young lady, the general is here. Yi Li. Why would he come to her courtyard? Yi Mu narrowed her eyes and chased other people away to welcome him. Father, she greeted reverently. Hm Yi Li's gaze swept across the exquisite courtyard before landing on her. Muir must prepare well for the palace banquet to be held in three days. Yi Mu pursed his lips and asked again, but why did you invite me? Shouldn't you invite older sister instead? Yi Li lowered his eyes to look at the exquisite little child in front of him. As time passed, the little thing in front of him became more and more pleasing to his eyes when she would look at someone with her eyes wide open, it was as if that person was her entire world. She really can't bear to be like this, but the person who becomes a powerful in the future does not care about his own daughter. What else could she do to obtain his pity and favor? He unexpectedly asked, Muir, what do you think about your father's treatment of you? Father naturally treats me extremely well. Yi Mu replied without thinking. The people of the capital knew that Yi Li favored his daughter due to the blessings of the prime minister's estate, so what else could she say? Yi Li nodded his head, actually, 
the reason you were on the list of people to enter the palace was because of concubine Ro. And it was also for father's sake. Yi Mu raised her head and looked at him, her pupils narrowing as he asked with a smile, father pushed the boat together with the current because there was something that he wanted Muir to do. Mare is very smart. Yi Mu really didn't know what to make of Yi Li's straightforward admission. She was only six years old and was not yet an adult. If Yi Li didn't trust her too much, then he must have some other motive. Father what do you want me to do? Yi Li raised his eyebrows slightly. Did you remember before that you said concubine Ro was pregnant? Unfortunately, during this period of time of searching, I was not able to find anything. Now that there will be a banquet in the palace, and the imperial consort Ro will also attend it. Father wants me to investigate. Yi Mu's eyebrows were knotted into a frown, and her heart felt a little troubled. That's the only reason. Yi Li stroked her head, yes, that is the reason. Later on, I will bring the garments that you will need to wear to the palace. After Muir enters, be careful. Yi Mu nodded as she watched Yi Li leave she knew that her intuition was telling her something was amiss, so she had to prepare something in the next three days. Chapter, 87 Yi Mu nodded as she watched Yi Li leave she knew that her intuition was telling her something was amiss, so she had to prepare something in the next three days. On the day she entered the palace, countless majestic carriages were scattered around the capital, and the common folk watched from the sides. It was a rare sight to see so many noble women leave their residence at the same time they all hoped for a chance to catch a glimpse of their beautiful faces. Yi Mu's carriage was also among them, heading towards the direction of the imperial palace. Did you find anything? Before, there had been two experts sent by Emo Linyuan, but Yi Mu had asked one of them to become hers and Emo Linyuan's bridge to communicate, so there was currently only one person with her now. Furthermore, even if she brought him with her to the palace, it would prove risky as there was bound to be many eyes. Young lady, the imperial palace is heavily guarded, so I don't have much information about it. However, one of the oddities floating around is that two princesses have died in succession recently. Other than that, there's no other doubtful news surrounding it. Yi Mu stroked her chin. Indeed, having too few ears and eyes was a difficult task. That concubine Ro inviting her into the palace would surely deal with her. As if in a blink of an eye, they arrived at the entrance of the imperial palace. All the guards had stayed outside, but this was not the end. All the maids had to be checked by security, and those with skills or weapons were all temporarily detained. When Yi Mu was inspected, she was curious and bribed him to speak, Big brother, why is the investigation so strict this time? After the guard accepted Yi Mu's money and saw that Yi Mu was a cute, soft, little sister, he couldn't help but relax his facial expression as he whispered to her, His Majesty will also be attending today's banquet. With that, he went to investigate the next group leaving Yi Mu bewildered. That sickly Yu Emperor wanted to participate. Before this, the Yu Emperor had been recuperating because of a serious illness. Of course, this was shown as only a minor illness on the outside. But looking at the time, he hadn't appeared in front of anyone for several months now. Did this have something to do with concubine Ro summoning her into the palace? Yi Mu entered the palace together with the massive crowd with a skeptical look on her face. According to her understanding, the banquet this time was mainly for the second prince to choose an imperial concubine, and this had nothing to do with Yi Mu. Even if the second prince wanted to be linked with Yi Li, he should have chosen Yi Li's direct daughter and not a concubine-born daughter like her. Although it was her first time going out, she had been curious for a while and had lost interest in the place. After all, even though the place was luxurious and refined, it didn't look too different from the palaces she ahd come to know in her old lifetime. The empress was in charge of the overall event, and Yi Mu sat upright in the seats for young ladies below. When would this banquet end? She wondered. At this time, a servant girl took the opportunity to pour some tea and secretly slip a slip of paper to Yi Mu. Yi Mu's eyebrows twitched, but she didn't say anything as she unfolded the paper. There were just a few words written on it, second brother requests marriage, and you must agree to it. Yi Mu's eyes instantly widened. Second brother? Could he be referring to the second prince? And he had asked her to marry him, so she had to simply agree. 
What the hell is this bullshit? She cursed internally. Yi Mu analyzed her situation calmly. This second prince had a transparent background and the only reason she remembered him was that in the plot, after the next emperor you had successfully ascended to the throne, all his brothers had died. Then was this note truly from him? Without giving Yi Mu time to think things further, the empress from the head seat had asked abruptly with a smile, My son, with so many noble girls present, which one do you think is the most outstanding? If there is you like then let us make her a married lady, she jested, thinking her son wouldn't have anyone he fancied. The empress' words were actually polite. And everyone was here to become an imperial concubine, and those who didn't want to be chosen wouldn't show up for no reason. So as long as the second prince had chosen them, what else was there to disagree to? Of course, Yi Mu was the only one with this exception. She had been specially invited to the palace, and she didn't come for the purpose of being chosen as a wife. Moreover, she was only six years old and was a concubine-born daughter. The second prince would never choose her. Right? At first, Yi Mu was very sure of this, but now, she wasn't really sure. Sure enough, when the warm and gentle second prince heard this, he smiled and looked in Yi Mu's direction. There really is such a person, and she's quite strongly and deeply ingrained inside my heart. Yi Mu's heart skipped a beat. She was just thinking things, right? The empress was also stunned for a moment, as if she had not expected the second prince to really choose someone. She could not help but ask, who is my son referring to? Chapter 88 The second prince seemed somewhat embarrassed as he smiled. That person Iset is the daughter of the general's residence, young lady Yi Mu. The empress followed the second prince's hand and looked at Yi Mu, her expression turning a little odd. If it was any other girl, she might have said, let's get on with this decision then. After all, this second prince did not have any ambitions even if he had his own soldiers. But this girl. She was stunned for a moment, then asked, pretending to Yi be ignorant of Yi Mu's identity, where is young lady Yi? Only then did Yi Mu come back to her senses and walked forward to pay her respects. Empress, this subject is none other than the concubine-born daughter of the Yi family, Yi Mu. She stressed the word concubine-born heavily. Although the second prince also had a handsome appearance, he was already twenty-five years old. Are they asking for him to be her new father? Moreover, she had also heard that when he was outside the border, he would always delay being married and now, he should be at the age where he's in a rush to get married and have children. Why should a mere kid like her she be chosen? Could it be did Yan Su had said something to him? But no matter the case was, she had no intention of marrying here. The empress sized her up from top to bottom with a smile. You really are a pretty child. No wonder my son but seeing that young lady Yi is still young. And this empress is unaware if you're willing to marry into the imperial family? Was this a chance given by the heavens to reject him? Since the empress was easy to talk to, Yi Mu didn't dare refuse. She was just a concubine-born daughter, after all. Normally, the empress wouldn't ask such a question and immediately refuse. And to marry the second prince? Yi Mu glanced at the second prince. He was looking at her with a smile, as if he was confident that she wouldn't reject him. Yi Mu thought for a moment before shaking her head. Your servantoisn't want to marry. What? Many of the women present cried out in alarm. After all, the second prince was still a prince he had his own militia and he held real power. For a concubine-born daughter this was a good marriage, yet this girl refused to marry him. Indeed, she is too young and ignorant of everything. They all thought. Yen Su who was hiding in the dark saw that Yi Mu refused and angrily punched the tree in front of him. Seriously what a silly girl. He was trying to save her. Even if Yi Mu had refused, he couldn't just let her off the hook. But what could he do? For some reason, a young man's face suddenly appeared in his mind. If he knew that Yi Mu was in such a predicament, Yen Su was sure he would be able to think of something unorthodox. With this thought in mind, he turned around and headed away from the direction of the imperial palace. When the empress heard Yi Mu's rejection, she seemed to be stunned for a moment before a hint of a smile appeared on her lips. Since young lady Yi doesn't agree, then. Imperial mother. 
When the second prince saw that Yi Mu had refused, he suddenly became anxious, but this son likes young Lady Yi. I hope mother will reconsider. The empress frowned, feeling troubled. Before she could speak, a male voice rang out. Nonsense. Since she doesn't want to marry, do you still want to force her to marry? Is my son so afraid that he won't be able to take an imperial concubine? Hearing this voice, the empress took the lead and made everyone kneel. The empress respectfully greeted, Your consort welcomes his majesty. His majesty lives a hundred lifetimes. His majesty lives a hundred lifetimes. The other people in the banquet followed suit. Yi Mu was shocked and hurriedly paid her respects with the crowd. She didn't think that the emperor would really come. Wasn't he seriously ill? However, when she saluted, she noticed with her sharp eyes that the emperor seemed to be really spirited, as if had recovered from a sickness. Beside him was an extremely flirtatious girl, and it was needless to say, that person was ought to be the daughter of the Prime Minister Imperial Concubine Ro. Yi Mu was speechless. Something was truly brewing at coming straight at her. Chapter, 89 Everyone, rise. Thank you, Your Majesty. Everyone stood up. Recently, there were many people who secretly told that the Emperor was very sick. However, with the appearance of this energetic Emperor, all the rumors turned instantly cold. After all, how could a sick person still be this active, looking full of life? However, Yi Mu felt it was strange and looked at the Emperor a few more times before discovering some clues. For example, why was the Emperor wearing thin robe instead of his usual dragon robes? Also, the Emperor's cheeks were red, but why were his eyes bloodshot? In addition, she was certain that this person would die of an illness early next summer. It was already autumn, so how could he possibly recover so fast in just a few months? After the Emperor sat down at the head seat, he continued to speak to the second prince, All right, this little girl is unwilling. Choose again until you are satisfied. His very explicit words made all the noble ladies feel very embarrassed. The prince gave Yi Mu a deep look and could only say, Yes. Ever since the arrival of the emperor and his concubine, Yi Mu felt as if she was sitting on pins and needles. Their gazes were always on her, and now, she only hoped that the banquet would soon come to an end. On the other side, when Emo Linyuan heard Yen Zhu's words, he smiled. But in an instant, the cup in his hand shattered into pieces. One foam. The moment he opened his mouth, a nimble, short person appeared. Furthermore, this person's martial arts were extremely high that even Yen Su did not notice how he appeared. Go Mo Linyuan's phoenix eyes slightly narrowed as he gave an extremely gorgeous smile. Go and bring official Lu to me. Drag him over. Official Lu was originally in his study, but because the emperor only invited female subjects today, he did not enter the palace. However, the moment he saw Wen Feng, he immediately turned around and wanted to flee, and even had his guards block him. Unfortunately, how could his guards be a match for Mo Linyuan's people? In the end, he could only let himself be dragged away. This time, Mo Linyuan did not beat around the bush. When official Lu was shoved onto the ground and was laid flat on the terrain, he reached out his hand to grab official Lu by the hair to pull his head closer. Official Lu, I've observed that your news has been getting uncertain lately. Ah, is it because the emperor is well, and you've thought of a clever scheme? Do you want to serve as a servant? Did you foolishly think you can serve a second master? Or is it because you want to extract revenge on me? No, 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 no. Official Lu immediately countered the allegations against him, Your Highness. Your Highness, please listen to my explanation. Official Lu had never seen such a terrifying gaze from a teenager before. He felt his legs go weak and he couldn't even fully get up to kneel. Mo Linyuan kicked him. Explain. No need. I originally wanted to keep you for a few more days, but what's the use of keeping an unfaithful dog? Do you think the emperor has recovered? Let me tell you, he's dead for sure. With that, Mo Linyuan straightened his spine. Wen Feng, have you found the person I have ordered you to look for? Wen Feng lowered his head and answered, I have found him. He's similar to this person by 80%. Very good. 
when I come back, I don't want to see him again. And didn't this person like to abuse children? You should know what to do. Yes, your highness. Wen Fong bowed his head down. No no way. Only now did official Lu realize that Mo Linyuan had not killed him merely for the reason that he had been looking for a doppelganger to replace him. Now he had found one and he had lied to him again. This time, he was truly doomed. Unfortunately, no matter how much he yelled for mercy, Mo Linyuan still left. He took the forbidden map of the Imperial Army and went straight towards the general's estate. Chapter 90 When he reached the gates to the general's manor, he dispersed his people and knocked on the gate alone. The moment the gatekeeper opened the door and saw him, he was somewhat surprised. Pass the information that I want to see General Yi Li. The gatekeeper was frightened by Mo Linyuan's imposing manner and went to spread the news without saying anything. Wen Feng who was hiding in the dark thought that replacing official Lu would have been a risky move. And the crown prince had planned to stay in the Lu residence for a while longer, but all of this was changed because of a girl named Yi Mu who was in danger. To alter his plans for someone what kind of girl was she? Meanwhile, Yi Mu had finally made it to the end of the banquet without a fiasco happening. However, when everyone left one by one, the imperial consort Ro, who had been accompanying the emperor, suddenly sent someone to stop her. Young Lady Yi, is it? Please wait a moment, our imperial consort has invited you. Yi Mu turned around and discovered that not only had they kept her, but there was also another girl who had stayed behind this girl only looked to be about ten years old. Since she couldn't bring her servant girl with her, Yi Mu let little Chiu stay behind. She braced herself and followed the palace maid, making winding detours. In the end, they arrived at a heavily guarded imperial garden with imperial consort Ro and the emperor inside. All of you should go. The imperial consort is waiting for you. The ten-year-old girl lowered her head and obediently walked over. Yi Mu paused for a moment before walking over as well. There was the fragrance of sandalwood lingering in the air outside the pavilion. The pavilion was covered by a curtain therefore it was difficult to see the emperor and what he was eating inside. After he finished consuming it, Consort Ro, who had been accompanying the emperor, walked out. She looked at the two girls who were waiting outside and smiled sinisterly. Little girl, do you know why no one else is staying behind other than you? Yi Mu did not say anything, but the little girl beside her shook her head and timidly answered, This servanto isn't no. Consort Ro smiled proudly. Why are you so afraid? To tell you the truth your best days are coming. Do you know what His Majesty fancies recently? His Majesty likes girls like you the most. When you have served His Majesty well, you shall not miss your good fortune. She had said it so straightforward Lish wanted them to offer their lives. Yi Mu was startled and hastily said, esteemed imperial concubine, could there be a mistake somewhere? I am my father's most beloved daughter, not an ordinary concubine-born daughter. Could it be that they were not afraid of Yi Li and dared to wantonly harm her life? You really think he doesn't know? She narrowed her eyes and sized up Yi Mu like a poisonous snake, I originally thought that Yi Li regarded you highly and didn't hesitate to make an enemy out of the Prime Minister's estate for your sake. Unexpectedly, as long as His Majesty asks for it, he will offer it up with both hands. You can only blame yourself for offending my Prime Minister's estate. The gloomier her smile was, the more the girl beside Yi Mu trembled. Then she had been sold by Yi Li. Why? Meanwhile, inside the generous manor, Yi Li was looking at the youth before him in shock, you actually came back alive. Moreover, you are not a mute. That piece of flesh Yi Mu was lying to me again. I may not be a mute as you initially believed, but I've always been working faithfully for you. Now that I've helped you get the map how would you treat Yi Mu? Yi Li's expression changed a few times as he said furiously, Yi Mu lied to me. I don't know who she is, but she tricked me into thinking that the emperor was in critical danger. But the emperor is fine and I almost got exposed. Chapter 91 This was also the reason for his newfound loathing. He had never trusted anyone as much as he trusted Yi Mu. However, it was only the day before yesterday when the emperor had secretly summoned him that he found out that the emperor was completely fine and in good health. 
It was laughable that he had thought that the emperor was about to die. After so many consecutive deployments, he had almost decided to take action. In the end, it was clearly all a sham. She didn't lie to you. Mo Linyuan seized him with an arctic gaze, the emperor really wouldn't be able to live for long anymore. Heh, no. Yili approached Mo Linyuan step by step, do you know that the emperor even participated in the second prince's consort selection banquet today? How could a spirited person die? Yili couldn't still believe the youth's words. Mo Linyuan didn't bother with him and quickly said, cold food powder has the ability to strengthen the male body, cure impotence, and after adding some rare herbs, it has the miraculous effect of reviving a dying person. However, that is only temporary. Healthy people who take it for a long period of time get sick within a few years, let alone those who are already sick. Yi Li was unpredictably shocked when he heard this. You you mean, the emperor took some medicine that's why. That's right. If you consume this kind of enhanced cold food powder, it will excite you so much, making your body turn hot and dry and your sense of touch extremely sensitive. You will need to ingest the cold food together with warm wine, take off your clothes and sweat to fully spread the effects of this medicinal power I think you have already seen the emperor. Think about it, does his symptoms not match the ones I mentioned? Yi Li's heart thumped when he recalled the time when he was summoned by the emperor and saw his appearance. So, so it wasn't Yi Mu who had lied to him, but the emperor was only clandestinely consuming a secret medicine. Then wasn't he blaming the wrong person? Mo Linyuan heatedly replied, it looks like you already understand. Besides, I'm right, am I not? You were wrong about her I want you to save Muir right now. It's too late Yi Li muttered to himself, the emperor wants a girl and despises slaves. She's already been in the palace for half a day, I'm afraid. I don't care. Now, bring me to the palace. Otherwise, I guarantee that you won't be able to obtain this forbidden map of the Imperial Guard. You you dare to threaten me? Yi Li stared at Emo Linyuan and said, You lied to me. You're not a mute. And you still dare to threaten me now you really have the iron guts. With the sound of a paper being torn in half, the map almost halved in front of Yi Li's eyes. At that moment, Yi Li's expression became extremely dangerous. Stop! Behind the map were Mo Linyuan's serious eyes. I want you to bring me to the palace now. Someone come. Send them in to serve His Majesty. Consort Ro raised her voice and laughed. Yi Mu took a step back. No, I'm not going. Heh, once you enter the palace, the decision will no longer be up to you. She continued, Your Majesty needs someone to vent his rage once he takes the medicine. Quick, send them in, don't waste time. At her command, the guards immediately came to arrest her. Yi Mu was surprised and hurriedly dodged. Fortunately, she still had some skill, so she was able to nimbly evade the guards hot on her trail. But seeing that she was hard to grab, more and more people began to surround her. But what was more pressing is that other girl had already been captured. Chapter, 92 Just then, a restless voice sounded from inside the veiled pavilion, hot this emperor feels feverish. When she heard this disoriented voice, Consort Ro panicked a little. Quick, quickly send her in. When the guards saw that Yi Mu was hard to catch, he first brought the little girl urgently inside the pavilion, but before he could get close, the emperor had rushed out. His hair was in disarray and his face was flushed red. The moment he saw the little girl, the emperor's eyes lit up and without saying a word, he hurried over. The little girl was scared silly and did not know how to escape from the guard's strong grip. The girl cried out miserably. And when Yi Mu saw this scene, he suddenly understood how those two princesses died. The girl was shouting and screaming in agony. She couldn't break free no matter how she tried and the more she struggled, the more blood she bled. At this rate, she would undoubtedly die. The emperor bit her so hard that his entire body was covered in her blood. The surrounding guards did not expect to see such a crazy scene, and they all stopped in their tracks with varying expressions. Yi Mu took this opportunity to smash a person's head who had been protecting the emperor and rushed forward to push him away. The emperor fell brusquely to the ground, 
and the girl that he had caught tripped over. At this moment, her clothes had been torn to pieces and the remaining clothing covering her was covered in dark bloodstains. Yi Mu's heart turned cold as she quickly dragged her to the side. Consort Ro came back to her senses and when she saw the emperor sit up on the grass, she backed off in fright. If you can't even catch the two girls, do you want to be sent to his majesty instead? When Yi Mu heard Consort Rao's command, a trace of killing intent flashed past her eyes. She had given her all to escape by all means possible, yet the enemy was still unrelenting on stepping on her every step of the way. Did she really think she was so easy to bully? Just as everyone was closing in on Yi Mu, Yi Mu used all her remaining inner strength to rush towards Consort Rao. One of the guards noticed her intention and immediately wanted to stop her, but at that moment, she was in high concentration and her bodice intuition and strength seemed to have doubled her opponent's concentrated attacks appeared in slow motion in her eyes. Although her back and wrists were still hit by the attack, relying on her strange movement technique, she was able to break through the layers of defense and arrive in front of Consort Ro. Her figure was faster than ghosts. Consort Ro jumped in fright and wanted to run away, but she stepped on her skirt, her legs twisting as she stumbled to the ground. This happened to be convenient for Yim Wathawise, with Consort Rao's height, she really wouldn't be able to hold her down. All of you, stop. The sharp hairpin Yi Mu had on her topknot was pressed closely against Consort Rao's neck, and the guards looked at each other in apprehension. Sure enough, they instantly came to a halt. Consort Rao didn't expect Yi Mu to know martial arts and have exceptional ability, thus she was struck with panic. However, before she could say anything, the emperor had already staggered to his feet. Hot so hot, this emperor feels so hot. Because the girl from before was crying loudly, the emperor was attracted with her wailing voice and walked with unsteady steps towards her while holding his head in confusion. Yi Mu suddenly shouted, Your Majesty, you found the wrong person. The emperor's murky red eyes looked over and landed on Consort Rao's body, making the hair on her entire body stand on edge. She wanted to run away, but Yi Mu's hairpin held her back. The other side of the hairpin had been sharpened to an exceptionally sharp point by Yi Mu. With a slight move of her hand, a fresh wound appeared on Consort Rao's neck. Your Majesty, this is your woman. Chapter, 93 No no. Quick, quick. Protect the Emperor. Protect the Emperor. When Consort Rao heard this, she covered her wound and screamed in fear. She was still pregnant and could not endure the madness of the emperor. However, the surrounding guards didn't dare to approach because they were afraid of Yi Mu holding Consort Ro hostage. After all, Consort Ro was still very favored by the emperor, and when the emperor saw the blood flowing from her body, he was obviously provoked. Women I want a woman. His incoming approach scared her out of her wits, causing Consort Rao's soul to immediately cry out, begging Yi Mu, don't know. Please. I beg of you let me go. I still have a child in my womb. Yi Mu didn't even move her hand that was holding her neck. And only an unsympathetic gaze was pinned on her. When you placed the other girls in the hands of the beast, did you even remember that they were children? With that, the emperor pounced towards Consort Ro with a lewd smile. Yi Mu hurriedly took a few steps back, while Consort Ro was caught by the emperor. Consort Rose screamed, punched and kicked everywhere like she had become a crazy person, begging for help with a flustered look on her face, hurry and save me quickly, someone save me. However, the surrounding guards were all hesitant because they were all people of the emperor's family. Therefore, they only listened to the emperor and respected his wishes more. At this moment, the emperor obviously wanted to do it with his beloved imperial concubine. Why should they interfere? Only Yi Mu stood to the side, gasping for breath. Her hairpin was still dripping blood, and her chest was heaving violently. Regardless of whether or not Consort Ro would die in the hands of the Emperor in the end, she had seen the Emperor go crazy and now knew the truth about the deaths of the noble ladies that recently entered the palace. And because there was no one to stop the Emperor, before long, Consort Rao's clothes were also torn apart, and an ear-piercing wail echoed throughout the garden. 
she didn't expect that she would one day lift a rock and smash her own foot by feeding the emperor the medicine and finding a girl to vent the aftereffects of the medicine. These imperial guards all served the emperor, and it was an established fact that in every situation they only placed the emperor's best interest at heart. Could it be that she was going to die here today? But when she thought of her child and her future plans, Ro did not know where she got the strength to push the emperor away, but before she had run far enough the emperor had caught her again, and she fell once more to the ground. Not far away from Yi Mu's figure. At this moment, Yi Mu's expression was very complex. The child inside her womb was innocent, but the child's mother had almost wanted to kill her. Save me please, save me. Right now, Consort Ro couldn't care about anything else. Since the Imperial Guards hadn't moved to save her, she could only futilely seek help from Yi Mu. And in order to stimulate Yi Mu's compassion, her eyes filled with tears, she kept saying, My stomach I still have a child and my stomachy is innocent. Seeing that Yi Mu hesitated, Ro felt there was still a little bit of hope left and her fingers moved forward to grab onto her skirt. Yi Mu looked down at her from above and then towards the crazed emperor. Finally, just as Consort Rao's hand was about to reach her skirt, Yi Mu squatted down and placed the hairpin in her hand inside Consort Rao's palm. Consort Ro held on to the hairpin and raised her head abruptly to look at Yi Mu. She felt that the girl before her had a pair of clear eyes that were as cold as ice. Pain can help a person wake up quickly if they had taken too much medicine. You can stab him in the shoulder, or even in the heart. The low, hasty words of the young girl was clearly heard by Ro. She was lying on the ground in a sorry state as the emperor tore at her clothes like a madman. With the hairpin in her hand clung in a strong grip, a sharp light passed through her eyes. Chapter, 94 After Yi Mu finished speaking, she suddenly took a step back. And it was only after she left that the imperial guard was able to notice the hairpin in Consort Rao's hand. He was surprised and hurried over to stop her. They were the emperor's people, they naturally couldn't allow Consort Ro to assassinate the emperor. At first, Consort Ro was hesitant, but when she saw that the people around her wanted to snatch the hairpin away, she made up her mind in an instant. She turned around and viciously stabbed the pointy edge down the emperor's shoulder. The emperor screamed wretchedly as he fell to the side. And the sound of protect the emperor, protect the emperor entered his ears in his disoriented state. The moment his blood splattered, everything around him turned into chaos. Imperial Consort Ro was surrounded. At this moment, her hands were covered in blood and she didn't understand how the situation had developed to this point. She was obviously trying to use this opportunity to kill Yi Mu. How could this be? How could this be? The imperial physician was waiting in his assigned room nearby. Upon hearing the abrupt summon, he swiftly rushed over. When he arrived and saw the blood dripping from the emperor's shoulder, he speedily made the emperor sit on a chair and bandaged his wounds on the spot. Although Consort Ro had used a lot of her strength, she was still a woman who had not tempered her body, so her full strength did not cause a deep wound to the emperor. Consort Ro was arrested on the spot for interrogation. Of course, Yi Mu had also been detained. And when the emperor was woken up from his demented stupor, he was extremely irritable. As he got someone to hide the medicine, he shouted with bloodshot eyes, Slut! How dare you try and assassinate me! Someone, drag her away and throw her into the death prison. The moment she heard that she was going to be put to death, the originally dull consort Ro immediately woke up. She looked towards the direction of the emperor in fear and knelt before him, begging for forgiveness, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, your concubine is wrongly accused. Your servant has the dragon seed in her stomach Your Majesty, please think twice. Normally, when the emperor knew that consort Ro had a child, he would be concerned. However, with his entire body currently in pain, he could only be filled with rage and hostility. Dragon Seed? You even dared to make a move with me? Who knows who the child in your stomach belongs to? Just drag this wretch down. After he finished speaking, the guards wasted to time to drag Consort Ro away. At this moment, one of the Imperial Guards pointed at Yi Mu and the young girl crying beside her and he taciturnly asked, your majesty, what about them? The emperor's gaze swept over Yi Mu when he heard this. 
The bloodlust and greed climbed back into his eyes, causing his furious expression to lessen momentarily. Lock them up for now. Not a single one of them are allowed to escape. Yes sir. The guard immediately complied. When the imperial guards once again surrounded Yi Mu, she pulled her dislocated right hand close, while her free, left hand was clenched into a fist. She was only six years old and inside the perilous imperial palace, so she definitely wouldn't be able to escape. But she had been sent here by Yi Li. At this time, who would come and save her? Just when Yi Mu temporarily gave up on fighting and was waiting for the right opportunity to make her move, a servant hurriedly barged into the garden. He looked at the ground full of torn clothing and splattered blood, only then did he see Yi Mu in one flesh did he let out a long sigh and whispered into the emperor's ear, Your Majesty, the great general requests an audience. The emperor frowned. Yi Li. Why did he still want to see him? Didn't he already say before that he wanted to give up his daughter? Was he going back on his word? Just when the emperor was about to say no, Yi Li had actually already forced his way in. He shouted just outside the garden and used his inner force to amplify his voice, Your Majesty, your subject requests an audience. The emperor's expression immediately turned ugly. Yi Li actually dared to forcefully break into his palace. This was absolutely outrageous. Yi Mu was even more shocked. Didn't Yi Li originally gave up on her? Chapter, 95 Why Yi Mu could only thought since he was afraid of the soldiers and horses under Yi Li's command, the emperor pondered for a moment before suppressing his anger and allowing the eunuchs to announce Yi Li's arrival. He wanted to see what Yi Li wanted to do. Yi Li also knew what would happen if he forced his way in, but he couldn't wait. Even if he wanted to delay things, the brat beside him wouldn't give him a chance. As expected, the emperor had a gloomy expression the moment he stepped in. General Yi is so mighty that he treats this emperor's imperial garden like it's his own backyard. If you want to barge in so brazenly, do you still put this emperor in your eyes? Yi Mu was currently stopped by the imperial guard as she looked towards Yi Li. She didn't expect that it was really him, but what Yi Mu didn't expect was that the youth on Yi Li's side was none other than Mo Linyuan. When Yi Li saw that Yi Mu was still standing there, his frazzled nerves were finally set at ease. Even though he had been coerced over by Mo Linyuan over, when he saw that Yi Mu was fine, he couldn't help but let out a deep sigh of relief. He bowed towards the emperor and said, Your majesty, the purpose of this hasty visit is not for this general, but for his majesty's life. When Yi Li said this out loud, this gave the emperor a fright. When the emperor came back to his senses, he slapped the handrail of the dragon seat furiously, impudent. Are you cursing my death? Yi Li did not say anything anymore and only looked towards Mo Linyuan beside him. Mo Linyuan had lowered his head from the start, and at this moment, he finally raised his head. He did not squint in fear and looked directly at the emperor. In reply to your majesty, what the general said is the truth. The immortal pill you have been taking is actually a forbidden medicine of the Mo country that was modified with the cold food powder. After taking this pill, the user will be able to raise their physical strength and recover from pain for a short period of time. The emperor couldn't help but look towards the young man with an icy voice. Since that's the case, why are you saying that it's a forbidden medicine? Mo Linyuan replied, because after taking this medicine, the desire one would feel would be extreme and only would this be calmed down through physical exhaustion. Therefore, the more you vent it, the faster you die. According to the records of the Mo country, if a strong man takes this medicine, within five years, he will be afflicted with an evil illness, with no known medicine to cure him. Therefore, your majesty, the reason why the general forcefully charged in, is to save your life. Mo Linyuan's words stunned the emperor. The energy that this medicine brought was actually gained through overexerting his body. How how is this possible? Wasn't it supposed to be an elixir that cured a hundred diseases? Before the emperor could say anything, Mo Linyuan continued, if his majesty doesn't believe me. You can ask the imperial physician at your side for the true diagnosis of your health the redness on your face is only a fake appearance of a healthy body, and rather an indication of the ongoing effects of the medicine. 
The imperial physician who was bandaging the wounds of the emperor heard his words and sweated profusely. It was taboo to treat the emperor's illness because a moment of carelessness would cause one's head to fall to the ground. Besides, he already knew about the emperor's illness and that there was no hope of him recovering. The emperor believes that he had already recovered. But faced at this situation where his appearance had been seen through, how should he reply? The emperor felt chill run down his spine. He sternly asked the imperial physician at his side, is he telling the truth? Has this emperor really not recovered? Don't you dare lie to the son of heaven. Finally, the imperial physician knelt down and cowed out several times. Your majesty he what he said was the truth. He could not hide this matter for long anyway. With the emperor's increasing levels of lethargy, even if he ate more pills, it would be useless in less than two months. Thus, he might as well admit it now. The emperor's body who had been initially sitting imposingly on the chair went limp when he heard this. Chapter, 96 No wonder he couldn't calm down every time he indulged himself in pleasure. So, this was the case this was how it was. Thinking of something, the emperor hurriedly got up from his seat and walked to M.O. Linyuan's side. He even grabbed his hand. Little friend, since you can see through my problem. Hurry up and tell me, even if I'm like this, do I still have some hope left? M.O. Linyuan calmly retracted his hand, his almond-shaped eyes slightly narrowing. Your majesty's luck is very high. As long as you recuperated in bed, you'll definitely be fine. He lied without even batting an eyelid. While the imperial physician listened on, his back was drenched in cold sweat, nevertheless he still couldn't utter a single word. Only then did Yili say, Your Majesty, this general is really doing this for the sake of the dragon body. Your Majesty, please forgive this general's impulsive actions. The Emperor was finally aware of his real condition, and that he had not truly recovered yet. His life was at stake at any time, so how could he bother with him? When Emo Linyuan saw the Emperor was now concerned of his health, he added. Your Majesty, from the looks of it, I firmly believe that you were only suffering from a minor illness, but ingesting the immortal pill had delayed your recovery. Causing you to be injured and thus posing an extreme risk to your health the person who gave the medicine to you only had evil intentions, please do not let them off the hook. These words were like an order that was deeply imprinted in the emperor's mind. The emperor thought of something and his eyes became ferocious once more. No, consort Ro doesn't have that kind of kurigite must be the prime minister. They've all planned together to harm me. As if a beam of lightning has struck him, he suddenly ordered, capture the prime minister's entire family and throw them into the death prison. A few days ago, the emperor came to Yili telling him that he needed a girl to vent his lust. This was because the Taoist priest that had given him the immortal pill had said that a young woman's character was a great boon to him. Also, he had heard that there was a girl of that age inside the general's estate. When Yi Li had heard this, he knew that all of it was a scheme conjured by the Prime Minister's estate. However, he had thought that Yi Mu had lied to him, so he had immediately agreed to send her over. And now, before he could even think of this, a single word from M. O. Lin Yuan had destroyed the entire family of the Prime Minister. He was the one who bore heavy grudges whoever hurt Yi Mu was his enemy, and he would spare no effort to take revenge on them. What about him? He had sent Yi Mu to the imperial palace, so how would this little slave deal with him? However, Mo Linyuan did not pay any attention to his tense figure. Instead, his eyes searched for Yi Mu. Although his face looked calm, the expression in his eyes made it impossible for others to tell what he was truly feeling inside. After leaving for such a long time, this young lady had already made a mess of herself he truly couldn't leave her be. Despite everything, the reason why Mo Linyuan exposed his ability to speak was to save her. So, no matter what Yi Li would do later, Yi Mu thought of protecting him no matter what he insisted on doing. After the emperor lost his temper, he insisted on staying. But before Mo Linyuan could say something, his gloomy gaze fell on the two young girls present. General Yi, although this emperor needs to recuperate to gain back his previous healthier little daughter has already seen everything. The emperor would only feel reassured when he knew that his earlier madness and the fact that he was trying to do something to the daughter of an official would be erased from the all-witnesses. 
this Yi Li felt a headache coming on. How could he protect his daughter? Chapter, 97 It was Imo Linyuan who said from the side, didn't his majesty want this servant to stay at the palace to help him recuperate? This servant has agreed these two girls are not too shabby. This servant is asking his majesty to make them his assistants. Would his majesty acquiesce? When the emperor heard this, he hesitated, but the young man in front of him was the only one who had seen at a glance the what medicine he had taken. Furthermore, as long as these two girls didn't leave the palace, there was nothing to be afraid of. In the end, he finally agreed. When the emperor finally left, he gave Mo Linyuan and Yi Li a chance to talk privately. All the surrounding guards retreated, and the other girl was taken away to be treated. For now, the three of them were the only ones left in the imperial garden. Yi Mu's entire body turned lax as she sat on a stone stool to the side, inspecting her injuries. It would be a lie to say that she wasn't disappointed in Yi Li. Although she wasn't a hundred percent loyal, she had been helping him the entire time. Mo Linyuan also walked over and held her limp hand, dislocated. Yi Mu nodded. A trace of coldness flashed through Mo Linyuan's eyes. He carefully placed her hand to the side and said, Don't touch or move it. It'll get someone to bandage it up for you later. Upon hearing this, Yi Mu somewhat tiredly sagged against Mo Linyuan's chest. When Yi Li saw that Yi Mu had ignored him, he felt helpless for the first time in his life. He remained silent for a long time with a rigid face before sighing. Mur I'm sorry, father misunderstood you. Yi Mu raised her brows slightly. She wasn't expecting for Yi Li to apologize, misunderstanding. What do you mean a misunderstanding? And she asked with an undecipherable tone. Yi Li continued, after you told me that the emperor was in critical condition, I waited for the right opportunity to make my move. But after I noticed that the emperor was in good health, I thought that all of this was a trap meant for me, and that you were the opponent's chess piece. In my rage. Thus, in his rage, he decided to send his own daughter to an animal to be ruined. Yi Mu's words made Yi Li speechless. It was better if he didn't apologize, since Yi Mu didn't want to speak a word to him. However, the moment he apologized, Yi Mu's felt triggered and she spouted off her grievances. She sneered, you still haven't learned. You saw that the situation wasn't right, but you didn't ask me, nor did you have it investigated you were only quick to have me killed directly. Her voice took a stronger tone, I've always respected you. Even if I lied to you about what happened to Aji of his tongue being cut off, at the very least, I still gave you the treasure. But you? You only know how to doubt and use me, use Yuzel for your benefit. Do you know that I was almost? Initially, Yi Mu's complaints were only half-truths. However, thinking about how so many guards had pounced on her while she was only six years old and was constantly under the control of the enemy, she felt the protests in her heart grow more forceful. In the end, her round cat eyes turned red and she fiercely glared at Yi Li before closing her eyes and remaining silent. Mu Yi Li also knew that this time, he had truly hurt her heart. Originally, he would never have cared about his child's sadness, but this time, an intense feeling of guilt caused his heart to ache, and after a long while he sighed again. Forget it. Stay in the palace during this period of chaos. Calm down and don't be impatient, I will definitely get you out. And I won't pursue the matter of you lying to me over a little slave. Finally, he unexpectedly said, the forbidden map of the imperial army in his hands I I don't want it anymore. Yi Li had really made up his mind when he said the last sentence. In order to obtain the map of the Imperial Army, he had done everything he could, but once Yi Mu had said that he only knew how to use her for his own benefit, it made him reconsider all his actions. He suddenly realized that he didn't want to be held in a negative light inside his child's heart. Chapter, 98 Yi Mu was stunned hearing Yi Li's unexpected words. Why would a person who valued things that benefited him the most would say such words? She looked at Yi Li with her round black eyes, but at this time, Mo Linyuan suddenly spoke. There's no need, he'll give you the map. When Yi Li heard this, he was slightly surprised. For someone like Mo Linyuan who was able to protect Yi Mu in the most unconventional methods, 
he thought that he would rather tear him apart than to see Yi Mu get injured with his plans a second time. Mo Linyuan raised his head to look at Yi Li, and his phoenix eyes narrowed slightly. Moreover, with me inside the palace if it is necessary, I will lend you a hand. Yi Li looked around using his expertise in martial arts. After confirming that there was truly no one left beside them, he asked with some surprise, Why are you helping me like this? Mo Linyuan's fingers combed through Yi Mu's disorganized hair, then he indifferently said, Because that old man from before wanted to do something against her. Yi Li sneered, but she was sent here by me. He felt there was still some underlying meaning behind his words and he did not believe that Mo Linyuan would have such good intentions towards him. Yes, but who told you to be her father? As he said this, Mo Linyuan's gaze fell upon Yi Mu, as if he was very helpless. However, if there is a next time, things won't be that simple anymore, General Yi. Are you threatening me? Yi Li squinted his eyes and instantly spread his killing intent in the courtyard. Mo Linyuan waved his hand casually, throwing a bamboo scroll towards Hai. The forbidden map of the Imperial Army is inside. He continued, it'll work with you from inside the palace while you gather your troops outside the palace. An espionage together from the inside and the outside, we will be able to kill that emperor. After Yi Li received the bamboo scroll in his hands, his heart suddenly stirred, excitement growing. He had finally obtained the last line of defense of the Yu country. Just then, all his discontent vanished like the clouds in the sky. Taking over the palace and becoming the emperor has this been his long cherished wish for all these years. Yes, you're right. He looked towards the direction the emperor had gone and contemptuously concluded, he really should have died a long time ago. Following this fiasco, Yi Li started to act in covert, and the matters in the Yu country immediately became more tense. After the emperor stopped taking the medicine, his body instantly declined as expected. Formerly, he could have dragged it out for a year or two, but now, he could at most live for half a year. The princes and other people of noble status holding power in the imperial government were busy controlling and strengthening their sides, causing constant chaos outside. Yi Mu suddenly discovered that being in the palace was actually the safest place for them to be. However, the calm before the storm made her even more diligent in her cultivation. Even if she was considered a lowly, she had to be a fearsome lowly that would cause others to talk about her. However, cultivating was just a matter of daily cultivation. She did not forget what she still had to do and it was the problem of Mo Linyuan's education. Mo Linyuan was already ten years old. He was ten years old and still hadn't had a high scholar teach him. As the future emperor of all lands, she could not afford to delay his studies. Fortunately, since she was a special forces soldier before and had vast knowledge of the military, she was able to teach him a lot. Time passed quickly, and several months went by as they were inside the palace. Chapter, 99 It was snowing heavily today, so Yi Mu and Mo Linyuan had stayed inside the palace walls. It was night and the candles flickered as Yi Mu had just finished telling an old story, borrowed arrows from her past world. After she finished speaking, she asked in a serious tone, You see, Zhuge Liang didn't have any arrows in at hand, so how could he think of such a method as borrowing arrows from the enemy? Isn't he a very brilliant strategist? What did you learn from it? Currently, it was just the two of them sitting opposite of each other on the tea table. Mo Linyuan smiled slightly and said, what did I learn though you really want to know? Of course. Yi Mu nodded. Seeing Mo Linyuan smile, she intentionally made a face. Hey, hey. It's class now. Be more solemn answer me properly. Her bulging bun face gave Mo Linyuan the impulse to pinch her cheeks. But restrained his mouth from smiling and said, All right, I'll say it. He thought for a moment and seriously said, Actually, this story wouldn't be a brilliant tactic for me. Eh? Why? Yi Mu still remembered that when she was a child, she had read this book and had even thought that Zhuge Liang was a very cunning person. Mo Linyuan smiled and said, I would have asked you to make me a glass telescope beforehand. With the telescope, I would be able to see everything clearly despite the fog. How then could Zhuge Liang's plan succeed? That's right. Yi Mu's eyes widened. No, no. 
What if you didn't have a telescope? What would you do in that situation? Mo Linyuan shook his head, my nature is different from the Chao Chao tribe. When the enemy invades, I will definitely send troops to fight immediately. Even if I use arrows to attack from afar, I will still use ones that are ignited by fire. If they used fire arrows, wouldn't Zhuge Liang's boats be set on fire? That solves everything so easily, thought Mo Linyuan. Her expression changed unpredictably, and in the end, she threw the book away and said unhappily, you're shameless. You knew it was a wooden boat, or else you wouldn't have used fire arrows. Mo Linyuan merely countered, even if I didn't know, I would have definitely used it. After all, ships are made of wood and under the fog, only by igniting fire can we determine the location of the enemies. Only then would they not waste arrows by shooting blindly. Moreover, the fog is clearly the best time to launch a sneak attack, but the other party is actually beating the drum and not thinking properly. It is clear that it's not viable in a real where if it were me, I would have definitely chosen to fight smart. If the other party had continued fighting, not allowing them to retreat, then there would be the need to chase after them. In short, with a different mind, the outcome would also be different. He said these words with resoluteness, and the girl in front of him seemed to have been persuaded as he continued on. What he said actually made a lot of sense what the heck. Yi Mu got up in anger. However, her face was a little pink at the corners. You thought's all nonsense. If the target was you, Zhuge Liang would definitely not use grass boats to obtain the arrows. He will definitely think of another method. Mo Linyuan helplessly looked at her. Yes, yes, Yesha's smarter than me. All right, don't be angry. This fellow had too smart of a tongue to argue with. Therefore, Yi Mu could only hold herself back. Seriously, she wasn't a real little lowly, so why did she have to fight over this not only that, but she had also been humiliated by this young man. She awkwardly sat down. Cough. Then, let's skip this book next topic. However, Mo Linyuan stopped her. It's already very late. Let's call it a day you need to rest. As expected, Yi Mu had reached midnight reading books to him. This was because Mo Linyuan was clever, good-looking and a pleasant person to talk to. When she taught him, she found out that time would always pass by very quickly. All right, let's rest early. Well spar the first thing tomorrow morning. After saying that, Yi Mu wanted to leave, but Mo Linyuan abruptly stopped her. Will you stay tonight? He asked. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. After being caught off guard for a second, Yi Mu was greatly shocked and used both hands to cover her chest, what are you trying to do? At first, Mo Linyuan looked at her with a puzzled expression. And then with an innocent, sincere expression, he said, actually, today is my birthday. What? Birthday? Yi Mu dropped her arms and scratched her head in embarrassment, why didn't you say so earlier? I wasn't able to prepare anything. It doesn't matter. Mo Linyuan smiled and said, you can stay and accompany me tonight. Accompany. Yi Mu looked at Mo Linyuan's attractive appearance, then looked at the bed and asked with a stiff smile, do you know that boys and girls sleep in different beds when they turn seven years old regardless if they are siblings? Chapter, 100 Although she did not mind accompanying him after all, she was still six years old, but she was only afraid that he would feel awkward with the presence of another person. Yet, unexpectedly, Mo Linyuan acted as if he had never heard these words before, and said after a moment of silence, Buterant you still six years old? How cheeky! But that makes sense, she thought. Without waiting for Yi Mu's rebuttal, Mo Linyuan interrupted in a low voice, can't you just stay and talk to me? Under the candlelight, he looked at Yi Mu with clear eyes, carrying a trace of eager anticipation. The young man in front of her was truly innocent and peaceful, without a speck of anxiousness. Yi Mu what are you daydreaming about? Yi Mu laughed dryly, ha ha. Of course. It's just talking. It's no big deal. He'll stay here today, but he'll go wash up first. It looked like Mo Linyuan was starting to have his own thoughts as well. Indeed, a kid this age was about to reach puberty, so it was quite normal for him to have hold back some words he wanted to say. 
Emo Linyuan gazed at her back, his eyes squinting as he gently smiled. In the evening, there was an extra person lying on his bed. Yi Mu really wasn't used to lying on someone else's bed and after a while, she couldn't stand the awkward silence and rummaged her brain for something to say. Soy our birthday happened to be on a snowy day she murmured unsurely, testing the words. The snow outside the window should have been silent, but because of the heavy downpour, it made a rustling sounds as the branches shook against the wind there was something in the noise that made the people inside feel exceptionally peaceful homey even. Mo Linyuan turned his body to look at her and casually said, Yes, they said that on the night I was born, a heavy snowfall like this had also occurred. The mood in the warm room was light, and Yimu also turned to look at Mo Linyuan to say with a smile, This means that today's birthday and the day when you were born must be very important. That's why the heavens are here. When Mo Linyuan heard this, he smiled and stretched out his hand. His fingertips curled up her hair a bit and his voice became especially graceful and gentle. Yes, indeed. This birthday is really very important to me. Because this was the first birthday that he had met her. Yi Mu looked at his beautiful side profile and suddenly asked while her unconsciously held to her chest, over her heart, right. Do you have any other brothers and sisters? You're so good looking I bet if you had a sister, it would definitely be a beauty capable of toppling empires in the future. She added. Yi Mu's words caused Mo Linyuan's smile to freeze for a moment before he said in a deep voice, I originally had a younger sister. Hearing his tone, Yi Mu thought that his sister was already dead and hurriedly changed the topic. It doesn't matter, you still have me. Yi Mu thought to herself, Mo Linyuan has always been fretful, taking care of me. Could he have treated me as his little sister? Yi Mu's words made Emo Linyuan's eyes light up once again. He leaned over and gently hugged Yi Mu, then his pleasant and low voice resounded above her head. Yes, I still have you. Yi Mu rarely got so close to anyone. So, when a faint, different kind of scent came from the youth's body, it caused her to involuntarily suck in a deep breath and widen her eyes. But only after a moment that she got her bearing and declared, that's right. You have me so you don't have to be afraid, they'll protect you in the future. Yi Mu seriously said that she would work hard to cultivate. Once she recovered her previous skills and master internal martial arts, there would only be a few opponents in this world that could go against her. Furthermore, she was here to protect the someone so important in this world the future emperor. Chapter, 101 Could this be then, the reason for her transmigration? Yi Mu's words made Mo Linyuan's heart genuinely swell up in happiness. The corners of his mouth curled up slightly as his eyes brimmed with joy and he teasingly said, You don't need to protect me. I'm older than you, therefore, I should be the one protecting you. His logical words caused Yi Mu to be stunned, and she suddenly panicked a lit light was because she remembered the time when Mo Linyuan risked his life to steal the forbidden map of the Imperial Army from official Liu's residence for her. Although Mo Linyuan later told her that he wasn't hurt in the slightest when his people arrived in time, when Yimu thought about it now, she still felt a lingering fear. If his people didn't arrive in time, wouldn't he have? Therefore, after a moment of silence, Yimu raised her head and seriously said, Actually, you don't need to protect me. He must have taken care of her like his own sister, but she didn't want him to risk everything again just for her. You are going to be someone who will do great things in the future and I hope that you will put your own interests first before anything else see so that I will be at peace. Really? That's why could you stop doing stupid things because of me in the future? She looked at Emo Linyuan with fiery eyes, the dark, shining orbs filled with guilt. If not for her, he would have escaped to the Emo country by now. Emo Linyuan lowered his head, but there was something in her worried gaze that stirred the bottom of his heart, and he couldn't help but reach out to hold her hand. She was so concerned about him that all her fears were clearly reflected in her eyes. This stupid girl you would value others more than yourself. Stupid girl M.O. Linyuan didn't know the words to say to express his current feelings. Yi Mu's hand was very cold, so he used his own fingers to warm them, wrapping it tightly around her little hand before slowly placing it on his chest. There, his heart was beating much faster than before. 
Seeing that he was hesitant on agreeing to her request, Yi Mu pouted and said, I'm really serious about it. Can't you promise me this? In the future, please stop taking unnecessary risks for me, okay? She was still talking nonsense. Could it be that she wouldn't consider him? Mo Linyuan was both angry and annoyed, but most of it sprung from a kind of restlessness of a warm feeling from being protected and thought of. Finally, he pressed the girl's head against his chest and said rather impatiently, let's not talk about this and just go to sleep. No way. Yi Mu immediately refused, if you don't agree, then I want sleep. Mo Linyuan looked at her helplessly. He held her down with both hands. Be good and don't. No. I won't listen. Yi Mu thought that since she was only a six-year-old child now, she might as well go all the way through. So, she rolled around in bed like a little angry demon, if you want agree, then don't even think about sleeping peacefully tonight. What else could they do in the face of such a troublemaker? Of course, Mo Linyuan could only powerlessly try and coax her. Mo Linyuan weakly sighed and pulled her into his arms again. All right, all right. Be good I ill agree to it. Really? Yi Mu immediately became motionless. She obediently laid still as she was pulled back to his side by him, her black eyes shining widely like that of a cute little cat. You won't take any unnecessary risk for me and you'll promise to protect yourself before everything else. Right. She instantly struggled again, what's that? You're lying to me again. Stupid girl. Mo Linyuan couldn't help but smile bitterly. When Yi Mu heard this, she was about to open her eyes wide again in anger, but then she heard Mo Linyuan hastily say, All right, all right. I'll listen to everything you say. Go to sleep. Seeing that she finally agreed, Yi Mu was quite satisfied. She closed her eyes and was about to go to sleep, but she mumbled something in the end, You have to listen to me. I'm doing this for your own good. I know. You will definitely be a very influential person in the future that's why you can't delay important matters. If it was because of her that he was not able to achieve feats that he should have, then she would feel very miserable and responsible. Yes, I understand. Seeing how compliant he was, Yi Mu finally yawned. And they'll help you along the way. She decided that from tomorrow onwards, she would have to put in more effort to practice martial arts. But Mo Linyuan merely replied, Stupid girl. Chapter, 102 Ugh, fine good night. She wasn't sure if it was because she felt safe, sleeping next to somebody, or her body was exhausted. But in a short while, she had no trouble falling into a deep slumber. Mo Linyuan paused, then softly asked, What do you mean by good night? Yi Mu vaguely remembered a common phrase back in her old life and in her drowsiness, she unconsciously blurted out, Good night, good night. I love you. I love you. Mo Linyuan did not hear her words clearly, but the bizarre phrase I love you rang across his ears, making him more extremely confused. Although he did not understand the meaning behind her words, he still felt that it uttered an affection, so he repeated it under his breath a few times. When he had wanted to ask her again about it, he had found out that she had already fallen asleep. All right, another time then Mo Linyuan looked at her sleeping profile, staring at it for a long time. Finally, after hesitating for a moment, he leaned over and kissed her on her forehead. After his lips touched her forehead, it was as if he was seized by clarity and rendered stunned. He did not understand why he wanted to kiss her. But this feeling wasn't bad at all. On the contrary. He touched the spot on his chest, right above his heart. Is it beating slightly faster than before? He wondered in amazement. When the inky darkness came, he finally laid down beside Yimu, secretly grasping her hand. The faint smell of milk emanating from her body comforted him to an easy sleep. After a while, he closed his eyes and said with a smile poised on his lips, Good night to you too. In a sweet, comfortable slumber throughout the night, he never would have thought this birthday would make him feel extremely at peace. Because of this, he held fresh hopes in his heart that Yi Mu would spend time with him once more on his next birthdays. However, their peaceful days didn't last long. 
After Yi Mu's training in internal martial arts had just reached the first stage of the Supreme Heart Sutra, the emperor suddenly fell into a coma. And all along while the emperor was in bed, it was his six highly respected cabinet ministers who had managed the government together in his absence. Now, with the emperor unconscious, and this fact displayed to many of them, the court officials now certainly know that he was in a terrible condition. How could anyone with ulterior motives sit still? The first person to make their move was the first prince. He had gathered his private army to launch an attack from the east side of the city, but before he could even reach the palace gates, he was annihilated by the Prince Zhao. The Empress Sun seized the opportunity to attack Prince Zhao under the appellation of Qin Jun. Although his attack was mighty, it was still defeated by Prince Zhao in the end. As the younger brother of the Emperor, Prince Zhao also had the right to inherit the throne. In addition, he had great military power, and his methods of attacks were extremely ruthless. In short, with Prince Zhao's absolute military strength and cunning strategies, he had become the perfect candidate to ascend the throne in just over a month. Although the other princes still had some remaining forces obstructing their way, most of them were out of sorts. The only one who had a headache seeing all this chaos was the second prince, he didn't show too much enthusiasm to fight for the throne. Although this abrupt storm seemed dangerous, the undeniable outcome is already decided. However, there was a saying, the mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole behind. Inside the palace, Yi Mu was dutifully practicing her martial arts. Meanwhile, Mo Linyuan had already disappeared. After the emperor fell ill, no one came to find him anymore. It was as if they had forgotten all about him. Mo Linyuan had also been very busy, often sneaking out of the palace. Yi Mu knew that he was helping Yi Li rebel. When the prime minister fell, Prince Zhao had lost a lot of support. Furthermore, he had gotten wind that official Lu had reached an agreement with Yi Li for a covert operation. If anyone had a grand scheme and immense wealth under their sleeve, that would only be Yi Li who had the ancestor's treasure in addition to the forbidden map of the imperial army. Even if she didn't make a move for his benefit, Prince Zhao would definitely still be beaten. Thus, there was no suspense in this one-sided battle, and Yi Mu opted to leave it to him. Chapter 103 Immediately after her musings, a rock was thrown at her. She caught it reflexively and turned around to see Yen Su sitting casually on the wall. Right now, he was the only one who was oblivious toward any unforeseen circumstances that might rise out of the blue. Yi Mu held the stone in her hand and chuckled humoredly, she then raised her eyebrows and teasingly said, How low do you feel about your existence? Right now, all your brothers are on the verge of overturning the lands under the sky, fighting for a measly seat. Yet you still have the leisure to come and play with me? Yen Zhu's expression was still as serious as before. No, it should be said that he was even graver than before. He was clearly only seventeen years old, but he had always held the mature character of a thirty-year-old man filled with troubles. He jumped down from the wall and said in a deep voice, Perhaps it is because I am not a threat. The three people who have the most troops in this battle is, my uncle, Prince Zhao, second brother and General Yi Li. Pitted against one, it's already difficult, lest alone three I'm not asking for a death sentence. Besides, who would be in the mood to care about someone as insignificant as me? Yi Mu threw away the stone and wiped the sweat off her forehead. But those things don't really matter, do they? It shouldn't be that important, right? She raised her head and half-jokingly said with knowing eyes, who knows, maybe your second brother will listen to you. Yen Zhu's expression instantly changed, don't speak nonsense. Yi Mu made a face, what nonsense had I spoken of? The heavens know this, and the earth knows this. She walked closer and whispered, speaking of which, I'm very curious. Why would your second brother listen to you if he wants someone with an identity chock full of power and influence? Yen Su looked at her face. He initially wanted to deny it, but seeing that she was confident, he frowned and asked after a long time, How do you know all this? I guessed it. Yi Mu laughed mirthlessly. Don't you remember the last time when you asked your second brother to marry me? From the looks of it, he obediently agreed to your request. Isn't it obvious? However, I suggest that you stop. 
because this time, Yi Li has a higher chance of winning. She had said such outrageous words, so lightly and insensibly. As if the change of dynasty from an old to a new reign was just a normal occurrence. After being silent for a long time, Yen Su let out a cold snort. Do you really believe in Yi Li's? Nevertheless, our Qi family's mountains and rivers are not so easy to get. Yi Mu shrugged her shoulders, in any case, I've already said what I wanted to say so whether you listen or not is up to you. I'm not even afraid of telling you secrets now Yi Li has more people and money than you and Prince Xiao combined. Strangely, he didn't seem surprised at all when she said this. He stared at Yi Mu for a while and suddenly laughed. Perhaps there is another way. That is to capture you as a hostage and threaten Yi Li. Perhaps Yi Li will stop in order to save your life. Don't joke with me. Yi Mu hastily waved her hand and thought of something as she self deprecatingly said, He wouldn't give up an ounce of his wealth for me. After all, I'm just his little girl born from an insignificant concubine. It seems like you know your own limits. Yen Su could not help but mock her, You clearly know that he is a selfish person, yet why are you still adamant on helping him? He paused and added thoughtfully, why didn't you choose to help me from the beginning? You knew my intentions. Help him. After he had risen to become the new emperor, it was not many years after when Imo Linyuan had seized back the Mo country under his hold and began to attack the other seven neighboring countries. The first was the Yu country and Yen Su had become the first emperor to be beheaded by Imo Linyuan's hands. At the time of his death, he was only 28 years old. She was astonished for a moment before she smiled and said, How do you know I'm not helping you by doing this? Chapter, 104 After a moment of silence, Yen Su suddenly said, Your moves just now were very strange I've read a lot of book on martial arts, but I've never seen those kinds of techniques before. It didn't look beautiful at all, yet it was fast and precise with an unyielding fierceness. The way the Yi Mu executed the moves in succession gave off a wild charm. Yi Mu touched her fist. Oh, so you're saying I looked silly? I was just casually practicing just playing around. Yen Su shook his head when he heard this, you moved very well, but... But? Yi Mu tilted her head curiously. But there was a move that didn't look quite right, Yen Su said as he walked behind Yi Mu. Your technique in kicking earlier, you turned, spinning your body to perform a high kick. But that kind of position has a very big flaw. As he spoke, he bent down to support Yi Mu from behind. Yi Mu was short, therefore, even if he bent down, he was still taller than her. He had a stern expression on his face as he guided her. Yi Mu's mind stirred at this close proximity and she vigorously shook her head to rid herself of the strange thoughts. Okay, okay. I know what you mean. Get out of the way, he'll repeat it again for you. Yen Su nodded his head and stood to the side, watching Yi Mu practice her moves a second time. Despite being so young, her punches were already powerful, and her chubby little face almost looked too mature for her age. However, her short stature was adorable, causing the corners of his lips to unconsciously curve upwards on his usually stern face. Seeing Yen Su becoming amused by the minute, Yi Mu's mood immediately turned sour. Hey, that smile of yours are you provocation me? She admitted that with her current body, she was very puny, but just now, she had practiced so seriously. Yen Su glanced at her, ignoring her outburst and suddenly drew his sword, watch carefully, this sword art I'm about to show you is very rare. I will only teach it once. After he finished speaking, he thoroughly demonstrated everything he learned in front of Yi Mu. Although he didn't bring forth any internal energy with this move, the sword art was still particularly powerful and breathtaking. Yi Mu initially thought, did I ask you to teach me? The wind from the sword caused the surrounding plum blossoms to fall from their branches, and a bit of snow fell after some time. Shook from their positions the seventeen-year-old youth was practicing his sword art with all his might, to the point that each move seemed to be capable of fusing heaven and earth together. It could be seen that he was extremely solemn in practicing, but Yi Mu could also feel that he was venting pent-up feelings through this method. Yi Mu didn't hold special feelings for Yen Su. Owing to the fact that she did not want to cause another ripple from her actions. 
so she only cared about her own goals and M.O. Linyuan's future. As for other people in this world, she had deliberately ignored them all. But now, she deeply felt that all these characters were very real people in the flesh. They also had their own dreams, happiness and anger. They were truly no different from her. Seeing them in the flesh and feeling everything in this world was the most terrifying thing, if anything. This meant that the more she sank into this world, the more she couldn't act as a bystander. Doesn't her position as a special forces soldier still apply to this foreign realm? The more Yi Mu thought about it, the heavier her heart became. She turned around even before Yan Su had completed demonstrating his sword art technique, feeling the undeniable urge to escape. When Yi Mu heard the wind whistle as the sword came for her, she immediately bent down to avoid it. The sword instantly pierced through the clothes on her back, the blade narrowly missing her neck as it tore in and out of her collar. As she was strung onto the blade of the sword, Yen Su to lifted her little body up with one hand. What the hill? She wasn't some barbecue.